dumpsters and I got losses. Kroenke is not moving. What a way to win. Yeah! That says something. They are going full Brazil right now. It is. It is. Uh, Coakley's loading in. It is all smiles. Set cut. Wow! Oh, this one. Wow! Cthulhu is dead in the water. Yeah. Super Scope is celebrating. Well, I do have to award the golden dumpster to your brother. It's not my uh, honor, but it is my duty to give you this golden dumpster. Drew. Oh! All right. Oh, that shot is just indecent. It's almost Good morning and welcome to beautiful downtown Norwalk, Connecticut for the 2023 NHRL Championships. Chris, this is the culmination of a very long year of incredibly tough competition. I cannot wait for the action today. So many incredible storylines have made their way through 2023 and we have an incredible lineup of builders and bots upstairs in the pits. And uh, our World Finals is on Veterans Day, so a very happy Veterans Day to all of you in the U.S. And uh, thank you, veterans, for your service. Chris, uh, we spent uh, the better part of yesterday up in the pits, and I have to say, uh, there are 72 killers up there. There are very few uh, fun robots. They are all very hard hitters. You know, it was interesting. Every time I would go up and I would talk to a builder, I would say, so do you know who you're fighting in yeah. the first match? And they'd be like, yeah. And right. it was the same, no matter who you talk to, because every single bot, like you said, is a killer. Our very first match of the day, just right out of the box, is a banger. Emulsifier versus Little Rip. That is a match that you typically see at the very end of a competition, and this is the one that we're going to be opening up this competition with. Incredible. For the, for the remainder of the day, try not to blink. All right, let's go into today's schedule now. You're here at 9 a.m. Eastern. Now, this is qualifying round one. We're going to see every single robot in the uh, 12s, the 30s, and the 3s. At 12, we're going to go into qualifying round two. This is where elimination uh, is going to begin. And at 4 o'clock, we're going to go into prime time, where we are going to see the actual bracket, the top 12 robots from each weight class. Let's go and check up in the pits. Yeah, now there are 72 robots up there from multiple teams from across the planet. Now, typically when you tune into one of our qualifying events, you see 400 people up there. Right. Now, there are considerably fewer people up there because these are the uh, top four finishers from each one of our qualifying events. Now, typically, like in a field of, say, 160 robots, these are the very best four. It's incredible. Mm-hmm. Let's right. take a look at uh, who we want to follow along with today, who some of these stories are. Now, starting out with Jameson Go and his hunt for the Triple Crown. Now, we call it the Triple Crown because he has qualified two robots in the Beatles, one robot in the 12s, and one robot in the 30s. Can Jameson Go take home first place in each one of these weight classes, winning the first Triple Crown? 
you never know. He's favored to win in every weight class. Now, the interesting thing is that Jameson Go is also our number one ranked robot in each one of these weight classes. Number one ranked Silent Spring in the, uh, in the threes, number one ranked Psycho in the twelves, and number one ranked Megatron in the thirties. Now, he earned these number one rankings by beating some of the very best competitors that we have here at MHRL. His win-loss record for these three robots is incredible. And there's a bonus beetle weight in there, Silent X. Right. Uh, so he's got two shots at, uh, at the beetles. Now, if we're talking about builders who have multiple robots uh, qualified in the competition, we have to talk about Brandon Bennett Young. Now, instead of uh, spreading it out across three weight classes, he has three 30-pounders that have all qualified. Fracas, Boreon, and Phenomenon. Phenomenon. Brandon has done incredibly well this year, and these are three incredibly hard-hitting robots, two verts and a control bot. And we just saw him take home his first dumpster in our last event, which was absolutely, it was a tearjerker. I was crying up here at the desk, for sure. Now, uh, Brandon Bennett Young, uh, everybody knows who Brandon is on the East Coast because he competes up and down the Eastern Seaboard. I have seen him at multiple competitions. I see him fighting out in, like, barns in Pennsylvania. And uh, he has done incredibly well here at NHRL, the most competitive stage for 30-pounders. Now, uh, very fun. Uh, after we see this footage, we're going to be speaking live with Brandon Bennett Young. He's going to be our first interview of the uh, the day, and uh, Kyle has him right there uh, upstairs. Let's go to Kyle. All right, hi guys. Yes, I am standing by with Brandon Bennett Young. Brandon has the rare uh, opportunity to field three robots today, all in the same weight class. Brandon. This year was your first year, after so many years of competition, to win a golden dumpster. Not only did you qualify, you got your very first golden dumpster. How are your chances looking today? And who are you fighting first? What's your first event today? Yeah, so for today, it's going to be very tense. The three different robots, all in three different sections of the bracket. So it's still a good chance for each of them to fight. Pretty good variety of robots. Um, I know for Fracas, it fights Yahoo first, which is just a terrifying idea. And then Vorion fights Anxiety, which is the horizontal undercutter. And then Phenomenon fights Eva, which is the drum. Yeah, that sounds absolutely scary. Every match today is going to be terrifying. You have to be so tired. You've gotten these three robots together. You've been working tirelessly on them. I know that you have. Who do you think has the best chance out of your three robots today? Yeah, Vorion, for sure. I think Fracas is a really good interference robot, and Phenomenon's a chance. But Vorion just has a lot more learning from it in the past two events or so. So I think there's a good chance for it to go through. Well, let's get a nice shot of Vorion right here. She looks absolutely gorgeous. Is there, uh, the, we're so excited to see how you do today, Brandon. Thank you so much. And uh, yeah, I'll let you get back to it. I'm sure you have more prep to do. Yeah, thank you very much. All right, have a good one. Now, speaking of robots to watch here today, uh, we have to talk about the absolute rise of Kablooey Tango. Now, this was a brand new robot this year. They took home two golden dumpsters in May and in June. They have an incredible 14 and five record across six events here this year. Uh, Kablooey Tango has done incredibly well, and that robot is nipping at the heels of Megatron. There was some talk about perhaps Kablooey Tango taking home the uh, number one ranking if they had done slightly better in the last competition. But they are ranked number two, which is amazing for a 30-pounder that was introduced this year. Lucy and Kablooey taking home back-to-back -back golden dumpsters this year. And Kablooey Tango directly attributes to uh, 2023 being, quote-unquote, the year of the, 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 the horizontal. Yeah. Because we had seen kind of horizontals fall uh, in the wayside of, of verticals, powerful verticals. But it's really been a great year for horizontals. And Kablooey Tango is one of those bots that have really driven that narrative. And uh, finally, last but not least, we have to talk about Team Honeycracks. Now, this is an educational STEM team from Maryland, and they have fielded an incredible number of robots, probably more than a dozen robots across the entire team uh, here this year. Their very best robots have qualified for the finals. I think they have three robots that have qualified, and uh, they are incredibly well positioned to do well. One of the big X factors for Team Honeycracks is that they acquired a large 30-pound test box that they installed in Maryland this year. And so we have seen an incredible glow up in their robots just because they're able to run them at full speed and do practice fights in Maryland. So uh, I really am 
and I'm really eager to see their performance here today and really see what impact that, uh, that box has on their performance. All right, now we're gonna go and check in with Lindsay. Hello, Lindsay. Hello, Luke. It's so good to see you on this momentous day. Uh, I am here in the YouTube live chat, as I always am. We have so many people from around the world, from the Philippines, from Portugal, from Brazil, as you can imagine with Rato here and uh, several other Brazilian teams. The energy is palpable. It's so exciting. Uh, so if you're watching at home, please join us in the YouTube live chat. We are here all day long. We're gonna be discussing the events as they happen, running polls, different ways to interact. If you wanna send a super chat in, I will We'll read it on uh, air for you. So yeah, it's a really exciting place to be. And uh, man, I I don't know what's gonna happen today. So uh, if you think that you know, let us know in the chat. Thank you very much, Lindsay. Yeah, looking forward to that. Um, now, today we are going to be giving out uh, nine out of 10 Sparky Awards. Now, we awarded 10, we're gonna give out nine today, and uh, we're going to give out our very first Sparky Award right now at the oh very boy. top of the stream. So let's go in and check in with Kyle. He's got that Sparky right now. I don't usually wear orange, but... It works for you. All right, hello. <laughs> I am standing by here with Lucy Dew. Lucy. Today, we have the honor of presenting you with the first Sparky Award of the day. So, thank you so much. This beautiful award built by Sam. This is the Sparky for the Most Valuable Builder Award presented to Lucy Dew. First of all, check it out. I love the inside. We've got all these beautiful little bricks. So congratulations and thank you, Lucy, for all of the contributions to our community, as well as all of the amazing builds that you bring to this event. Oh, thank you, it is my pleasure. Building is always fun and uh, the community here is amazing and I love, I'm so happy to be a part of it. Thank you so much, Lucy. This is gonna look amazing on your shelf. Sam did a phenomenal job. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for being here. We're so excited to see Kablooey Tango today. Yes, thanks, we're, we're amped. <laughs> all right. Thanks, back to you guys. Congratulations to Lucy Dew, incredible work this year, and she is an incredible, incredible builder and a cornerstone of our community. Absolutely. Now, uh, let's take a look here at our qualifying structure, uh, just so that you can uh, kind of understand what's going on here in the morning. Now, uh, because we have fewer robots than a typical NHRL qualifier, we are able to tweak the format slightly to give robots more time in the box and more fights. We're gonna be seeing the qualifying rounds between now and 4 p.m. Eastern. Now, basically the kind of TLDR here is you have to win two to get into the bracket. Mm -hmm. And if you lose two, you are eliminated in this qualifying round. Now, currently, we have 24 robots in each weight class. By the time that we get into the uh, actual championship bracket, it's going to be 12 robots. So we're going to eliminate uh, half of the fields before 4 o'clock today. Now, uh, very exciting. We are going to go into our very first fight oh of the 2023 championship. This is Emulsifier oh. facing off against Little Rip. Two absolutely devastating verticals. This is gonna be explosive for our first match of the day. I am expecting a lot of chaos. I'm expecting a lot of damage. Five, this pristine floor four, is not gonna be pristine three, in three minutes from two, now. One, fight. Let's go, Luke. Well, let's fight. Oh my God, a fast start there for Emulsifier. Oh. Matt Boris, cheer chance. Wow. An explosive start for the 2023 championship. Ripperoni now on its head, and Emulsifier is not moving. Oh, no. Now, these weapons are going full bore. And we're seeing that gyro in both of these robots. Another big concussive oh, I hit. See, I see a wheel. Tap out. Oh, no. Wow. That is a tap out from Ripperoni, uh, from Little Rip. And I, the winner here is Emulsifier and Matt Boris. A fast match to start the championship. Wow, what an incredible turnaround. Now, uh, Chris, you noted that there was a wheel that went stripping away. I saw that as well. Let's see if you can see inside of the box, maybe see some of the debris, the aftermath of this fight. 
Now, Matt Boris here uh, drove in from Ohio today. He's been building emulsifier for years. He runs the heavyweight version of emulsifier on BattleBots, of course, and uh, he got started with this 30-pound version of the robot, uh, fighting it here and fighting it elsewhere uh, here on the East Coast. Let's take a quick look at this replay. Now, a good box rush, an aggressive box rush from Matt and emulsifier right out of the box. And Ripperoni's like a characteristic kind of chaotic, driving around on its head uh, style, really opened up uh, a, uh, an opportunity for Matt to go in there and really start racking up damage. I think there, yeah, that was the wheel right there. So Anna Zolnikov with a little rip uh, makes the smart choice here to, uh, you know, tap out early and smart. maintain this robot. I have a lot of faith that she's gonna be able to get into the bracket. All right, let's go over to cage four. All right. Now this is going to be Red Storm facing off against Kitchen Grill. Now Red Storm is run by Kevin Milchewski from Seattle, who had an incredible run six weeks ago here, defeating multiple Brazilian robots in a row to win his first golden dumpster. Facing off against Kitchen Grill from the UK. And uh, this is our one and only British robot that's in the field. So uh, Brits, on the stream, cheer for Kitchen Grill. You know, that's what I'm gonna say. Kitchen Grill here uh, run by Jack Kelly, and uh, he took home second place at the May 2023 Five, NHRL. Four, so it went incredibly three, deep. Three, two, one. Fight, robots fight. Oh, a good fast box rush for Kevin Milchewski and Red Storm here. That's your typical uh, opening from Kevin. He's got a grapple bot. This bot is able to kind of bite into oh! its opponent, tossing it around, maybe a delivering a massive suplex. hit from Kitchen Grill. Now, Kevin is running uh, cleated wheels here, and that's giving him great traction in the box, great speed. And what he's trying to do is get Kitchen Grill onto its head, just like that. Perfect. Pushing it up against the rail. Can Kitchen Grill self right? Where is the self-writing mechanism, Jack? Oh, oh, it's Kevin going for the, wow. going for the off switch. Now, look at that. Kitchen Grill's on its head again. Oh, boy. Kevin Milchewski. Oh, interesting. Was that the uh, rare second save from the house bot? Now, Kevin Milchewski uh, famously turned off the house spot uh, six weeks ago, winning $1,000 cash on the spot. This has become part of his strategy. Can he turn off the house spot and prevent the save? <laughs> You'll see. Oh, my God! Oh, my God! Oh, my God! Kevin! Wow. Lindsay, you're on the air. What? <laughs> how? Uh, how do we unstick that? <laughs> you can hear Kevin saying, wow. how do we unstick that? Now, uh, sadly, Flow the power... weighs hundreds of pounds. <laughs> Flow weighs 350 pounds. And uh, yeah, just got tipped by Red Storm. That is pretty incredible. He went for the off button twice and then just said, nah. <laughs> Right, right. Yeah, this is uh, pretty amazing. I have never seen that before. And uh, that is the very first match of the day for this robot. Uh, this is a robot to watch, Chris. <laughs> amazing. You're going to need to get like a bodybuilder. Lift with your legs, bro. All right? Like <laughs> oh, and lifted it onto his opponent. I mean, ironically, probably scoring quite a bit of damage onto his opponent for a grapple butt. Now, uh, now, you know, I have to say, Kevin Milchewski is doing the most interesting things with the house bots this year. Now, earlier, he turned off a house bot uh, earlier in the season, and here, tipping a house bot onto his opponent. It's an incredibly effective strategy, Chris. <laughs> I would say so. All you have to do is just tip the house bot onto your opponent each time and just send them to bed, all right? 350 pounds of house bot just dropped like the house onto the Wicked Witch yeah. in, in Wizard of Oz. That was insane. Yeah, yeah. 
Uh, you know, I'd love to see something new, right? Uh, turning off the house spot. Okay, I'd seen that before. It happened twice before. This is our first time ever seeing uh, somebody tip the house spot onto their opponent. That is really fun. My right. goodness. Wow, Kitchen Grill looks a little flatter than it did when it was going into the box, Chris. What an exciting start to the 2023 championships, Luke. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, you think about it, right? Kitchen Grill took home second place at their qualifier. Red Storm, you know, took home second as well. Hmm. So, like, this is uh, two robots that are incredibly, uh, incredibly good robots, and they would typically meet super late in the bracket. First match, right out of the gate. Amazing. Wow. Okay. Now, uh, yeah, I can see that we've uh, loaded into cage two, Caldera facing off against Booty Brigade. Now, for our viewers who are tuning in for the first time, you're going to see two very large robots in the Booty Brigade side. Now, why is that? This is one of our loophole-style robots. Now, this is a quirk of the 2023 rule set uh, where you can run, according to our current rules, a 3.1 pound uh, robot and a 2.9 pound robot if you stack the NHRL weight bonuses on top of one another. Now in this case, Droopy, uh, which is itself a world champion, it took home the very first Golden Brett. Uh, it is running as a 3.1 pound walker. Right. And it is running a 2.9 pound version of Lynx, which has won the last two uh, Golden Bretts. So these are, uh, you know, our world champions on both sides, defending world champions. And, and they have teamed up, and uh, they're taking on Caldera, which is one of the top-ranked robots here in the field. And so that loophole bonus breaks down as you have a weight bonus for having non-traditional locomotion in Droopy, and you have a weight bonus for having the multi-bot. It's funny to think of Lynx as a multi-bot, you know, or a mini-bot. Right. But uh, it technically is. It is kind of tiny. Yeah. Facing off against Caldera. Now, Caldera is ranked number three of all time here at this competition run by Glenn Boxel. Now, Glenn ha is entering this uh, fight with an incredible 50 and 31 record across 18 events. Now, uh, he has been to 18 out of the last 19 events, I would say, and uh, he typically wins. Now, um, when you take a look here at the, the matchup, we've got a horizontal in Caldera, a very tough, unkillable horizontal, facing off against a tough, unkillable dual horizontal in Droopy, and an absolutely brutal, brutal vert in Lynx. It's going to be tough to... Uh, it's going to be a, it's going to be a tough road for uh, for Glenn to climb. Now, We've seen it, it done though. Yeah, that's true. We were both sitting on the desk for uh, Synthesis versus Booty Brigade, which happened six weeks ago, where uh, Corey Nason and Synthesis uh, just went full ham in the box. Just uh, just went to like uh, the astral plane and uh, right. you know, it uh, was uh, drove, arguably like, just one of the greatest combat robotics matches of all time. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was incredible to be there cage side for that moment. It was, it was amazing to experience live. It was really just uh, one of the highlights of my career so far. So uh, yeah, let's see if, uh, if Glenn has learned anything from the tape, you know? <laughs> as he watched that fight quite a bit. Um, in that fight, uh, Corey Nason focused first on Lynx. It's uh, the most mobile and the most deadly out of the two. Now, Droopy is a three-pound version of Droopy. Now, uh, that means that it's a little lighter than the typical robot that we see. And, um, yeah, so the, uh, the, the play there is, you know, to kill Lynx and then, you know, dispatch this lighter version of Droopy. Now, uh, we're getting a, a delay here in the action because we hear that perhaps Droopy is having trouble powering up, which opens up an interesting question. Can you run a 2.9 pound robot and pull out your 3.1 pound robot? I don't believe so. I mean, what's the difference between that and just Droopy doesn't turn on? I guess, oh, it's damage, right? Yeah, so 50%, right out of More than 50% of your bot could potentially not be working. So that would mean then... Also, well, I mean, yeah, no, because if you're running a multi-bot, if you knock out the heavier of the two robots, then you, uh, you win that match. So if Droopy is not running, that is the heavier of the two robots, I believe. 
So that is interesting. Booty Brigade is down one cheek. <laughs> Good, Chris. There you go. Now, um, you know, not to diminish the qualifying rounds, but uh, the stakes are a little bit lower here. They can throw their first match. Not throw. Okay, they can be disqualified in their first match. All they have to do is just win the next two, and they're going to be guaranteed a spot in the, uh, in right. the, the bracket. But uh, you are shaving it close if you lose your very first match. And, uh, you know, for Glenn, hey, you win your first match without uh, taking any damage at all. You know, you get to go up there, kick, kick up your feet for the next three hours. It's incredible, you know? They go get some quiche. I don't know. Yeah, Glenn, you have time to go down to the uh, Sono Bakery and get yourself a quiche. Yeah, there you go. Glenn says that, you know, the nerves, you know, he's feeling it, you know? I get it. This is wild, you know? Like, Booty Brigade's ranking is, is low, which is why they were ranked with, you know, the number three robot uh, in the Beatles. But um, it doesn't feel accurate, because uh, that is just a total killer. Now, uh, now while we wait for uh, here this break in the action, let's go back up to the pits with Kyle, who is standing up there with Kevin Milczewski. Oh, we're gonna go to Kyle shortly. Gonna work on the microphones upstairs. There we go. Um, yeah, Kevin Milczewski, uh making a uh, house bot history here left and right, you know? Yeah, I'm sure that the uh, the tech team that works on the house bots here just they probably have his face on a dartboard somewhere yeah. in the back room. Yeah. Um, it's it's like a blacklist, you know? Right. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Don't let Kevin near our house bots, you know? I'm, they're going to start arming the house bots pretty soon if the he keeps bots, coming here. They need to have like a self writing mechanism or something. Well, I don't know. I kind of like that they're a little, uh, a little, you yeah, know, cumbersome and yeah. precarious. Not a lot of dexterity. Not in a the lot house of dexterity. Bots. Sometimes they could just ruin your entire day, you know? <laughs> They're, they're chaos agents, all right? Yes, they get a little surly, uh, you know, towards the uh, end of uh, a bracket. This is the kind of talk about, like, the meta meta game where you're like, okay, can I build something that exploits the arena itself, right? Um, or can I build something that exploits the house bots as right. a uh, strategy? Uh, let's go and check in with our friend Lindsay upstairs with some super chats. Hello, Lindsay. Hello, Luke. As you can imagine, that moment that you were just talking about with Kevin Melchewski, uh flipping over the house bot made a lot of buzz in the chat. So we have some super chats about it from uh, some very excited uh, fans. So the first one here is from Wire Smith, uh, who says, Kevin, you amazing beast. I mean, we have to agree, right? Really? Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right, and then a uh, similar sentiment here um, for Mrs. Crunk, who is um, uh, uh, Joe, <laughs> Joe um, Knight's wife uh, with Crunk. Uh, she says, make Kevin lift it. So That's I think true. the house bot, you know, he he flipped it over. It's on him to uh, figure out how to yeah, clean it up, Yeah, send Redstorm right? back in there and, uh, you know, <laughs> it can fix it. Yeah. There you go. Okay. Uh, and then the last one here is from Re uh, Regan ba uh, Bachelor. I'm here for fire. Uh, uh, or I'm going to have to make sense of how to read these emojis, but I know that he's really waiting for it's Supreme a, Ruler. It's a booty brigade. It's like a fire brigade. <laughs> oh, <laughs> man. Smart. Yeah, well, I get it. Peach brigade. I don't know. Oh, Luke, you're like way more hip with the uh, uh, yeah. kids talk than I am, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I'm on Facebook. I see the emojis. There you go. That's, that's a joke. I'm not on Facebook. I still have to pour it over <laughs> my MySpace profile. <laughs> All right, it's good. Yeah, uh, here for Supreme Ruler. That's pretty great. Now, uh, yeah, this is a robot run by Jeff Waters, and uh, it's a robot that's going to be taking on the Golden Bread today. So uh, It's very possible. Yeah, there you go. Um, okay. Now, uh, here in Cage 2, and this is the kind of action that you get to see if you're here live in the audience, we are negotiating here at Cage Side to see what is going to happen. Now the box is open, which is not a great sign, and I can see that uh, there are weapon locks being put on. Interesting. Just saw one of our uh, our head refs, Rob. Uh, the the weapon lock is still on for Droopy. Do you want that? Okay. Now, here we go. Oh, uh, they're trying to figure out what they should do about Droopy. Should you keep the uh, the dead body of Droopy there in the box, or can you remove it? 
Now, uh, as we negotiate cage side, let's check in here with Kyle and Kevin. Hello, Kyle. Hey, how are you guys doing? So I am standing by with Kevin Milcheski. Kevin, you seem to have these really exciting moments every time you show up here at NHRL. Uh, what happened out there? Uh, we got him. We got our opponent stuck in the corner, and our plan is to get them stuck and then manipulate the house spot to, uh, you know, end the fight. Well, we found a new way to do that. Yeah, was that intentional? I mean, normally you guys uh, try to turn it off, but this was this was something completely different. Yeah, they were, they were stuck in the far corner from me, so it's hard to see the switch. So I said, eh, let's just see if I can lift the house bot. And I did. Did you have any sense that your bot was even capable of that? Yeah, we've done the math, and it's we know it can do that. Uh, it's designed to do that. <laughs> we, uh, we've been keeping that one a secret, waiting to do this, so. And this is the perfect opportunity to bust that out. That was amazing. Thank you all for that moment. The pits were going absolutely nuts up here. Uh, he came upstairs to cheers. So yes, Kevin, welcome to the World Championships. If you don't do anything else today, you've already made a huge moment. Thank you so much. And uh, maybe we start a new tradition for flipping the house spot. I love that plan. Thank you, Kevin. All right, guys, back to you. All right, now we're gonna go straight into the action here in cage four with knockoff white and Jubilee. Now, Jubilee is one of our very many Brazilian robots here today. Knockoff right, White, run by the Wrigley Brothers from New York City. And uh, they are running a 45-pound walking, stomping hammer bot. Now, this is an electric hammer. If you're a fan of Shatter on BattleBots, it's the same team and uh, similar kind of underlying uh, design principles here. This is a robot that uh, can strike its opponent quite a many times, and uh, it is fast, even for a walking robot. Um, I remember the very first time that I saw Knock Off White, the stomping is just deafening in right. here. Um, you feel it through the concrete floor. <laughs> it's, it vibrates, Five, yeah, it's pretty four, incredible. Three, two, one. Fight, robots fight. Now a good, Strong start here for Jubilee, this horizontal here. But it now, looks I was like talking to Adam Wrigley last night. He said that he is configuring Knockoff White for a horizontal uh, defense strategy. It looks like Knockoff White is having a little bit of issue with its left side of its drivetrain. That Shuffler is not rotating. So he's only getting momentum out of the right side of his bot, spinning in circles. Now that is a really great opportunity here for Jubilee to come in here. The uh, knockoff white immediately driving is impaired out of the box. That is no doubt frustrating to no end for Adam Wrigley. Now I wonder if he scored damage at some point or if oh he boy. just started. Uh, oh wow, okay, pieces oh, are coming wow. out. There are lots of little legs on knockoff white and Jubilee is finding all of them peeling those legs up. It's disgusting, Chris. Oh no. Wow, knockoff white wow. just shaking itself apart here. Still managed to land a hit, but there's your tap wow. out. The Brazilians are celebrating here. I feel like every time I see a knockoff white fight, it looks like, uh, you know, a tornado went through a Walmart in Alabama or something. <laughs> there's just bits of foam everywhere. There's wheels everywhere. There's legs everywhere. There is uh, a massive amount of arena cleanup we're gonna have to do here in cage four before we get this ready for its next fight. Amazing. I saw it up in the pits last night. There are two knockoff whites up there, so maybe they yes. went in with one that wasn't uh, optimized for this fight. This, uh, this is the older, the older of the two. They have a brand new knockoff white as well. They said they were gonna be modifying this one for a horizontal attachment. Unfortunately, their drive right out of the gate was impaired and right. that, uh, that spelled its doom. So, uh, knockoff white, losing its first fight of the day. It needs to win its next two to make it into the bracket. All right, so we're gonna go oh to cage one. And this is going to be Chad New. Oh, and look at that, it's Max. Chad's five-year-old son. Hello, Max, very cool haircut there. Uh, and they are running Yahoo here, this very interesting, intriguing, uh, kind of twisted drum design with forks on the back. Now, if you're fans of magnitude, you're going to see some design similarities. Facing off against Brandon Bennett Young and his control bot, Fracas, here. 
Now these are two 30 pounders, and uh, you've got five, a super devastating four, uh, drum three, facing two, off against a one. lifter. Fight, robots fight. A Whoa. good fast start for Brandon Bennett Young and Fracas smacking Yahoo in the face. Now Fracas is one of those bots that wants to take a match to three minutes, winning those points in both control and aggression, but Yahoo is one of those bots that rarely sees the three minute mark. Yahoo is a knockout artist here. Yahoo is incredibly highly ranked. Yahoo entering this fight with a ranking of four with a 20 and eight record across the past Ooh. seven events. Popping practice in the air. Was that a tap out? I think it was just debris hitting the side of the box. I assume it's a count out. I can hear the referee counting out Brandon Bennett Young and Fracas. All right. It's a knockout, a fast knockout for Yahoo on Fracas. Now Brandon you see is running Brandon three. walking over to. Oh, there's Pete. Yeah, Pete Cover from Team Copperhead helping out Chad here today. Now, Pete has himself qualified uh, Nightcrawler. Nightcrawler. But, uh, you know, this is part of the Colorado contingent, and uh, they fly out together to support one another and pit for one another, which is great. Um, so we've got a little shot of Max over there and his very cool haircut. Did you see the haircut? Yeah, he's got, like, the buzz jab going into the he's side. Got, like, no, it's like a little, like, lightning bolts or something, you know? Yeah, yeah. Looks like he should be doing, like, a kickflip or something. I wish that I had hair. I would do that, you know? Just a lightning bolt. Maybe Perfect. you could just grow the lightning bolt in. Oh, and yeah. Everything else is. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Good. All right. Just my barber will just uh, quit, you know? Mm. <laughs> it's perfect. Um, now, uh, very interestingly, we've been negotiating this entire time here, Cage 2. And uh, the big question is, are you allowed to take out Droopy if it's dead? Or do you throw the just dead carcass of Droopy in there? It's kind of like in golf, the play it as it lies rule. Like, you can't remove this other bot. You're potentially, you know, uh, you're changing the anatomy of the yeah. match by removing this bot from it, yeah. even if it's not running. It is odd to see performance issues from Droopy for the very first fight of the day. Tommy Wong is an incredibly good builder. And uh, to see the robot just dead right out of the gate, it's unusual. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know if I'm the only one out there speculating whether they're uh, kind of game playing a little bit, but I don't think they are. Uh, they seem pretty serious about getting that robot running. Let's check in first, though, with Kyle. Hello, Kyle. All right. Hello, guys. Yes, yeah, so I am standing by with Maximizer and Swagmore, they'll be fighting in just a few minutes. Guys, this is gonna be your first match in the World Championship. First of all, how are you feeling? What do you think your bot's gonna, how do you think your bot's gonna perform in its first matchup? I'm pretty excited. It's not first time I fought Maximizer before, so I'm, I'm pretty excited to have a rematch now because uh, my wheels are a lot more grippy than before. Last time I fought him, I was just sliding all over the place, but I don't think that's gonna happen this time, so. I hope I can actually uh, put up a better fight this time and push you around a bit. <laughs> That's amazing. There's so many good Team Honeycracked robots that have qualified for this event. Jake, Maximizer's looking a little bit shorter, but more deadly. How are you feeling for this event? Um, lots of small changes, um, taking a look at all the systems and really uh, you know, self-investigating why we're doing certain engineering decisions. Um, Swagmore's looking good. He's been dry practicing a lot. They got, a, they got their own practice cage down there in Maryland now. So I'm a bit intimidated by that, but we'll see how it goes. Um, I'm just happy to be here. I'm, I'm honored to be here. Uh, there's so many great robots. Uh, I hope to put a, on a good show today. That's all. You guys both absolutely 100% deserve to be here. I look forward to seeing your match later on today. Thank you guys so much, and uh, I'll let you get back to it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, guys, have a good one. Now, the vibe at finals is just different. Like, when you mm -hmm. talk to Jake typically earlier in the year, it's very chill, very, like, you know, I'm, like, just going with the flow. Oh, yeah, cool. I just went undefeated. I just defeated, like, seven robots in a row, right? You know what I mean? This is serious Jake. This is championship Jake, you know? Right. This is um, slightly nervous Jake. Um, you know, like, the, the amazing thing about the finals is that you dream of all these matchups where you're like, oh, wow, if only I could take that one robot from March and put it up against this robot from June. 
We're going to be seeing that fight. Um, My goodness. So, yeah, I can, I can understand the jitters up there right now, especially right here at the start of the day. You're so desperate to become one of those 12 robots to, uh, to advance into uh, prime time. And he's made so many modifications to, to maximize her for the finals that right. really are untested against some of the best bots in the world right now. Um, you know, an all new uh, weapon housing and like a shorter bot. It's, it's, it's a lot to test in, in a world championship setting. All right, now, uh, oh my. Wow, we've got Mike Jeffries. They've pulled him out of the green room and sent him down to cage two to talk through the rules. Now, Mike is our rules expert. He knows every single line of the NHRL rule book, and he is going to decide whether, well, he's going to advise, I suppose, about whether uh, Droopy's dead body is uh, gonna remain in the uh, box or not. As we continue to negotiate, let's check in again with Kyle Kroos. Hello, Kyle. Hello, thank you very much. So I'm standing by here with Jameson Go. Jameson has qualified not one, but four bots for this event. Uh, that is far too many bots for my brain to keep track of. Jamo, how are you gonna keep this all going today? That's a lot of bots, like seven total, right? That's right. Well, first and foremost, I've got my team here to help me. We've got a system where we're, we're all uh, we're all on the same page about repairs, precedent, things like that. I've also gone the extra mile, and not instead of just having one robot, one, let's say, assembled copy per, you talked about seven. I have seven working robots at this event. So for those four, I mean, we basically made, we took all the spares, built them up fully functional for the ones that are probably gonna take the most repair time. So things like Megatron, Psycho's got a lot, because Psycho's pretty difficult to work on too. So there's a lot of, built up assemblies or completely ready to go robots. So you can jump back into the box as soon as possible and take a little bit more time with repairs. And as I recall, that's not typical for you. You like to show up with one working copy, plenty of spares. You work on that bot. That's the bot that you have for the event. What made you change kind of the strategy coming into this? Is it because of just the volume of robots and fights you're gonna have? That's right, it's because of the finals, the finals atmosphere. Uh, usually in any given event, I don't run four robots at the same time, or the stakes are a little bit less, so it kind of changes the amount of investment that I have into it, because this is the finals. You go all out. I've been preparing this, uh, all these robots for like three months in advance, just getting them all ready as soon as I knew they were in. It's just work on all of them. Do a little bit every single day so you don't burn out. So now we're here, we're ready, and it's prime time. JMO, who is your first fight today? Silent Springs first fight at 10 o'clock is gonna be offbeat. So it's gonna be really interesting. The robots in that little quadrant, they're gonna be super tough. Everyone's got a weight bonus. No one's actually three pounds. It's gonna be really tough to, uh, to come out on top of that one. Jameson, you are a lot of people's favorites today in all three weight classes. Does that feel good or does that feel like pressure? It's always a lot of pressure. Uh, I enjoy kind of feeling like the, the guy everyone wants to knock off the top. So it's a little bit of pride in that, and so it makes you actually want to work a little bit harder. But I'm trying not to think about that. I think my goal is if one of those robots gets second place, they'll definitely offset the investment put into making all these different copies this time. If we can take first with one of them, that's, that's a win for me. If we can do more than one, that's just the icing on the cake, and uh, I think it's just gonna be super magical. Jameson, thank you so much for all of your hard work and dedication to this sport. We are all looking forward to seeing your performances today, and I'll let you get right back to it. I know you've got a fight in just a few minutes. Thank you very much. Looking all right, thank you, guys. Now, we have an update now here on what's happening in Cage 2. Mike Jeffries has uh, just talked to the competitors. They have decided that Droopy's dead body is going to remain in the box for this fight. Now, right out of the gate, that is an incredible amount of damage that Glenn Boxel and Caldera has scored. All he has to do is just survive. survive. Survive the full three minutes with Lynx, and he may be taking this one home. Now, uh, before we run that fight, though, we are going to go to a big box fight in Cage 4. Now, this is Minor Threat 5 facing off against Blackjack. Now, Minor Threat 5 there in the pink corner is running Supreme Ruler, my beloved. Now, this as a is a mini bot. This is an interesting design, Luke. This is, I believe, known as a cam lifter. 
Yeah, Cam Lifter. Now, uh, we saw that uh, as part of Ace, the Minibot on Jackpot on BattleBots. And uh, Jeff Waters, our uh, our plumber from Las Vegas. Uh, Five, <laughs> and four, Robot Builder Extraordinaire has two, uh, miniaturized one, this design. Fight, and doing robots great with this. fight. We've got two Minibots here in the box. We've got kind of a longer forked bug here uh, running with Blackjack. And the two big bots are going at it. These are two massive birds. Minor Threat 5 run by Luke Rell uh, from Team Jackbot. Oh, look at that. I see a, bolt, a belt that is uh, looking very loose on Blackjack. Is the weapon oh, on boy. Blackjack down? Oh, wow. guys out. oh, Oh, a late hit right at the tap out. Oh, and it, oh, whoa, no. another hit. The match is done. Whoa. That was absolutely a late hit. Okay. Wow, team Jackpot going in for the kill there. Okay. Controversial late hit after the bell. That's not great, Chris. Whew. Yikes. That's gonna, that's gonna lead to some interesting conversation upstairs in the pits, I think. Yeah, you know, I don't know. What's the uh, what's the protocol for that? You know, we don't have one. It doesn't happen too often. I feel like okay, you like late hit my robot. That means I get to take the sledgehammer. Just one, one, one just free one shot. Bonk. You get to drop a you get to drop a house bot. On get, it. Yeah, right. You get to call Kevin Milchewski down. He gets to tip the house bot onto uh, <laughs> the late hitter. There you go. Wow. Okay. Uh... Let's go check in here with Lindsay. Hello, Lindsay. Hello, Luke. Uh, yeah, there's definitely already some discussion going on about late hits. I have to imagine he just didn't hear the tap out. Uh, who knows? Um, but we do have some super chats here. Uh, one, uh, as you can imagine, is from Bruno Andre. Go Chibata. The Chibata Legion of fans are present in the chat right now. They are here cheering for their man, Rato. Uh, so I know all of Brazil is keeping a close eye on that one. Uh, but we have a, a follow-up super chat here from uh, Reagan. That uh, fire is supposed to be hot wings. So, oops. Oh, go I, hot wings. Oh. I see. There we go. I, I got a little too self-conscious trying to read the emojis on air. I think I uh, I clammed up. I mean, there's not a be, chicken wing emoji yet. There's got to be a wing emoji, right? I think he might have entered it and the program just didn't read it. I don't know. But yeah. go hot wings. I'm really excited to see Eli in hot wings. Uh, what an unusual design. And to see it succeed this year um, has been really fascinating. Uh, so, yeah, I'm, I'm looking to see what it can do this time around. What an unusual and an unusually dominant design yeah. from Eli. Uh, yeah, it's not so often that you get to see a weird robot do so well. So, right. There you go. I, I love great bots. I, I love weird bots. I absolutely love weird great bots. Yeah, exactly. All right. Uh, now, Cage 2 is going to start here. Now, again, Droopy's dead body is going to remain in the box. And uh, Glenn with Caldera. Going to see if he can take on the reigning defending champion here in Calvin Eba and Lynx. He's taken him first place the last two finals here in this weight class. Glenn, though, entering this fight as the number three ranked robot of all time here Five, in the Beatles. Four, three, two, one. Fight, robot. Here we go. Fight. Oh! Wow. Glenn, ooh, good little weapon on weapon there. Wow, here we go. This is the Calvin, Eba, and Lynx that we have grown accustomed to seeing. Now, it's interesting, in the Booty Brigade uh, formula, normally Calvin and Lynx drives way more conservatively because, you know, you never know where Droopy's going to be and you might end up destroying yourself. But now he gets to drive just like Lynx would drive. Now, here we go. Now, Caldera is stuck up against the dead body of Droopy. And Brett is coming in here. Now, that is their one unstick of the match. If Calvin can get Caldera stuck again, that will be it. Two minutes and 15 left here in this fight. Big hit there Calvin on the side is, of Lynx. Calvin's on his head. Now you can see Brian Boxel and his dad, uh, Glenn, here, cage side. Brian is driving the mini bot, and Brian has landed a good pin here on Lynx. Wow. Those are definitely the control points that you're going to need to earn if this does end up going another minute and 45 seconds. 
those big uh, those, those, those big showers of sparks really just show you how fast these weapons are running and they are really uh, equally powered here. And you see the two robots just kind of jump back together. Um, you know, like that is uh, telling you that these weapons are spinning at a similar speed here. Oof. Oh, another big roofing from Lynx on Caldera. Lynx is just staying totally planted to the floor. Where is Caldera? Wow. Now you're looking for damage. There hasn't been a lot of damage here yet, wow. other than Droopy. One you're minute left in this match. You're looking for control. Wow. And Caldera stepped up against the rail. Now can Brian go in and save his dad here? They are being counted out. The voxels are out. Knockout. Booty Brigade winning their first match of the day, even though half of the robot was dead. That is the kind of performance that you expect to see out of Calvin Eba and Lynx. That was a fantastic, fantastic fight. It helps when half of your robot is a world champion. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Let's take a look at this replay. Now, we saw a lot of weapon-on-weapon -weapon hits here. These big showers of sparks, and you know, really just showing you the power of these two weapons, pretty evenly matched. Now, one of the challenges, though, with just the design of a horizontal is that it has a tendency to go flinging across the box. Now, when you spend a lot of time in the air, there is a opportunity that you land uh, on a bad bump, and uh, you get tipped up against the rail, and you get stuck. Now, here we go. The voxels. Gracious in the face of defeat. Now look at this. We teased it uh, before. Now uh, we're going to see it here. We've got Jake Hoffman here and Maximizer here in pink. Now this is a two-time Golden Dumpster winner for this robot. He introduced this robot this year. So this is a brand new 2023 robot facing off against Cody and Swagmore. Now, uh, Swagmore is one of the three Team Honeycracked robots that have qualified for the finals. And uh, this is our first look at Team Honeycracked's performance for Five, the finals. Four, Let's see how three, that new test box two, is going to affect one. this fight. Fight, robots, and fight. here we go. Ooh, a good start here for both of these robots. Jake debuting Maximizer's new weapon assembly which is absolutely incredible. You can follow his uh, his build diary on YouTube, Jake Hoffman. Now, if you haven't seen Maximizer before, it has a heavy plow on the front of it, and then it whips that tail around to attack the side of its opponent. Now, Swagmore, luckily, has that big yellow, uh, just uh, armor skirt that is uh, wrapping around the robot, protecting it from these big hits. Looks like they're tangled up here. Wow, a little pirouette. Now, typically the back of your robot, the side of your robot is uh, an area that is not as well armored. And uh, Maximizer's designed to take advantage of that. It looks like there is a belt somewhere in the center of the, uh, the cage, Luke. Yeah, I think that may be a belt off of Swagmore. Yes, that drum is now Fun down. Right, okay. So Jake Hoffman and Maximizer's weapon is still running, and uh, this is the time to go in and uh, score aggression points with that weapon, because it's looking like Slagmore's pretty bulletproof. It's gonna be tough to, uh, to score damage. Now these armor skirts that are going around the entire robot, this is a, also a kind of relatively new thing. Uh, and we started to see a lot more of these after the Brazilians came up to fight at NHRL. This is a Brazilian, very Brazilian kind of inspired design choice. Yeah, you would think I want to put the hardest metal on the outside as my armor, but that actually transfers a lot of the energy from a hit into your bot. By putting a, a much larger padded, gummier material around the outside of your bot, you can actually absorb a lot more energy and you can continue further into the match. 60 seconds left here, and Jake has scored damage points. I can see that part of the drive on Swagmore is impaired. You can see Cody still desperately crab walking toward his opponent. 
trying to show some kind of aggression, but uh, Jake is very much ahead on the points here. 40 seconds left here in this fight. This may be our first judge's decision of the day. Wow, do you see all of that plastic that's being peeled up on that armor? Oh, oh and there goes a wheel. Is that a wheel? Yes, it looks it like a wheel. It was a wheel. Wow, 20 seconds left. Jake is very ahead on the points. It's, it's actually interesting because Maximizer is inverted. It is now kind of like an overcutter and was able to clip the wheel on Swagmore. Weirdly, Swagmore seems to be driving better. It's like <laughs> never a great sign. Last 10 seconds here. These robots have both escaped the count out. This one will go to the judges. Our first judges decision of the day here at the finals. Wow. Able to crab walk back to the door. I mean, yeah, these are great robots. Wow, Jake is pretty happy about uh, that performance. Well done, Jake. Look at Cody. Yeah. Okay. All right. Now uh, we are. Uh, we've got an update here on a fight that we didn't see here yet on the stream. Silent Spring just defeated Offbeat, so uh, Jameson Go did win his very first uh, first match of the day via tap out. It's Offbeat tapping out, and uh, Jameson, not surprisingly, you know, uh, advancing with one win. He's got to get one more to get into the bracket. Okay, cool. All right, so let's check in here with Cage One. Now we're going to see Toro Jr. facing off against Pete Covert and Nightcrawler. Now Nightcrawler here is in the blue corner here at the bottom of your screen. Toro Jr., the Minotaur-inspired, uh, down no, no, no. Toro-inspired Minotaur, all right? So uh, it is a very Toro-esque uh, robot. The there. Colorado combat robotics community versus the Brazilian combat robotics community. This is, uh, these are two very big bubbles going head to head right now. Absolutely. Five, four, three, two drum enthusiasts two, on both one. sides. Absolutely. Fight. Robots fight. Now, Chris, we heard Toro Jr. spinning up yesterday, and it is terrifying. There's like a primal fear that you feel. Wow, Toro Jr. just spent some airtime there. There's a primal fear that you feel when you, when you hear this weapon spinning up. It's almost like a, there's a lion in the jungle or something that's hunting you. Wow, but Pete Covert and Nightcrawler are scoring another good hit on Toro. Now, it's interesting. These are both drum designs, but they couldn't be further apart in their designs. Nightcrawler with a, a really long, uh, elongated, uh, what's called an egg beater drum. Uh, and Toro Jr. with a really dense, compact drum. Yeah, that creates some really interesting physics with Nightcrawler because it's got so much air inside of the middle of that weapon. It really has more reach because it's able to kind of reach out and make first contact. Toro, because its drum is so compact, has so much energy that's stored up in there, and it's really able to gyro itself back onto its feet, not need a save, and also land really big hits when the, uh, the angle is right. I'm not seeing that super dominant driving, though, from Ooh. Toro. Here we go. That was the first exchange they won. Pete gyroing himself back onto his feet. This is a pretty even match here. Ooh, another good hit on the back of Nightcrawler from Toro Jr. And Toro really turning the tide here and dictating the pace of this fight now with a minute and 15 left. This kind of aggressive arcing drive style kind of uh, reminds me a little bit of Daniel Freitas, who's not here today, but his teammates are, uh, you know, kind of emulating the same drive style. Nightcrawler drive Doro is having a, a little issue with physics right now. Uh, it seems being fully spun up, it just keeps inverting over and over. It can't, it can't really turn without turning itself upside down. Another huge hit! Wow. Yeah, that odd physics can happen. Uh, you know, when you put the robot into the box and you start driving it at full speed, you realize, oh wow, some of the weight is uh, just like kind of incorrectly balanced and that's creating these strange gyro forces. Really, ideally, you want to stay totally planted to the floor as an egg beater. 30 seconds left here in this fight. 
Now, every single time that Pete is kind of staying, uh, like, stuck on his head or gyring on his head, you know, he is losing control points. He really needs to score a big hit or a knockout here. With just 10 seconds left in the match, can he do it? They both escaped the count out. This one will also go to the judges. He went in for one last uh, attack run and only found the side rail. Now this is uh, one of these interesting things that we were talking about, and it's going to be a factor that we may see later in the, uh, the match. These are robots that don't have kind of um, automated gyroscopic, um, automated gyroscopic correction. Right. Um, this is kind of like uh, driving a car without power steering. There is really very few kind of computers that are inside of these robots that can help them uh, fix the, the gyro. Um, now we do have one builder upstairs who's built something experimental that is designed to fix the gyro. We haven't seen him yet, but we are very interesting, uh, you know, very interesting to see. Now, um, let's uh, get an update here on one of our judges' decisions. Maximizer winning that fight by unanimous judges' decision and uh, right, advancing. Jake. Let's check in here with Kyle and the Coakley brothers. Hello, Kyle. Hello, yes, I am standing by here with the Coakley brothers. Gentlemen, I just wanted to come talk to you guys. This is a different vibe at the pits than I've seen at the last event. The last event, you were playing video games. Yep, yep. You were hanging out. Now you guys have a full banner. Your bots look absolutely gorgeous. Everything feels a little bit more serious, even down to the wardrobe. Yep, yep. So how are you feeling about this event? What's going on with your bots? Anything different? Um, me, I have a little bit of a different configuration. I have forks on one of my bots, uh, so I have a different setup I can use for specific fights. I'm not sure what I'll be doing with that, um, but we'll see. Uh, first fight, Torrential, I'm looking good. Um, I, I feel great about it. I really like the new setup you guys are running. Um, it works well. I'm very relaxed, very calm, and uh, yeah, I'm really, really looking forward to getting into it. Now, Owen, when you won your golden dumpster earlier this year, you were telling us that Super Scope was a much more experimental design. You were trying to figure some stuff out. How is Super Scope looking now? Is it is it still experimental, or do you have this thing dialed in? I'm hoping to have it dialed in. We've changed just about the drive motors from June and dialed in the weapon. This is exactly the same bot that was here last event. We just built a second one of them. So we have two Cthulhu's, two Super Scopes, a couple of mini bots, but Super Scope came out of the last event undamaged, so one of these is literally the same bot. Um, we did a little bit more tweaking, just got bought some electronic spares, but it seems like it's going to go pretty good. I am just blown away at the development we've seen with your team just in the past year. Your bots look just straight off a shelf, professional product right now, amazing work. We cannot wait to see how you guys do today. Oh, and who are you fighting first? Uh, I have Buzzkill, which Corey has fought three times now. This will be my first time against Buzzkill, first time against the Undercutter. I'm hoping that it's going to go pretty well, but he's, we both got a mini bot. We've both got pretty devastating weapons. It's going to be a tough one. Yeah. All right. Well, we have the Coakley brothers, two members of the Horizontal Revolution here at NHRL. And back to you guys at the desk. All right. Now, we also have an update from our last fight. Now, the uh, judges there decided Toro Jr. by unanimous decision. No surprise there as well. That was a pretty dominant match. Nightcrawler taking its right. first loss. Yeah. It's got two more wins to, to get through to the to the actual um, uh, main bracket for the rest of the remaining day. Yeah. We'll see if Pete can do it. We're going to check in here with our Cage 4 with more big robot action. And this is Kronk. Now, Mrs. Kronk, I know you're on the stream. You sent in a super chat earlier. Get to watch your man fighting against Joey Gannon and Yoshimi. Now, Chris, what timing? I was talking about gyroscopic control. Yoshimi is running a custom control board inside of its robot. It is designed to correct the gyro if it's starting to happen. Now, there are six onboard sensors inside of the robot, and those uh, collect data 250 times a second and it is uh, connected to the transmitter. Five, if you want to drive straight three, and you're starting to pull two, to the left or to the one, right, it fight, will correct itself. Robots fight. Okay, Yoshimi is making some pretty good straight lines here. Oh, big hit on Oh, Kronk. is that a belt off of Crunk? It looks like there is something big in the box. 
My goodness. Oh, the weapon on Krunk is spinning down. That weapon is dead. That was a big, big hit. But is Yoshimi's weapon offline as well? Yes, these are two dead weapons with two minutes and 30 seconds left here in this fight. Now, uh, Joey Gannon here, he uh, works for an autonomous taxi company, and uh, one of his jobs is designing these custom control boards. Now, uh, it is amazing. This control board is minuscule. You can fit it into an ant weight if you wanted to. And uh, really, just kind of the heaviest thing in this system is all of the gyros, the gyroscopes and um, yeah. the accelerometers, you know, the sensors that you put into your robot. It is, it is really high-tech stuff. And I felt last night as I was holding this control board in my hands that this is like the next iteration of the sport. Right. Um, if we can defeat gyro and build robots that drive exactly the way that you're expecting it to make those angles that you want versus always having to correct those angles yourself manually, physically, uh, you can build a pretty destructive, interesting robot that has way more precise driving. Yeah. Between the six sensors and the board, it is only three grams. Right. And that could go into a heavyweight robot. Yeah. And essentially perform the same functionality as it is right here in Yoshimi. Now I can hear the YouTube live chat already. Now the traditionalists are saying, I don't want to put computers into my robot. All right. I want to see that drift. I want to see that gyro. All right. Part of that is, you know, the, the beauty of the sports. Um, Get with the times, you know, like <laughs> we are going to see uh, artificial intelligence in these robots in uh, the coming years. We're going to be seeing this kind of gyroscopic correction technology really advance in the coming years because really smart engineers like Joey here um, are stretching the limits of what's possible in the sport. I absolutely get the irony of talking about this is two weapons are dead and uh, they are pushing one another around as we send this to the judges i'm sure but um, there is some very very cool computer technology on board here with yoshimi so. there's there's always going to be that level of unpredictability in in the sport when you have high velocity weapons hitting each other all right as we enter the last 10 seconds of this match this one will go to the judges we had that one big exchange right there at the start, killing both weapons, and then uh, just a bunch of pushing for the next two minutes and 50 seconds while Chris and I geeked out about the future of our sport. All right, so let's take another look at that big first hit. It's the most exciting part of that entire match. Yoshimi oh. coming in and just kicking Krunk in the face, killing both weapons simultaneously. Yeah, and I can see that big black piece of something which went uh, skipping away there on the left-hand side of the screen. I don't know if that was a belt or maybe that was part of a wheel or something. I think it was a belt off of one of the bots. I couldn't tell which one. Yeah. It, it was in less than a frame. Yeah, absolutely. All right, that one will go to the judges, and I hope they were paying attention. Okay, oh, very interesting. We're gonna go to cage two. This is Tony the Ambrosio and Aria running uh, Blackbird here. They've got this very interesting attachment Five, on the front four, of Blackbird three, to counter two, Tommy Wong and Drew Fight. Robots fight. Now they're like two kind of TPU paddles on the front of that designed to help corral a bot that is very difficult to control. Now, this is exactly what Tony wants to do. He wants to slow down those dual horizontal weapons on Droopy and push the robot into the rail. Wow, it's actually working kind of well, Tony. Wow. Now, these rubber wings here, they're designed to kind of catch this, uh, catch the horizontal and spin it down a bit. That's really what you need to do with Droopy. If it is spinning, it is moving. That's exactly what Tony wants to do here. He wants Droopy to, to go off kilter, to start slowing those weapons down using the box so that he can land that pin and deliver that egg beater into the side of Droopy. Oh, here we go, Tony. Big hit on Droopy. 
on these experimental paddles are working. It's incredible. I can hear Tony saying, they're working, they're working. They're cage side. It is so difficult to plan for Droopy. These are 10 inch blades. Wow. Wow, another big hitch. Droopy going into the rail. And Tony is saving his robot through these, these paddles. What an innovative idea. This is the kind of oh, thinking oh. that you expect from Gotta the Gotta be finalists. careful here. Now, Tony's characteristic fast Chevy drive style is not here. I wonder if that's because these paddles are dragging along the floor or something. But he is moving very slowly, but in a very controlled mesh fashion. And he is winning these exchanges here with Droopy. I can't believe this. Another big hit, the crowd goes wild. Tony is successfully slowing down Droopy long enough to land these hits. And Blackbird looks unscathed here. 45 seconds for Tommy Wong to do something here with Blackbird. Tony has very wisely stayed squared up with his opponent, not allowing the back of that robot you know, to be exposed. 30 seconds left here in this fight. The one constant in our sport is change. As if you have won this uh, this competition just a couple months ago, people are watching your tape and coming up with a strategy. 15 seconds left here. And this is uh, our first really effective strategy we've seen against the five pound version of Droopy. Tony has survived the count out here. He's gotten the full three minutes with a killer in the box. So we're going to take this one to the judges. Wow. There we go. Wow. Oh, I love it. Tony D'Ambrosio there celebrating with his daughter. He is so happy about his performance. All right, we're gonna take this one to the judges. We saw amazing control from Tony D'Ambrosio and Blackbird. We saw him punting Droopy up against the rail multiple times. And I'm gonna say Blackbird looks unscathed. So uh, I think that this may be a win for Blackbird here. We'll see how the judges uh, end up evaluating this, but those paddles worked really well. Now, uh, who was saying that they didn't think the paddles were gonna work last night? We heard about the paddles last it night. It might've been Ricky. It might've been Ricky. Ricky, we're calling you out. All right, uh, we're gonna go over here to cage one while we await that judge's decision from cage two. Now I can see Kablooey Tango here in uh, the pink corner. And very helpfully, they're color coordinated wearing orange shirts for an orange robot. Now facing off against Synthesis 30 and Corey Nason. Now, uh, Corey there is running as his minibot Crash Fest and Robert Rund. And uh, Corey is running a emulsifier inspired big, uh, big blade here, big vert, and uh, facing off against an undercutter, four wheel drive undercutter in uh, I see Tango. Also, a stag beetle bot and Michael alongside Corey. These are two very good uh, beetle weights, Five, you know, to put into four. your corner. Three, and it's wild that Synthesis has enough one, weight for uh, these two robots. Fight. Uh, and you hear that vertical scream up. Now Alex Kreese is driving Kablooey Tango here, and Alex has gotten around to the back of the robot, pushed Corey into the rail. Incredible control here. Now look at this. This is a multi-bot uh, pile up here. And you can hear Corey spinning up that blade. He would love to catch a piece of Kablooey Tango and send it right into the, uh, wow, big wow. shower of sparks there. Crash Fest successfully getting Kablooey Tango up into the air and Corey unable to capitalize. It is not easy to get under Kablooey Tango. That weapon is so low to the ground. Oh my God, he stuck the landing. Crash Fest is stuck into the ground. That robot is a non-factor and it's doing the thing here. Wow. Now I can hear counting. This is technically a, a pin. Now these two robots are tangled with one another. 
the geometry here just doesn't allow one of the robots to get that angle that they're looking for. Now Synthesis Ooh. is running this anti-horizontal plot. Oh. oh, big hit there. And completely oh, another pin. again, pushing Synthesis up against the rail. 90 seconds left here in this fight. There's still a massive amount of time left here. They've told Kablooey Tango to release. They released for a second, maybe, and going back into a Whoa! pin. Another pin! Wow! Oh, one wow. of those forks on the front of Kablooey Tango is askew. Yeah, that right fork is uh, very high in the air. It looks like part of that uh, robot is high-centered itself, but Synthesis is not moving. Is it stuck under a minibot? What is happening with Synthesis? Oh! Fluffy coming here to save. Is it high-centered? What's going on? If Corey can get moving at all, it, it was it was a mini bot. Oh. Yes. Here comes Synthesis. Synthesis is still mobile. Going to land another big hit. Are Alex and Lucy going to uh, tap out here at all? Synthesis. Again, another pin. Still high centered, Luke. 10 seconds left here. Looks like they've escaped the count out. This one will go to the judges. Wow. Massive amounts of damage on the Kablooey Tango side. Synthesis, high centered for much of this match. Oh, wow. I'd love to get a close look wow. at the side of Kablooey Tango. A destructive match here, and Kablooey perhaps saved by a lenient ref here in the box. That was a robot that didn't move for at least 30 seconds, and uh, the count out didn't happen on either robot, which is fair, at least. It may not be great, but at least it's fair, Chris. Now, just one, one half of Kablooey is just peeled up, and uh, it's just not making contact anymore with the floor. Pretty wild. Yeah, throughout that three minutes, it, was re it really came down to, like, each bot managed to really land, I'd say, one uh, incredible hit on its opponent. Now, uh, if you're a fan of Valkyrie on BattleBots, you might see elements of Kablooey Tango make it into future versions of that robot. Lucy Dew is now the captain of Valkyrie. Alex Kreese is her designer. And uh, they are testing out a four-wheel version of, uh, of that robot. Let's uh, first check in here with Kyle. Hello, Kyle. All right, come over here, buddy. All right, so I am standing here with Anthony D'Ambrosio. Tony, I just wanted to tell you Congratulations. Thank you. We just got word you won the judges' decision. Oh my God, that's amazing. We thought we did pretty well, but you never know with uh, with Droopy. So, thank you. Did your uh, dream catcher work as well as you'd anticipate? It worked exactly how we hoped it would. It slowed him down just enough to uh, to kind of get some good engagement with his weapon totally nuking me. He got some good hits yeah, when he turned me around. Rips. I mean, he ripped this thing in half. This is uh, we knew this was probably going to happen, but uh, it held up exactly like how we thought it would. Nice and slow engagement. Toss him up. The only downside was it made it really front heavy, so it was really hard for the wheels to kind of get good in, good engagement to the ground. So I was very slow, but it was almost better that it was slow because I can go in nice and slow and just nick him and back off. So nice. um, for, for one of the last fights I'm ever going to have with this thing, I'm happy that I got to fight Droopy and have success. So it was great. Congratulations, Tony. Thank you. All right. Thank you guys very much. All right. Now we're going to go to cage four and Brazilians, prepare yourselves for joy and delight. We have Ratto and Chibata. Now, uh, he's facing off against Jordan Neal and Squire here, which is this compact vert, and Chibata here entering this, uh, this fight as this big orange robot, just an incredibly destructive horizontal spinner. Now, Ratto, this is his very first uh, robot here at NHRL, and he has been absolutely obsessed this year with performance, improving the performance of Chibata. And uh, Rato, of course, has many, many, many millions of fans in Brazil. And uh, no doubt they are cheering on the, uh, the live chat right now for their uh, favorite builder here in the competition today.
Rato also brought his father all the way from Brazil for this competition. Wow. I asked him last night, when are five, you going to bring a bot four, to NHRL? He three, says, I did. It's two, Chabot. One. <laughs> there you go. Fight. Robots fight. Oh. oh, my God. A fast start here from Squire. Good box rush here from Jordan Neal, and he has taken it into the blue corner. Chaotic start. You can hear that, that short spin up, but that weapon is very silent right now. Has Squire's weapon gone down? I think it may have. I think I saw what looked like a part of uh, maybe its, uh, it, its belt got sheared off after that first big contact, and it's currently in the corner of the box. Now Squire is crab walking. Chibata, this is your time to come in here and capitalize. You have two minutes and 30 seconds here on the clock. Chibata is in a great position to continue to eat away at Squire. Tap out. Oh, it's a tap out. It's a tap out. Wow. Rato wow. winning that fight with Chibata. <laughs> Rato! Rato winning that fight. Incredible. We're going to absolutely see this fight on YouTube later. Rato is an incredibly popular YouTuber uh, there in Brazil, has a lot of fans, bringing those fans here into the live stream today. They are excited for him. Now let's take a look here at this first hit. Jordan Neal, a very aggressive box rush early in that fight, and that was his belt there. Chibata surviving, and there's just so much time left on, uh, on the clock. Jordan very wisely decided to tap out and not take a huge amount of damage. I think like there is a misperception that everyone has three or four versions, copies of their robot upstairs. For a lot of builders, most of them, they just have one. Yeah. And uh, if you get totally wrecked in your round one match, you are sh just very uh, sharply curtailing the, uh, the rest of your day. All right, uh, let's go and check in upstairs with Lindsay with a super chat. Hello, Lindsay. Hello. Um, oh my goodness. So the YouTube live chat is on slow mode right now. You'd never know it because there are about a thousand Brazilian fans and they're cheering on Rato. We're so happy right now. We have some super chats from some of them and some uh, other super chats as well. Uh, this is from Alberto Almeida. Go Rato. Thanks for the great show, NHRL. And then uh, the next one here is from Jose Luis Lima. Let's go Brazil, go Chibata. That's a mouse emoji, Lindsay. Oh, is that what that is? Yeah. Okay, I know I needed a little bit of help, but uh, I, I think I know what a mouse is, Luke. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, Rato has a lot of fans and for good reason. He puts out amazing content. I've been watching his build videos as he was getting ready to go to NHRL and um, they've just been incredible. So go and check out Rato on, uh, on YouTube. Absolutely. Uh, Lindsay, I hear you have more Super Chats. Oh, there, there's a whole bunch. Good. So buckle in. The next one is from our friend Christine Giver over uh, at the Out of the Box podcast. Much love to all the competitors and good luck. I wish I could be there to see it, but sending hugs from afar, you're all amazing. And then, uh, all right, we have another one here for Mrs. Crunk. You savage attacker, babe. <laughs> As you can imagine, she was very, very uh, vocal during uh, Joseph's fight there. Um, the next one here is uh, also about Joseph Knight from Ian. Shout out to Joseph Knight's vaudeville mustache. Now, we had uh, someone in the chat, I believe Razor259, wanted to know whose mustache is better, Clyde or Joseph? Oh. Debate amongst yourselves. Well, Joseph's is real, <laughs> so there's that. Wow. Clyde's is real awesome. Yeah, Luke. Clyde's is like, a, it's like an industrial Chef Boyardee accident happened there, <laughs> you know? He can't shave that off anymore. Yeah, it's just permanent. Industrial accidents are the only kind he knows yeah, how to have. There you go. I hear we have uh, two more Super Chats, Lindsay, is that right? Oh, we absolutely do. The next one is also from Mrs. Crunk cheering on someone else this time. You got this, Blackbird. You are doing amazing. True. Uh, man, that was really exciting to see that uh, tactic pay off. Um, and then the last one here is from uh, Mortis Diem. 
Let's hear it for the true winners of NHRL. The Cages, they take on all the bots and, uh, you know, keep on fighting. So also shout out to the cage managers who do a lot of repairs throughout the day, a lot of cleaning. They are always, you know, on, on guard. So it takes a lot of people to, to make this competition work. A lot of them are unsung heroes. So we see you all. We love you. Thank you. I think this is the first time that I've heard a shout out for the actual physical cages. That's yeah. pretty cool. I mean, there's a lot of technology in the cages. I love to talk about the cages and just geek out about them when I take my uh, like kind of uh, VIP tours around the building um, because there's a huge amount of software that is attached to each one of these cages. Um, every single time that we do a tap out or a, uh, a decision, um, it is here at the cage that gets sent up into a spreadsheet. It updates our brackets automatically. It clips the video so that we can see it later. Um, it uh, updates the stats, like around the uh, the time of the uh, the match, the type of match, and everything. Um, and it is all computerized, which is amazing. Uh, there's just a ton of software that's running uh, through the building, and uh, it's cool to see that other people like the cages like I do. That's pretty cool. Virtually everything here is integrated. Uh, even the hot dog truck outside somehow, yeah. I think, is plugged into the cages. Well, they, they, they can tell you know, when people are hungry and they just start shooting out more hot dogs, you know? Yeah. Incredible. Yeah, it's amazing. Um, yeah, very cool. Now, uh, very exciting. I can see people loading in, and these are some pretty incredible robots. Uh, here into Cage 4, I can see loading in STF, which is this massive, massive green horizontal here on the right side of your screen, facing off against Sombra 30, which is this very interested twisted egg beater uh, spinner from Brazil. Now, uh, STF is a walker, so that means that it weighs 45 pounds, and they put a huge amount of that weight into this deadly horizontal weapon. This is designed to just deliver massive, massive hits. Facing off against Sombra, which continues to run this really interesting twisted drum design. Now, who was it who talked to uh, Tomas yesterday and found out how long it takes to cut that drum? Is it Kyle? It might have been Kyle, I think. No, oh, it was it was Gil. It was Gil. Uh, it takes 48 hours to cut that twisted drum um, on Sombra, which is amazing. If you ever get a chance to see it up close, it's pretty incredible. Um, it is. Uh, it's, it's almost like a work of art. Um, facing off against, you know, just a aluminum baseball bat uh, <laughs> that's wrapped in you know, wiring uh, <laughs> from STF. STF is um, elegant in a brutal way, I would say. It's, and um, it is scary. You do not want to face STF ever. That is like your worst nightmare, you know? It's, uh, STF definitely has the reach advantage here against Sombra, but it's got the disadvantage of being that long horizontal against a powerful vertical. True. You know, a head-to-head -head matchup kind of could go either way. I will tell you that one of the things that I've seen in Sombra fights in the past, like earlier in the year, is that the robot seems delicate. Um, there are a lot of things that, you know, can break on Sombra. I've seen, like, kind of big hits. Sombra dies, right? and SDF uh, can deliver those big hits. I think with a horizontal like SDF, they want to score a one hit knockout. Like that's right. ideal for them. You're probably not gonna see a massive box rush. You're going to see them spinning up completely in their square and waiting for Sombra to come around and just make that massive weapon on weapon hit. Um, and uh, we may see that kind of one hit knockout here. This is an exciting, exciting robot to watch just because of its brutal effectiveness. Um, it is our scariest horizontal, I think. I don't know. I'm trying to In think. In the field today? Yeah. Uh, as far as I mean, size and reach goes. Pounds, yeah. Yeah. And it's mostly in the weapon. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that that's one of the things that people are talking about. You know, it's like, is the walker bonus, like, does it, does it make sense here um, as we go into 2024? Because so many people just put all of that weight into their, their weapon, put all of that weight into their, uh, their weapon motors, and uh, you can build this really kind of min-maxed um, uh, kind of ratio of power to, uh, to, uh, to weight. 
Okay, now they're closing up the box. That's a good sign here. It looks like these robots are looking good and ready to fight. You can see this walking over, slow walking into the blue corner here from STF. Now, STF stands for Save the Frogs. And uh, you can kind of see, you know, the green and orange. It's like a tropical frog. Yes. Facing off against a Brazilian robot here in Sombra 30. Now, this is from Team AGVS. And STF is run by Team Ribot. Most of Team Ribot on BattleBots. I just love that uh, on the blue side of the, the box, we have multi-bots. We've got a walker, we've got a Five, weight bonus, and Sombra is just two, in yep. there, alone, I'm in it. Rounder, ready to right. fight. Kind of the, uh, the one-bot army. Oh. oh, big exchange right off the bat. You can see just the heaviness of STF. And Sombra really has to stay on his opponent and not get stuck with these little mini bots here. Oh, you're able to see how STF can just so easily peel up the plywood floor. Now the strategy here is that the mini bots go in and hold Sombra 30 in place while the big wow. robot comes in. Big hit there. Oh, where did and Sombra looks... go? And what is that rolling? Is that a wheel? That is a wheel and oh. STF weapon is dead. Sombra, where is Sombra? Sombra it, is gone, Chris. It didn't vaporize. But you can still hear that weapon running. Sombra's weapon is running. Looks like, oh, they are down one wheel. And they are being uh, pushed around by a mini bot. One minute and 50 seconds left here in this fight. Is STF still walking? I think that STF's walking mechanism is still good, but that weapon is dead. Now, half of the drive is down on Sombra. The weapon is down on STF. That's a lot of damage here in this fight. STF is doing everything it can to block the house bot from unsticking Sombra. Wow. Now, is Sombra high centered on a mini bot? Knockout. That's a knockout. There's your knockout. Wow. Ooh. Another interesting house bot strategy here. That is a uh, that is a factor, a growing factor that we're seeing in the competition. In this case, trying to delay the house bot as much as possible to score that knockout. Advancing here is STF and uh, Sombra 30. Now, one loss down. They need to win two more to get into the bracket. Let's take a look at this replay. All right, now we saw big, big concussive hits from STF sending Sombra across the box. That is not something that you typically see. Typically, you see the horizontal going flying across the box, but just that weight on the robot, that 45 pound robot is amazing. All right, now loading into cage three, I can see Corey Nason and Synthesis. Now, Synthesis really just captured the imagination of uh, the internet and uh, ran what some are calling the best fight of NHRL history six weeks ago, facing off against uh, Booty Brigade. Yes, indeed. Now, uh, I don't know if we're going to go to that fight next. We may be going to Vorion facing off against Anxiety next. Uh, that is in cage one. Now, Anxiety here is in the blue corner, and Vorion from Brandon Bennett Young is in the pink corner. Now, Anxiety uh, is run by Lucas McCarthy, and uh, he entered this fight with a record of three and one across uh, one event. This is a Team Robo Jackets robot uh, from Georgia Tech. And these are very smart engineering students on the anxiety side, facing off against Brandon Bennett Young, a recent engineering graduate. So it's like a college students versus a recent college grad. And Vorion is version two of Phenomenon. This is the new and improved devastating vert from Brandon. 
and he has a lot of faith in Warion, as uh, you know, he told you on your uh, your interview earlier today with him, Kyle. Absolutely. Now, I will say this. I was speaking to the anxiety team yesterday. They have literally doubled up the armor on this bot. They have moved up to quarter Five, inch as far as the four, full armor package three, on the outside of it. Two, and they've doubled up on the bolts one, connecting the armor to the bot. They're hoping fight. to negate any of those failure points they had at their last competition. But, oh! oh it's not going to is going to be one heck of a test for that. Brandon Bennett Young is a very tactical driver. Oh, this is a treat to watch. This is like a 2023 robot facing against, uh, facing off against like a 2003 robot in anxiety. <laughs> I mean, listen, I'm not going to uh, to malign anybody who's built a robot because it's certainly better than I could build. But anxiety very much looks like it was cut by hand and bolted together. In and, many ways, it was. And Vorion looks like it landed in like a, in a spaceship. You know? <laughs> oh, oh my God. The strength of that hit actually knocking Boreon back on its back end, but that's okay. It's fully capable of self-writing. And yeah. now, Anxiety upside down, able to drive inverted, but not optimal for their design. This is the perfect, perfect kind of uh, target here for Boreon. Big, juicy uh, target with this dead weapon. Could probably pop it again. Another big pop from Boreon. A minute 45 left here. Looks like Vorion oh, might be no! having some drive issues. And Brandon yep, he's is got smoking. a little bit of smoke coming out. That weapon is slowed down, perhaps stopped. Yep, all the way to a stop now. And it does look like that left side of the drive is jammed in some way. Perhaps that's what the smoke was. Wow, Anxiety's drive is still fully functional. They're going to hopefully keep this going for another minute and a half and take it to the judges. Brandon has 90 seconds here to just stay alive. He's pretty far ahead on the points. Yeah, it does look like the weapon is down on anxiety as well. That's really good as far as judges' decisions go at the end of it. For a Vorion win. But man, that drive going out and that weapon going out on Vorion, that is a tough, tough situation to be on. Yeah, it looks like the motor's burnt out, and uh, he's really just trying to stay mobile enough to avoid the count out here. 50 seconds left. This has got to be disappointing for Brandon. I mean, he's put so much time and effort and work into Borion and to see it basically kill itself. Probably uh, worrying for, uh, for this builder as he brings it upstairs. 30 seconds left. Unless something catastrophic happens, we are going to crab walk our way into another judge's decision. Yeah. Now, Anxiety does still have fully functional drive. It's just spent most of this fight uh, like a... like a upside-down crab. Yeah. You know, if you put a crab upside down, it's still able to walk. I it's think it just depends on how the long Marylanders the legs are, you know? The, uh, the, uh, That's true. In the competition, yeah. Depends on how long the legs are. I bet those short-legged crabs, not so much. But those long-legged crabs, they probably got a chance. There you go. All right, we did take this one to the judges. And he's waving, he's waving the self-writer just to show that <laughs> at least that's still working. Brandon's waving to the crowd and waving to the judges. Pick this me, one is, pick uh, me. It's gonna be close, but I think that this may be a win for Brandon Bennett Young and Vorion. That's the, that is what I'm thinking as well. Excellent job by the Robo Jackets team, but just so many hits in those for, in that first 45 seconds from Vorion and Brandon Bennett Young. RoboJax is a really interesting program. They are running multiple types of robots. They have walking robots. They've got um, they've got kind of like uh, educational kind of task-based robots uh, that they're running as well. They have a combat robotics division there Oof. at Georgia Tech. Now let's take a quick look here at this replay. Vorion just shredding anxiety here, popping that robot in the air, ultimately killing the weapon, putting it on its head. Really, Vorion doing a lot of work here in this uh, first part of the match before, uh, you know, flaming out basically, smoking out and uh, crab walking its way in the back half of this match. Vorion is very much about maxing out all of its stats. That is something that Brandon's been working on all year, and sometimes that means you run those motors real hard. Yeah, exactly. Uh, one of the one of the big defining factors for Brandon's story is just his time in the box, his time at the bench. I mean, like he has built 
dozens of robots now at this point. Yep. He's been building robots since he was a little kid, and he competes up and down the East Coast. Yeah. And um, like when NHRL landed here on the scene, he really just embraced the competition fully. And this is easily the fifth or sixth robot that he's fielded here at NHRL uh, alone. And um, you just can't replicate that easily. Um, that is a huge amount of experience on one side of the box. Absolutely. All right, well, right now we're gonna head on over to cage two. All right. Now we're facing here uh, Hot Wings in the pink corner. Up, up against Monkfish. Monkfish over there and in the Rachel blue. de Guzman. Now, now, Rachel won a golden dumpster six weeks ago. Yeah. And uh, got like a just absolutely viral social media video out of it. And facing off against Eli here. Uh, and Hot Wings. Hot Wings is so interesting and weird. These are two interesting and weird robots on both sides of the box. Kyle. Yeah, the meta is not what you need to qualify for the World Championships, especially if you look at the three-pound division. Rachel's robot is a shuffler with an extremely powerful horizontal spinner. It moves in this most delightfully chirpy way. It's like an organic way. Yeah, it's really interesting. It's got a lot of personality on this bot, um, and the face just, just screams sheer terror. How did I get here? What yeah. is going on? The look of disapproval uh, <laughs> meme on on the just it just looks like you you I don't know you you're returning a library book and you dropped it in the bath or something like just look at that. Now Five, with Eli four, here at Hot Wings, this three, is also a shuffler, two, so these are two one, pretty large fight. robots on both sides of the fight. box. Oof. Hot Wings is called Hot Wings because it has these wings here and the tips of the wings heat up to incredible temperatures. Hundreds yes. and hundreds of um, degrees Fahrenheit designed to burn the sides of its opponents. Now it does look like the actuator on that left arm is not working on Hot Wings. Oh my God, Rachel not is, great. Shredding among, uh, is shredding Hot Wings here. Hold on, now it doesn't look like there's any movement from Monkfish. Oh, there we go, Monkfish is still functional, and so is Hot Wings. There is no count out happening yet. But now is Hot left Wings' arms wing on Hot Wings is fully, uh, fully heated up, but this is Monkfish's fight here. Just attacking those, those arms here on Hot Wings. Yeah, this is such a hard draw for Hot Wings. They, they really want to be able to hug that opponent. Without that left side actuator working, there's no hug available to them. Oh, these arms just look broken on Hot Wings. Oof, rough way to start the tournament for Eli Davis and Hot Wings. Mugfish working beautifully. Everything's functioning exactly as you would expect. Wow, Rachel Dick Guzman and Monkfish is going to be winning this fight here by, ooh, I was about to say by knockout. Eli found a tiny bit of motion right at the end of that count out. Yeah, the more those forks kind of get distorted and the more high center the shuffling pods are getting on Hot Wings, the harder it is to find any engagement on the floor, but they do seem to be finding it. This might go the full three minutes. Wow, I think one of those forks was just ripped off by Monkfish. And just the absolute uh, restraint, I think, by Rachel de Guzman here and Monkfish. Wow. Just really showing off that patience, that kind of brutal patience that you develop as a uh, competitor in this sport. Yeah. Um, she could have ended this um, at great peril to herself earlier in this match, but uh, even Eli That's put down the, the transmitter Knock and uh, is clapping for his opponent. Rachel de Guzman, a strong opening for Monkfish. Yeah, I mean, they've got the momentum coming into this tournament. Our most recent Golden Dumpster winner for the three-pound division, Rachel de Guzman, really dialing this bot in and becoming an excellent driver as well, I, agree, I think. Yeah, yeah. That restraint is incredible. That is that is a that is a uh, an attribute that you yeah that you look for. You know, like when you start in this sport, you get this tunnel vision. The screen goes red. You feel like you're driving for ten minutes, right? Like you're prone to have late hits. You know, like you just don't. It's just a disorienting kind of like yeah. Uh, just really emotional kind of experience when you start out. 
10, 15 competitions later, you can see that kind of restraint where you're like, I know I'm ahead on the points. I'm going to wait for the count out. Yep. Just going to see, you know, like if my uh, opponent is moving slightly. Because every single time you make engagement, you're risking that you're accidentally going to get high centered or uh, something is going to break, you know, uh, yourself. All right. So we are now heading over into cage three. We're going to see Synthesis take it on, taking on Wicked Twister. Now, Corey Nason is getting an early uh, round of applause from the audience just because they are eager to see Synthesis' performance here today. As we said earlier, Synthesis brought us one of the very best fights in NHRL history just six weeks ago, defeating Booty Brigade. If you get a chance, go back and watch that fight. It is amazing. Five, four, Wicked Twister brought three, to you by Dave Wright. He's two, from Boulder, Colorado. One. Fight, robots, He's fight. nine and two across two events. That's quite a record coming into the World Championship. Now, Synthesis here is this big, big firm oh. that delivers huge, huge hits. And this is a very, very fast match here. Good opening. Synthesis loves the horizontal, Kyle. Really does, and Corey Nason is just a flawless driver. I mean, that's what really sets him apart wow. from some of the more big, powerful verts here is he really knows how to control the match, control the pace. That is a flex. Corey driving back to his starting Knock square. Out. Amazing. Yeah. He saw the soul leave Wicked Twister and said, it's done, I'm just going back to my square. And all while wearing a panda onesie, I got to tell you, you got to love this guy, Corey Nason. Team Pandemonium is growing, and it is, it's just, like, so dominant here yeah. in this sport. This was a family team that is just, just through good vibes alone, just uh, bringing in more and more builders <laughs> under that banner. And it's cool to see the panda onesies, you know? Like, I yeah. want to see more onesies. It's great. It's not the safest thing to actually work in the pits in. No. But I think when you're coming down here to fight, it, it yeah, gives off a good vibe. you can suck a sleeve yeah. into, you know, a piece of heavy machinery yeah, for sure. And I, we've yeah. covered this before, but I just, I don't know how fire retardant those particular no, materials are. No, no, no. If you uh, stopped, dropped, and rolled, you actually probably make it worse. Yeah. Oh, guaranteed. <laughs> it would melt onto your skin. It wouldn't be great. Yeah, yeah. Kind of, kind of. Uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, you know, I would say there's a lot of outfits here that are kind of flammable, you know. <laughs> All right, uh, we're going to go here into cage four, and we're going to see Timber Viper here uh, with Kevin Milchewski facing off against Torrent and Donald Sung. Kevin has already had a banner day being the, uh, I believe, the first to ever tip over a full heavyweight house bot. Let's just see what he does with the house bot here. You know, it's like Timber Five, Viper versus the house four, bot. Three, if he can two, flip a house bot with one, a 12-pounder, I will literally give that fight. man $1,000 myself. That's amazing. <laughs> Now, Torrent here, run by Donald Sung. Now, he is a uh, mechanical engineer who works on the virtual reality program at Meta. So uh, if you're there on the stream and you've enjoyed an Oculus device here in the past, uh, thank Donald and his team. Facing off against Kevin Milchewski, an Amazon engineer from Seattle. And uh, yeah, Torrent really just showing why, uh, why this robot has done so well earlier this year. It's fascinating, when, when Donald showed up for his first event, his bot looked very old school. Yes. He hadn't built anything for about 10 years at that point. Yes. So he brought a bot that looked about 10 years old. It was a new build, but it had a lot of older kind of design components to it. The changes that this bot has made just over the past year, I mean, he's completely modernized the design. Ooh, he's incorporated hits. so much, wow, look at that on the side, doing the thing. Tap out. Full tap out. Nice job, Donald Sung. Well done, Torrent. Now, my favorite Donald Sung fact is that uh, he went to Georgia Tech with Jameson Go. They were roommates. And they were college roommates. <laughs> I love that. It's that like amazing so to see that they both qualified for the finals. I yeah. mean, it's like, oh get to hang out with your college roommate like 10 years later and you're both in the same sport. That's pretty right. awesome. And both doing very, very well. Yeah. Yeah. 
All right, so we are now heading over into cage one. Oh, speaking oh. of Jamison Go, we're going to have oh Psycho in their first matchup against Hooligan. Psycho is Jamison's 12 pound entry into the tournament. Uh, Psycho is everybody's kind of favorite to win in the 12 pound divisions. And uh, there's definitely some matchups we want to see. It uh, is a gorgeous, compact drum spinner. When you look at it, it just looks professional. And uh, facing off against ja Jack Sapotnik here from Florida. Now, this is a college student from Florida. And Jack is running a heavily modified version of Hooligan. Now, if you saw Hooligan earlier this year, this is not the same robot. Yeah. Now, Hooligan is very Brazilian-inspired. He's running tangential drive. He's running this big uh, plastic armor skirt around the robot. He's running a uh, egg beater there. And um, he is really looking for the performance of this tangential drive system to uh, at least stay on pace with Psycho. Now, um, he's running very long forks, and uh, he's hoping that that's going to high center Psycho, get it up, and maybe land some big hits. But it is tough to do that against Jameson Go. Five, Absolutely, four, yeah. Psycho three, is Jameson two, Go's attempt one, at the meta, five, which should make anyone scary. Fight. Because Jameson wins golden dumpsters without the meta pretty regularly. Oh, Psycho getting Jack onto its head almost immediately. Psycho got a little bit of a speed advantage. And look how just tight to the ground it is while see moving around the a box. A lot of that gyro here with Hooligan. There we go. They've gyroed themselves back onto their wheels. Nice job. Ooh, another good pop in the air from Psycho on Hooligan. And Psycho is able to kind of fit between those forks and still get engagement against the weapon. Oh, and I think stripping off one of those forks from Hooligan. You're right, that's gone. Wow, yeah, Hooligan has been on its head way more than it's been on its wheels this match. Another big hit. It's almost like I'm seeing a cat playing with its food here with Psycho. Now, is the weapon running on Hooligan? Might not be, just Jab because out. he doesn't want to grind it against the floor, but now he's tapped out. He says, I'm done, thank you, we can't play anymore. First I don't think Jamo the realized there was a tap out there, but he... Yeah, yeah, there it is. First one of the day here for Psycho. By the way, three completely finished copies of Psycho. He has a lot of faith in that robot's ability to go far here today. Uh, the 12 pound uh, weight class really saw a big glow up here uh, in 2023. And yeah. Psycho absolutely is leading technologically and, you know, in terms of the record, that entire field. Yeah. I think there's a very good chance that we may see Jameson with a podium finish here today in the 12s. Now, one thing to point out when Psycho qualified for this tournament, they got first place, Golden Dumpster. The same tournament, he got first place and a Golden Dumpster with Megatron, his yeah. 30 pound robot. Absolutely unheard of. All right, so right now we are going to go upstairs to see our buddy Sam. Sam, what do you got for us? Hello, how's it going? I'm up here in the pits with Eli from Hot Wings, coming off a tough loss against Mungfish. Eli, what, what was up with uh, Hot Wings in that one? Uh, it all started with the left servo. Um, I didn't know what's going on with it. I'll have to check it out back in the pits now, but um, the left servo wasn't working, so I'm going to the fight. And they hit my arm directly. Uh, they ripped that apart. Um, one of my shufflers goes down. I'm just having all sorts of problems. Uh, hopefully, all that's out of the way. I have a spare robot, luckily, so I'm ready for my next fight. Hopefully, it will redeem myself there. Uh, I have a lot of high expectations for Hot Wings, and I hope I, some of you might have high expectations too at home, so definitely don't want to disappoint. Yeah, Eli, we certainly have high expectations, and we all love Hot Wings. And in fact, um, I just wanted to let you know that you have won a Sparky Award this year no for most innovative. Oh yes. Oh my God. So let me present this to you here. This is the <laughs> Sparky Award for most innovative. Oh my um, goodness. This was voted on by the henchmen and, and Ricky. And we just really love that you're bringing something new to the game that no one's done before. And on top of that, you're iterating and making it better every time. And it's just yeah. amazing. So. Uh, oh my God. Uh, I really appreciate it. Um, I mean, that's that's kind of what I'm here for. I'm here to try new things. I'm here to, you know, hopefully break the meta, mix things up. Um, you know, even if I lose, even if I go 0-2, I think winning this and I think also um, hopefully inspiring some of you folks at home, um, that, that means more than I think winning could. So I uh, really appreciate it. Thank you.
Well, Eli, thank you so much, and back to y'all at the desk. Wow, that is amazing. First of all, well-deserved award. That award looks so good. Yeah, I think you can actually turn it on. Uh, that doesn't surprise me. I mean, yeah, yeah but that's amazing. Well-deserved. Those uh, high-temperature sparks that uh, that he, Eli has incorporated into the design, I mean, they're normally meant for, like, diesel engines, as I recall. Yeah, like diesel glow plugs. Yeah, diesel glow so, plugs. Like, you know, you're kind of capturing your opponent and just burning into their side with this super We've hot. We've seen it just melt straight through, like yeah. the heat tape, straight through the armor, straight yeah. into the wheels, just yeah. causing all kinds of havoc. Such a brilliant design. Unfortunately, if you can't get those servos working on the sides, you're really going to struggle. you got to have kind of every aspect of that bot working. Now, we were talking about this earlier, but, you know, I love to see an unusual robot. That's, like, why I love January's kind of new bots event. It's my yep. favorite event of the year. Uh, just because you get to see just these really off-the-wall kind of ideas. But to see, a like, an unusual robot that's able to qualify and do so well yeah. is, like, just the holy grail. Yeah. I, I would love, love to see... 20 more hot wings, you know, kind yeah. of like, like an unusual robot that, that does well. Um, it's just, just poetry. It's, yeah. it's wonderful. Amen. Uh, we're going to go upstairs and we're going to check in with Lindsay up in the pits with some more super chats. Hello, Lindsay. Hi, Lindsay. Hello, Kyle. Hello, Luke. We have some super chats back at you. Uh, the first one is uh, near and dear to my heart. It's from CJC, who says, control bots taking W's. Nature is healing. <laughs> Good. <laughs> yes, absolutely. I know that's uh, also very near and dear to you, Luke. You you love those cam lifters. You love those control bots. One thousand percent, Lindsay. Yeah. <laughs> All right, the next <laughs> next one here is from uh, William Wilson. I want Brute to come back because we need more Gloomhaven themed robots. Okay. First time catching you live. Thanks for the entertainment. William, stick around. We have quite a few. I mean, I don't I don't know exactly what Gloom, oh, Gloomhaven is a is a board game, I believe. Uh, so I don't know, more Gloomhaven bots. Hi, right, William. I'm glad that you're here watching live. Yeah. That's awesome. And then uh, the last one we have here is from Ethan of Broken Gear Robotics. Good luck to everyone from all of us in Beloit, Wisconsin, rooting for all of our Merca, Team Defective, Team Honeycrack, Team Jackpot, and Team Claw Viper Builders. Oh, and make sure Ashley is fed for me. Ashley is absolutely running around the pits with all the bots and making sure they're ready to go down into the cages. And, uh, you know, sometimes uh, eating it kind of falls by the wayside. Yeah. 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 But we'll make sure. Yeah. We do absolutely. a good job feeding all the builders. There's, there's, there's some stuff around. So Ashley could grab a snack. It'll be all right. Yeah. 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 I also uh, saw Ashley. She's she's trying out uh, kind of a new surprise that we have for later on the stream. Yeah, I saw that too. She's like perfect for that. Yeah. It fits in beautifully. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> but you know, I thought maybe this thing would be a little taller, but you know, that's fine. I mean, if Ashley's involved, it's not going to be tall. She's not an exceptionally tall person. Yeah, that's true. All right, well, we're just teasing it for later. You know? <laughs> Go check that out later. Stay on the stream. Yeah, exactly. Um, okay, great. Awesome. I love all of the Super Chats. Continue to send them in. Thank you so, so much. Absolutely. Yeah. Remember when the Super Chats would, like, fund hot poke for us and whatnot? Yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Nice that we're past that. Um, I will say that uh, one of the big things that I see on the chat a lot is people asking, how do I get involved in the sport? I really love NHRL. I would love to come and experience it myself as a builder, but I don't really know where to start. And uh, we're really excited to announce that we are going to be launching Havoc Academy. Now you can go and purchase uh, a, we're doing actual pre-sales starting here today. Uh, if you go to the NHRL website and you check out the shop, you can buy that right now. If you're here in the audience today, very lucky you can go and see Shredder Bro Captain Evan Arias and Alicia Garnash. They are going to be manning the Havoc Academy booth here inside of the building. Go and talk to them and learn more about this program. It is incredible. We're going to set you up with your own um, kind of learning robot, training robot, and all of the education that you need to get into the box and really have a successful first outing here at NHRL. It's an amazing program. Kyle, you and me, Chris and Lindsay, we're all going to be gonna part of it, it ourselves. Yeah. And uh, we're going to be building our own robots by the end of this thing. So I'm pretty excited. One of the most invaluable parts, I think, about this program is you have direct access to so many of these talented builders, engineers, and designers to get their ideas, pick their 
your brain to see what you could do to improve upon your own robots and also just learn the basics. Learn those yeah. little things like how to pair a transmitter, stuff like that. So yeah. I think that's going to be incredible. Yeah. How does electricity work inside of the robots? You know, what are some of the design trade-offs that you make, you know, yeah. when you're making these choices around weight? Um, it's pretty interesting. So if you're interested, go and check out uh, more information on the website. If you're here in the building, go and talk to Evan and Alicia, learn more about it. And uh, you can sign up, you can purchase it here today uh, yourself. So be one of the first class, you know, here of uh, Havoc Academy. So very cool. All, All right, so we are gonna head four. over. Oh yeah, go ahead. Yeah, uh, Cage 4 is Torrential facing off against Cthulhu. Now, uh, Donald Sung is back in the box. He ran Torrent uh, just a couple of minutes ago, and uh, this is Torrential. Now, if you look at that and you go, well, it looks a lot like Torrent. How did that happen? I don't know, Kyle. How did that happen? I'll tell you how that happened. Donald Sung comes from a very old school yeah. philosophy on combat robotics. And back in the day, you actually weren't allowed to bring multiple copies of the same bot to the event and Five, call it the same bot. Four, so when he showed up three, for his first event here, he built two, two bots one, and decided to enter them both as separate copies. Fight. So Torrent and Torrential are essentially identical twins. Ooh, and Cthulhu just landed an amazing hit on Torrential. And uh, Torrential is inverted. Now, one of the big things I'm going to be watching for both Cthulhu and Super Scope from the Coakley brothers is the performance of their paddle wheels. Yeah. Now, these are really unusual wheel choices. I haven't seen that before um, at, uh, at other robots at other competitions. They are really championing this unusual design type. And Cthulhu just is translating great across the box. Now, interesting design choice. Defeating the minibot first to rack up damage points. It's pretty smart. And uh, Torrential now on its head. It sounds pretty quiet in the box, and I think that Torrential's weapon might be down. Oof! And a big. Oh! Oh, and looks like the power is, might be out on Torrential. Yeah, don't see any movement, and something's hanging out the back of that that doesn't look like it's supposed to be. Cthulhu's definitely hanging back, kind of waiting to see if they see any movement. There's our one unstick attempt from Flo, the house bot. Yeah, Flo is pushing a dead robot here. I'm not seeing any movement at all from Torrential. Tap this out. is a tap out. Your winner is Cthulhu. Now you can see Robert Rund here, you know, uh, running uh, the minibot here for Torrential. He is running minibots for four different teams today, which is about three teams too many, Kyle. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, you're going to be seeing a whole lot of Robert Rund standing cage side. He... He just wants to play. I don't know. It, I, some people seem to be a little bit, you know, have some feelings about this. I don't have a problem with it. He just wants to play. I don't have feelings about it, Kyle. I think it's great, you know? He's just just helping out a lot of friends with minibot action. I will say that, you know, one of the cool things about getting involved in the NHL community is you do make a lot of friends. And yeah. when it comes time for the finals and you didn't qualify yourself, you know, you start to see people calling in a lot of these favors. Where Absolutely. they're like, hey, listen, you know, we had such a great time. Like, we hung out earlier. Would you be willing to drive my minibot for me? You know, and uh, we're seeing that... Uh, Robert has a lot of friends, of course. And he's know? a very good driver. Why wouldn't you bring him in there to get the mini bots yeah, going? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Okay, that's great. All right. Okay, we've got a little break in the action. How has it been interviewing people up in the pit so far this morning? It's been lovely. I got to tell you, one of the most interesting parts about those interviews was interviewing Jameson and seeing, like, for the first time in my life, a kind of stressed Jamo. Yes. He's got a lot going on today. Yes. He's got a lot of bots that he's been putting together. He's trying some strategies he's never done before. And he feels, you can, you can feel the weight of that on him a little bit. All right, we're going to go over here to cage one. Now, this is Eva facing off against Phenomenon. Now, Eva over there in uh, the pink corner is run by Remy de Guzman from Team Shred It Bro on BattleBots this season. And it is a Shred It inspired robot facing off against Brandon Bennett Young, who is Five, on Team four, Mammoth this season three, on BattleBots two, with Phenomenon. This is his robots, uh, kind of classic vert. Boreon is version two, Phenomenon is version one. 
Eva, an incredibly good drum spinner here. Eva is first big hits. There we go. One of the big design changes that Eva has implemented for this particular event is the fact that they are going completely forkless, no ground game at all. It's just straight drum to bot action. That is very shredded, uh, shredded esque, I would say. You know, let's lead with the weapon. Uh, the first thing it's going to touch you is a weapon and not forks. Really makes you rely upon that driving, getting the correct angles, making sure you are hitting where you can get good engagement. And then, yeah, that's a perfect shredded move right there too, kind of launching yourself over top of the forks and off of the ramps to get yourself out of the path of your opponent's weapon. You're seeing great speed here from Eva, just doing uh, donuts around its opponent and really just trying to land as many hits as possible. It does look like the weapon on Eva may have gone down because it's unable to gyro itself back into place. Yeah. Phenomenon it's all right. continues they were, to run. They were able to get, what, second at Motorama this year with no weapon, or third at Motorama this year with no weapon? Wow, Ooh. a big hit from Phenomenon on Nuts. one of the minibots. Yeah, that was rough. Oh my God! Wow, Brandon that bullying the minibot. Ninety seconds left here. Now, as Brandon tries to dispatch this minibot, uh, Eva is very much trying to stay in the fight, trying to show aggression, hoping that perhaps something will happen. Maybe Phenomenon will smoke itself out, just like we saw with Boreon. Oh, oh no! What? Now I'll say this, Phenomenon has been getting stuck on the floor with their forks in this entire matchup. They do have one unstick left. Fluffy coming in here for the unstick. And uh, you know, it's kind of crazy that I have to say this. I'm surprised, I guess now, every time I see that, uh, you know, your opponent isn't trying to interfere with the house spot, you know? Yeah, that's not supposed to be a normal strategy. It's, I feel like it's so common here in the finals because yeah. just so much is on the, on the line. Wow, Fluffy, surgical precision there. Nice job, Fluffy. And it looks I'm like impressed. Phenomenon's weapon has come back. Wow. 15 seconds left. Brandon is very much ahead on the points here. He's probably going to take it to the judges. Update, he will take it to the judges. And I think that your winner will be Brandon Bennett Young and Phenomenon. Okay. Good matches here early in the day for Brandon Bennett Young and his robots. Remy super pleased with his performance there as well. They're going in for a good hug here, these two competitors. Take a quick look at this replay. Hey. Bam, love that hit early on hit from Brandon Bennett Young and Phenomenon. The weapon on Eva went down very early, yeah. like probably in the first 30 seconds of this match, and that was really a defining factor. And Brandon just went around and just kind of tried to kill all of the mini bots here. I mean, you do get damage points for taking out mini bots. I think that that's a fairly sound strategy. Eva, as we've seen earlier this year, does not necessarily need the weapon to win. But man, you need a weapon up against Phenomenon, I yeah. think, to really win a judge's decision. That thing hits so hard. Yeah. Um, Brandon's forks kept getting stuck in the plywood. That situation's not going to get better throughout the day today as that plywood gets more chewed up, more out of sync. So that's something to keep an eye on there. Yeah. Yeah, Brandon really uh, thinks a lot about these matchups going in. I'm sure he had great uh, reasons for running forks, just trying to get under, you know, this kind of forkless setup on Eva. And uh, we saw that landing massive, massive hits, killing that weapon. And ultimately, I think he will take the judge's decision I here think so in as well. this, this fight. Yeah, I mean, Brandon's got a great chance in the 30s today just for the simple fact that he's qualified so many robots in that weight class. It's like you've got three lottery tickets and they're going to be pulling one winner out of a pool of 24. Like, yeah. it's uh, it's pretty good. All right, yeah. so I just got word we have a unanimous decision for Phenomenon. So congratulations to Brandon Bennett Young. Um, that's a great way to set yourself up moving forward into the tournament. Now, we have a special event coming up in December, so let's take a look at that event. All right.
Get excited for Havoc All-Stars. We've got three nights of some of the best fighting robot superstars from NHRL's past, present, and future. Plus, we managed to convince some of our best friends from the internet to come, like this guy. Three weight classes of 12 of the craziest robots fighting across three nights to be crowned the inaugural Havoc All-Stars champion. That's some heinous hits. That's some preposterous prizes. And oh my God, the challenges are the craziest. What more could you want? December 5th, 6th, and 7th, here, right here at the House of Havoc, or streaming exclusively on YouTube from 7 to 10. Be there. I will. Amazing. That looks Havoc incredible. All-Stars. Now, uh, I, I, I love that line, uh, NHRL All-Stars from past, present, and future. Yeah. You know, like, uh, we met so many of these amazing uh, YouTubers at Open Sauce here earlier this year, and they love the NHRL format. They want to come here to the House of Havoc, bring their audience with them, bring their fans with them, and start building super destructive robots for the competition. And so many of those personalities are going to fit in beautifully with this community and some of the big people that we already have involved here. I love the people we included in that promo. One thing that I will say, completely unrelated to the competitors, Sam, he's getting a little bit less henchman-y and a little bit more like evil mastermind-y every single time we see it. Have you noticed I love that? It. I love it. It's a, it's a journey for him. It's, it's, a, it's such a good journey for him. Yeah. I absolutely love it. Now, I will say, if you're here in the audience and you live in the Connecticut area, you know, this is a really, really cool event, December 6th, uh, 5th, 6th, and 7th. Uh, now, this is in the middle of the week, so come and check it out. We're going to be broadcasting live, you know, every single night in prime time, so come and check that out also on YouTube. This is going to be a really super fun event. One of the coolest parts about this event is it's a completely new format from anything anyone in Combat Robotics has done before. World Cup style format for everybody. So we're going to see a very different kind of style of progression through a tournament. I cannot wait for that part of it. Um, we're also going to have special challenges throughout the event, like junk, uh, junk drawer wars and whatnot, which I think is going to be great and uh, a fun opportunity to make cool content with those video creators. Yeah. Now we do have a bracket update. Megatron has won its very first fight by forfeit. Oh. Death Pact uh, failed safety upstairs. And uh, it is now a big question mark about whether Death Pack will be able to come back into the box for the rest of the qualifying rounds. I'm sure that they are frantically working on that robot. Yeah. Jameson Go has survived with Megatron and uh, is going to advance, racking up that first of uh, two qualifying wins that he needs to get into the bracket. Yeah, not the way he wanted to do it, I'm sure, but a win's a win. All right, now going into cage four, we've got Five, polyester facing four. off against Three, Toro two, Feather. One. Fight, robots fight. Now Toro Feather here in the blue corner facing off against David Jin and Polyester. Now Polyester is a multi-bot. These are robots. Uh, one is a vert, the other is a horizontal. And uh, if you just look at the size difference, they look like it's base, oh my God. The horizontal is up on its side doing the thing. Oof. Ow! Toro Feather knocking into uh, into the horizontal here. Getting it uh, back into the action. But one of those wheels is impaired. And Toro just going in for the kill here. It's amazing. Two-on-one action here. And... Uh, Toro it seems to be really dictating the pace of this fight. Toro here in black and gold. Facing off against a chunky multibot from David Jin and his friends. Now that is a good hit from Polly on Toro Feather. 
Now, Polly and Toro Feather are similar, kind of, in terms of, uh, you know, their geometry. They're both drum spinners. And um, really the other half of polyester is not doing as well. Impaired wheel and, uh, yeah, that horizontal is struggling. A minute wow. 20 left here in this fight. Oh, wow. You can see a nice little gyroscopic dance from the Brazilians. This is such a good looking version of Toro Feather, by the way. The graphics on the side, it is extremely well done. It looks like a miniature Minotaur, Kyle. It really does. Fifty seconds left here, and wow, Toro is is looking very slow. It's almost like the the drive is down or it's impaired, and it is just translating by the uh, the by force the of weapon, that drum yeah. alone. It's able to gyro to show a little bit of motion, but it is limping into the last 30 seconds of this fight. Polyester, really one of the first bots we've seen here, master that multi-bot technique and have a lot of success with it. Wow, 15 seconds left here. The judges are going to have their work cut out for them. This one will go to the judges, and it is considerably closer than it looked at the start of this match. Wow, one last hit. That is the end of the match. Okay. We're going to take this one to the judges. You can see Junior there uh, coming over to congratulate. That was a very good close match. Let's take a look here at this replay. Now, the Brazilians came out and just roared onto the scene and uh, immediately putting the horizontal in a compromising position with a, um, with a dead wheel and uh, gyroing, kind of limping their way gyroscopically yeah. to, the, uh, to the end at, uh, at the bell. Kind of looking back at that footage, it does look like they were having a little bit of drivetrain issues right from the start on that matchup. Definitely something to keep an eye on there. They do have multiple copies, I believe, of Toro for this event, so they do have the ability to swap that out. But yeah, rough place for them to start off going forward. Yeah, absolutely. They uh, they like fast, drifty driving. Like really, their their main weapon is their drive ability. Yeah. Uh, they like to be super mobile. They want to do donuts around their opponents. They want to kind of pick those angles. Yep. And uh, it was a tough matchup for them. Very tough matchup. Yeah, something was going on. And they do run the tangential drive as far as that goes, like most of the other Brazilian bots. Uh, that should be relatively easy to fix comparatively. So we'll see yeah. how that goes. Very good. Okay. All right, we're going to go over the cage one here. And we've got Waddles facing off against Agent P. All right. I love a good bird fight. Yeah. Now, Agent P is a platypus, right? Perry the platypus. Yep. And uh, Waddles is a penguin. Five. Technically, four, the platypus three, is not a bird, but two, come on, it lays eggs and has similar. a Fight. Yeah. Robots fight. All right, Agent P. Ooh, that's a good spin up. Oh, wow. from Agent P. Waddles driving circles around Agent P at the beginning, and now there are pieces of Agent P all over the arena after that first engagement. Wow, now these are two college teams. Waddles is run by Team WPI. Agent P is Tap run by, out. I believe, the University of Toronto. Yeah, big tap out there. Brian Boxel, who's running Waddles at this event, has done some massive upgrades, including getting the, ver the vertical spinner attachment actually working for the first time ever. I do want to spend a little bit of time talking about Agent P and their journey to get here. Now, Agent P entered this fight with a 3-3 three and three record across one event. Now, uh, this is a really interesting college story. The entire team there at the University of Toronto, they had previously run a pretty dominant combat robotics team. Then COVID happened and all of the students either graduated or went away yeah. and they went back to square one with that team. They had brand new students really pick up the flag and they had to learn a ton to get a pretty, pretty, pretty good 
combat robot here into the box. I mean, it's it's qualified. Yeah. And um, that that just kind of journey as rookies really is is just basically starting from scratch and being able to get something that qualifies uh, into the box is pretty impressive. Yeah, absolutely. Um, really talented builders, and I do love that that bot qualified. It looks like they made some pretty big improvements on it coming into this tournament, but Waddles is a, tr a tough draw for pretty much anybody. Yeah, that is tough to go up against Waddles. All right, let's check in uh, with Lindsay upstairs with some more Super Chats. Hello, Lindsay. Hello, Luke. I have two Super Chats here uh, for you. The first one, uh, Okami fan, I appreciate the sentiment. A couple months late, my, my birthday was on the August 12th event, but I'll accept happy birthdays all year long. So, all right. uh, Aww. thanks. Happy I, birthday, Lindsay. Yeah, you know what? I'm uh, Okami three fan months Lindsay older. is like one of these like birthday divas. It is absolutely appropriate to wish her a happy birthday. <laughs> she has been forcing us to celebrate for the last six weeks. Yeah, no, you got to keep your birthday going for at least six months because then you get six months off and you can do it all again uh, yeah. six months later. At this six month advice. mark, Lindsay does the half birthday and then she starts preparing for the next yeah. one. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. All right, and so the next super chat here I, I, I want to talk a little bit about is from Fernando Braga. The Rato is a very good guy. He sometimes sponsors the entire team. Uh, or fights hard for sponsors, all the popularized the sport in Brazil. Now, I know he's very active uh, with street bots over in Brazil. He is a, a mainstay in the scene, um, which is very active. I mean, I think it probably rivals even the scene in the U.S. Yes. Um, and so Rato is the figurehead over there, and to have him here in this competition is huge, and I think it is really um, wonderful to see the merging of uh, combat robotics cultures from from Brazil and the U.S. kind of joining together. Yeah. One of my bucket list items as a combat robotics super fan is to make it to one of these massive, yeah. massive competitions in Brazil. Yeah. I think that 2024 is our year to do it. You Let's know, go, I think Luke. we should go. Oh my gosh, that would be so great. Yes, absolutely. They hold these multi day robotics competitions across all types of robotics, not just combat robotics, but you know, like line following and AI and stuff like that. And uh, the combat robotics section can sometimes have something like 400 robots in there wow. from college teams across across the country. It's incredible to see just how engaged the college students there are with the sport. It is just as big as any other college sport in Brazil. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, Rato is just uh, such a talented competitor too, bringing his first bot ever to NHRL with Chibata this year. Chibata looks beautiful, by the way. I saw it back yeah. at, during Safety in the Pits. Brand new design and paint job on it. Also, the team has new jerseys. They look very much so like an esports team, very yeah. professionalized. And he brought his dad today. I love that. Isn't that great? Yeah. Who better to have on your team than dear old dad? I think that's going to be awesome for him. Yeah, that's very cool. <laughs> Now we're loading it here into cage four. I can see Voxel 12 here and Michael Shore facing off against Honey Shock. Now Honey Shock um, is from Team Honeycrack. Zach Stack. And uh, yeah, this is... Zach? Oh, okay. So we do have an update. Previous judge's decision was unanimous for Polly Yester. No surprise there. Wow. That must have been close. Maybe that was a 5-6 split. I would love to see the uh, the cards there. Ooh. That was a very, very good match. Yes, it was. And uh, But still, the unanimous decision Five, is fantastic. Four. Three, All right, we've got this top-down view here. In one, the pink corner fight, is Voxel 12 facing fight. off against Honey Shock. Ooh, good fast start for Honey Shock. Honey Shock largely unchanged from its last events. Ooh, eating into the bottom wow. plate of Voxel. Very much so when I talked to Stack earlier today, he said, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. The bot's working beautifully. It's doing everything I want. I'm going in the way it's supposed to be right now. Wow, nice hit there from Voxel V12. Super aggressive driving from Sh Shredder Pro team member Michael Shore here and Voxel. Wow, that is a big hit, and Honey Shock is now up against the rail. Are they going to be able to gyro themselves off? I don't know. They do have an unstick, I believe. Yeah, and Michael coming in. Shore. Oh, look at that. 
Polite, polite, polite but also sure. trying to get some damage points onto the minibot. Smart move strategically as well there, this early in the matchup. Wow, and popping his opponent back up on the rail. Now, is that the last unstick for for Flo and Honey Shock? I don't know. I mean, I think that's really up to the discretion of the ref. But in, in my mind, it's two separate times up on the rail. So yeah. I think that technically this is a knockout here for Voxel on Honey Shock. As long as they, the minibot can't get them off the rail, that's where they're at. And I believe the minibot's dead at this point. Oh no, there it is. Knockout. But just not able to get there in time. That is a knockout for Michael Shore and Voxel 12. What's up? How you doing there, Sparky? This is like uh, the nightmare that I see in that kind of liminal space as I'm trying to fall asleep. Furry Kyle. Sparky is your nightmare? I mean, look at that thing. It's haunting, Kyle. It's just joyous and fun. And look, it's hanging out with Red. How, what is wrong this, with Sparky? This is like, I've got to check my medication, Kyle. Like, is this actually happening? No, this is absolutely happening. Yes, Red Sawyer is hanging out with Sparky, the giant furry Sparky. Okay. And wow. Sparky looks great. The kids love it. I, Hi, Sparky. I don't trust that thing. Okay, you don't have to trust it. Just love it and adore it. I don't know. <laughs> keep it away from me, Kyle. That's, that's, not, that's not okay. Uh, that's, that's bad. It's beautiful. I, I'm scared, Kyle. That's not good. All right, we're going to go over to cage one. Now I can see Chupacabra there in the pink corner facing off against Zack Knight and Promheta. Promheta, one of the hardest hitting Five, bots four, at NHRL. Three, two, one. Fight, robots fight. All right, Chupacabra and Promheta here. Now Promheta, that is that absolutely gorgeous symmetrical sound. Ooh, oh, that's a lot of sparks and smoke and a fire right inside of Promheta. Wow, Promheta is on fire and that robot. It's sparking. Yeah, that's not good. There is definitely some big issues with that entire weapon mount there. Now, Chupacabra is run by uh, the Black Dragon team, and it is a tiny little Black Dragon. It's the birth that actually inspired Black Dragon. And uh, the captain is Enrique Oliveira, who's actually the full captain of the Black Dragon Warrior team. They kind of trade off who the captain is year over year because it's a college team, and this is his year. And it has been his year. They've had a phenomenal run here at NHRL. All right, it sounds like a bandsaw in there from Chupacabra. Promheta is just trying to stay mobile. Tap that is That's a tap out. That's the tap out. Full tap out on the glass for that one. I am done, he says. No more. I wonder what happened within that weapon mechanism to cause all that smoke and fire. Yeah. And sparks. Yeah, typically that's, you know, when you're like overvolting your weapon or something, really kind of running a lot of power through um, through your switches, you know, um, or your, your speed controller. I don't know. Yeah, there was something uh, mechanically wrong as well. Yeah, okay, let's see that fire here. Boom, see? Saw a little burst of smoke and flames there. It's an unusual yeah. fire. Yeah. It is, yeah, it's in a weird spot. It's not a battery. No, it would still something. be burning if it was a battery. Yeah. But I believe Enrique very pleased with his performance there. Drived, uh, the drive worked perfectly. The weapon worked perfectly the entire time. You got the tap out victory. You can't complain about that. All right, now very exciting. Prepare yourselves for joy and delight. Here in Cage 3, we have a fire bot. Huh. Now, uh, we have here... Clyde facing off against Jelly. Spartan. Oh, that's great. Johnny Sumpas has been so excited about this fight. Now, one thing that's interesting to note about this fight is uh, if Spartan wins and if Jetlag wins, they'll have to face each other in the next round. Oh, yes, that's true. Yeah, two friends on both sides of the box. And here you can see, oh, a new and improved Clyde. Now, this is the most aggressive fork setup I've ever seen on Clyde. Yeah, short Five, forks. I kind of like four, it. Three, now, this is a control two, firebot here. One. 
Fight. Robots fight. Let's go, Clyde. Clyde is one of our most exciting firebots that we see at this tournament. Really great at the pin, the stick, and the burn, which you get to see a perfect example of that right now. All those flames going into the internal components of Spartan. Now, Johnny Supas, our uh, teenage driver here from the Bahamas, he is, uh, continues to be just one of our best young drivers here in the sport. Now, he's uh, covered the front of his robot with gold tape, and somehow it's still aesthetic, Kyle. I know, right? Johnny's aesthetics are absolutely flawless. His bots always look gorgeous. His weapons always look gorgeous. He's a great designer. Another perfect pin here from Clyde, and I think that Spartan... Uh -oh. Oh, wow. oh, wow. Oh, no. Flames lingering even underneath the golden tape. That is flame retardant tape. It is resistant to any kind of direct heat impact, but look, even the tape's wow. starting to catch on fire around the edges. So that, much heat. It really speaks to the power of that flamethrower, and Johnny is Johnny's having it. a blast. Oh, my gosh. This is what I love about Johnny Sumpas. He does not mind if his bot gets destroyed as long as it's glorious. There are certainly consumable parts on the inside of a combat robot, and I think that Clyde is finding those consumables <laughs> inside of Spartan. <laughs> I'm going to tell you, I am surprised. Oh, wow, here we get that thermal cam view. You can see just these trails of heat that are left behind on the plywood floor. Yeah, where the paint has just been heated up. Now, the weapon on Spartan is down. I wonder if that uh, burning that we saw inside of Spartan was perhaps its belt. Now, this is a good 10-second full clean pin from Clyde on Spartan. It does look like Clyde is either out of gas or the igniter is not working because we're not seeing any flame from these pins, which we typically would see quite a bit of. 60 seconds left here in this fight, and Spartan is just being shoved around inside of the box. Wow, I saw a little bit of spin on Spartan's weapon. Not really able to get much going, though, with a direct pin. I mean, it is pin after pin after pin. You can see the writing on the bottom of the robot saying, dumb robot. Johnny Sumpas's sense of humor, you gotta love that. 30 seconds left here in this fight. And that is perhaps a count out here. That is a knockout fly, knocking out wow. Spartan here. Very good fight for Clyde. Gabe Brown, one of the members of Team WPI. Gabriel, uh, G Gabe here is a student at Team WPI, originally from Austin, Texas, and um, that is a very hot, spicy robot there, Kyle. And just beautifully driven for that event. I mean, that's what you have to do when you're going up against a vicious vertical spinner like Johnny Soompas' Spartan. You gotta make sure that weapon does not get up to full speed as much as humanly possible. Clyde did everything right in that matchup. Even with the flamethrower going out, I think that's very easily going to be a decision for him. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's, uh, it's cool to see a flamethrower, you know, uh, advance to the finals. It's tough. Yeah. Um, and it really speaks to how tough that robot is and the skill of Gabe's driving yep. uh, to be able to corral his opponents and win so many judges' decisions in the qualifying, uh, you know, competitions here earlier in the year. Yeah, he finished uh, fourth place back in March. Uh, that was a very tough competition as well. Uh, but we're very excited to see how he does at the event today. I, if that's an example of what he's going to be showing for us, he's got a great shot. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, very cool. Now I can see that we're loading into cage two. We're also loading into cage four. We've got a lot going on right now, actually. Yeah. Now, I think that we may go to cage two next. Now, this is Lars, Elliot, and Jetlag. Now, uh, also running a minibot uh, is Robert Rund. So uh, we're oh, going to see weird. some more Robert Rund here in the box, facing off against, casually, Silent X, Jameson Go. Silent X used to be the experimental platform for the Silent Spring line of robots. Now its own individual unique item, basically running a wheeled version of the bot, kind of a more classic version of the bot in a lot of ways. Um, Silent X was the first uh, robot that we saw Jameis' now classic shuffler drive pods on. It's kind of fun that he's gone back to, uh, to wheels, five, you know, for Silent four, X. Three, 
two, now it is one, the same weapon fight. system Robots on fight. Silent X as on Silent Spring, but you don't have all of the weight that comes with the shuffler pot, Here so you go, see a Lars. lot more chaos with Silent ah, X. Ah, Lars making a driving error there, tipping Silent X up against the rail and going in and saving him himself. Wow. This is the chaos we're used to seeing from early Silent Spring fights. Now, Lars Elliott was nominated as one of our best drivers of the year, one of five nominees, and you can see why here. Even though he's a teenager, a high schooler, he is bodying around Jameson Go, the greatest combat robotics builder of our time. Oh, oh big yes. And that's the first hit that Jameson's won here. Both robots on their heads. There we go, Silent X now back on its feet. Jet lag back on its feet. Two minutes left here in this fight. Lars Elliott is really holding his own in this. Yeah, he's been winning most of this matchup. It does look like we've got a little bit of a turnaround here with Lars on their head. Not an optimal position for that weapon. Right, it's a vert, so it's spinning down when it's on its head. And that is tough. Lars, I'm sure, would love to gyro himself. There we go, back on his feet. Let's go, Lars. Wow, yeah, every time Silent X makes a hit, they both go flying. Lars really dictating the pace of this fight. And this is one of those things that you're really looking for in a Lars Elliott driving match, just staying very close to his opponent and taking advantage, capitalizing on these moments. A minute left here on the clock. Getting around to the back of Silent X. Now, Silent X and Silent Spring have incredible armor packages. So you're not going to do much, but you will score control points here with the eyes of the judges. Now it's starting to get very quiet in the box, and I think the weapon on Lars's weapon, uh, Lars's robot has gone down. Yeah, everything seems to be fully functional on Silent X, but it does appear as though the weapon is down on jet lag. 30 seconds left here. If Lars can take it to the judges, he may be winning on control and aggression. Jetlag is a hub motor style Weta kit in its base. It's obviously been heavily modified from the original kit, uh, but that is Lars has that done is it. He's taken it the full three minutes. He's escaped the count out. He will be taking it to the judges. The judges are going to be deciding wow. the winner here of this fight, Silent X or Jetlag. That was an incredibly tight matchup and I do not envy the judges having to figure out the winner of that one. Lars did so much right throughout that entire fight. Really proud of him. Really dictating the pace of that fight, losing the weapon in the last 30 seconds there, scoring damage for Jamison Go. But really, aggression and control, I would say, go to Lars. This one could be another close judge's decision. Yeah but uh, another just masterclass in driving for this young builder in Lars Elliott. All right. You can right. see why he's one of the five nominees for best driver of the year, Kyle. Yeah, absolutely. Now, uh, Silent X here really, Jameson's an amazing driver as well. I mean, like, I'm not gonna discount that at all, but um, Lars Elliott really had his work cut out for him here had to stay on top of Jameson and really kind of take advantage of these small moments that open up. Jameson, you know, uh, showing the back of the robot to his opponent several times in this match. And at one point getting stuck up on the rail, Lars coming in and saving rather than the house bot. That's um, it's a choice. It's a choice. It was a choice. I don't know if it was necessarily a bad one, especially this early on in the tournament. You said it yourself. We're not quite into the serious part of the day yet. Okay. Um, and also, it made for better TV, it made for a better fight. It shows aggression in the eyes of the judges, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. When you hang back and you wait for the house bot to come in, I mean, I, personally, I like to see the house bot burn up that save very early in the match. If you can get it, yeah. It gives you a more runway, you know, kind of at the back half of the yep. match. But, you know, to go in there very aggressively, unstick your own opponent, you know, it does count a lot for your aggression points. 
Yeah, and that weapon going down is probably the biggest detractor from Lars's performance in the eyes of the judges. Other than that, that was pretty you good. You also have to ask yourself, though, I mean, like, when the the weapon goes down in the, the fight is also a big factor, right? Yep. If your weapon goes down in the first 10 seconds, yeah, that's massive, right? But if your weapon goes down in the last 10 seconds, it's not quite as big of a deal, right? Because, yeah. you know, you ran it and just going ham with that weapon, you know what I mean? It's true. Um, so... It's not a full, like, uh, damage card goes absolutely to silent decks, right? No, but at the same time, you end the fight with one bot fully functional and the other bot's down a weapon. That's going to be hard for the judge to decide fully on. Fully functional, still... but bodied around inside of the box the entire time, okay? That's also very typical for Silent X. I mean, if you know anything about the history of that robot, it yeah. flops around the box. It flies it's everywhere. It's unkillable. That's exactly right. It lands, yeah. It'll land 15 times on the weapon and then just go right back to driving. I will tell you, though, that is a relic of kind of like the earlier uh, era of combat robotics it is. where like a lot of fights wouldn't go the full three minutes and if you could go the full three minutes automatically you're probably going to be winning 50 percent more matches than yeah. a more delicate destructive robot but uh welcome to the modern age you know of beetles like all beetles are now going the full three minutes it's not enough just to survive yeah. You have to win. Well, I will tell you, in this particular case, it was enough. We just have a unanimous judge's decision for Silent X. Wow. That's, uh, hmm, okay. That's going to, that's going to, some folks are going to have some feelings about that. I don't know if I would call it that direction, uh, but uh, the judge's decisions are final. The judges' decisions are, in fact, final, so that means that uh, the first, I guess, win of the day for the Silent X line. Uh, Lars still has another chance. Okay. All right, we're going to go over to Cage 4. Oh, yeah, here they go. All right, so we are looking at Owen Coakley and Super Scope. Facing off against Buzzkill here. Buzz kill, extremely successful Five, undercutter four, from Team Honeycrack. Three, two, one. Fight, robots fight. Now, super scope here, run by Owen Coakley. It's this big white horizontal in the pink corner. Facing off against an undercutter here in the pink corner in Buzz kill. And look at that. Has Super Scope embedded itself into the rail, Kyle? I believe they have, in fact. Either that or the robot's dead. No way. That's embedded. Ooh, that's a lot of power there yeah. from Super Scope. That is, uh, that's one of the things that the Coakleys decided, you know, uh, when they designed these robots, to spin them at over 250 miles an hour. Yeah, look at that gouge in the side rail there. Oh, wow. And look at that. Super Scope is coming right back. Okay, this match is still on. Buzzkill uh, trying to get over to its opponent, and Super Scope just spinning up that deadly death hum from Super Scope. But that wheel is impaired on the left side of Super Scope. It just cannot get movement out of that left no. wheel. This may be a win for Buzzkill. Now, Buzzkill absolutely uh, was the underdog in this fight, ending up, you know, like coming in as the lower ranked robot. And Super Scope is being counted out, losing its first Knock match out. of the day. Your winner is Buzzkill. Wow. A win for Liam King from Team Honeycracks, entering this competition with a record of 13 and 10 across six events, ranked number 19 of all time in the 12s. Let's take a look here at this replay. Big hit early in this fight, and Super Scope embedding itself into the rail, but Buzzkill first, killing that wheel before even that, uh, that embedding happened. Flow coming over here to save, and that wheel, dead. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's a clean win for Buzzkill. Extremely clean win. Liam's been doing a phenomenal job at the competition as of late, but that is a big upset for them. Yeah, huge. Whew. All right. Well, good for them and Team Honeycraft. Qualifying, what, three robots for this competition? Yeah. 
Exactly. Wow. And doing so, great. So doing great. All right. I can see the lights are green here in cage three. This is Supreme Ruler and a tiny Supreme Five, Ruler. Five, four, Facing off three, against two, Kickstart. One. Fight, robots, fight. Oh my God, it's hot, Kyle. Yeah, it is. The miniature Supreme Ruler here is uh, just engulfing its opponent here in flames. Kickstart here in white. It's the white vert here. It looks like a little bite force, Kyle. It does. It's such an adorable little bite force. It kind of looks like a toy almost. It's a cute little toy bite force. And it's got no ground clearance, which is exactly the kind of robot that Supreme Ruler is designed to fight. Now, Supreme Ruler is a cam lifter. That means that its forks sit flat on the floor, and then they just rotate up slightly, just enough to catch its opponent. Sending in the second robot here to torch the opponent. Two minutes and 15 left here in this fight. This is taking advantage of the fact that most bots trying to build to be themselves to be competitive have very low ground clearance. And all you have to do is lift them about a quarter of an inch off the ground and they're completely and totally immobile. It makes for incredibly exciting fights, all right? Don't let anyone tell you that Supreme Ruler is boring to watch because it's not. Look at this, they've just raised, you know, uh, this miniature bite force up by about a quarter of an inch, Kyle. Yeah. Which is just absolutely thrilling as a viewer and, they and did a super it while fan. they were inverted as well. That's impressive. Wow. Okay. Look at that. Supreme ruler for the golden Brett, Kyle. Look at this. Oh. I will tell you that I, I am very happy with the performance of the uh, the Minibots uh, flamethrower here in this fight. Yeah, it's cool. It's doing great. A minute 20 left here in this fight. Supreme Ruler racking up a ton of aggression and control points here. And uh, Kickstart, it's got to get something wow, going here Wow, this is perfect. Exactly what they designed the bot to do right there. These long, flexible forks on Supreme Ruler are unbeatable. Supreme Ruler is doing great. Now, the flamethrower was designed and built by Jason Woods, who is a Vegas Combat Robotics team member. He's uh, built Tracer previously on BattleBots and ran the Camlifter Minibot Ace Needle. on, uh, on, on BattleBots. Yeah. Yep. And eventually, he designed the original cam lifter, which was Needle, uh, the mini bot for his bot Tracer. Uh, this all is his fault, really, when you get down to it. No, I think it's a great weapon design, and it's fantastic to watch. I want to see 50 or 60 cam lifters. I really? Think this is the future. You know, this is coming across so convincing. I'm, I'm really impressed, Luke. It's the best. I love watching it. I think it's great. 15 seconds left here, and wow. Surprise Pikachu face. It's gone to the judges here. Supreme Ruler loves to take it to the judges because Supreme Ruler wins judges' decisions. And this is absolutely a win for Supreme Ruler. Kickstart has done nothing in this match. Supreme Ruler is looking fantastic. Jeff Waters, I think you just won your first judge's decision of the day. I am really excited for this day to continue and for us to see... Uh, my Kickstart. slow descent into madness, yes. Kyle. This is not the only cam lifter we have here, by the way. We have some cam lifter minibots that are going to be showing up as well. The sound so. that you hear is going to be me screaming into a pillow in the green room, Kyle. All right? It's fine. This is fine. Everything's okay. Jeff Waters has built and designed this is a legal lot and of cool. really fun All robots, right? and uh, this is one of them. This is so legal and so cool. It is. All right? It's legal and awesome. It's amazing. Just stretching the definition of an active weapon, Jeff. That's fantastic. It's active. Look, it, it just actively lifted the yeah, bot up. Forks can be a weapon. This is this is amazing. I love it. They're they're live forks. They do things. This this is actually the next iteration of fork technology. It's true. Uh, that is not sarcastic at all. Uh, in the future, when you see a dead fork, you're gonna think it's weird. Yeah. 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 All right, we're gonna go over to cage one. This is Carmen facing off against Full Court. The Full Court is run by Coleman Christie from Southern California and Michael Shore back in the box. He's the builder of Voxel and uh, he is also the builder of Carmen. Now, Full five, Court is kind four, of Smee inspired three, two, and its one, active weapon in five, the first time that it came five. here was a little chair which, again, stretching the definition of an active weapon. And 
this is looking very Smee inspired indeed. I wonder what the active weapon this time is, Coleman. I'm assuming it's tiny little lifters on these drive pods, but uh, who knows? I just love builders who stretch the definition of active weaponry, Kyle. It just brings joy. I am a big fan of people playing lawyer with the rules. Honestly, I think it's the, one of the most fun aspects of this particular competition. This is amazing. This is great. Yeah. Okay. Two minutes and 15 seconds left here. Carmen has gotten around to the back of full court, but full court is just so floppy, so flexible. Yeah, really just, great. It's, it's easy for Coleman to reset himself and square himself back up with his opponent. Wow, nice pin there by Thunderchild on the other mini bot. Thunderchild, of course, driven by uh, Nate Franklin. Nate Franklin, who's been threatening to come to this competition and actually compete for years now. And he has not finished his Beetle. He's waiting for perfection, Kyle. That's okay. Carmen here, you know, attacking. Oh, wow. That wow. is a good high centering from Coleman Christie on Michael Shore. I do love that Nate Franklin decided to join a team that is also a wedge. Yeah, it's appropriate. Oh, you can see the active weapon. Coleman, that's fantastic. It's a, gra it's a grabber. It grabs things. Is it? Is yeah. it? Yeah, it grabs things. That thing looks like a letter opener. I liked it better when it was a tiny little metal chair. A chair. That was much more fun for me. I friggin' hate lawyer ball in this sport. Okay, Kyle, if you love it, I hate it. I right? love it. I like, love it. This is not an active weapon, all right? I'm sorry. It's like, active. And it's a weapon. Oh What's my the god. I am I'm gonna bring like something that waves a little piece of paper, okay? And just puts yeah, all twelve stick. pounds into a into drive into you know the drivetrain. It's incredible. It's a waggle stick. The British engineers came up with this years ago. It's totally legit, has a long standing place in the sport. This is why the the Brits lost the Empire. All right, uh, <laughs> Kyle. Okay, all right. <laughs> Yeah, the sun definitely sets on a waggle sticks, okay? I'm sorry to tell you that. That waggle stick just got them off the side rail. They unstuck themselves with that waggle stick. Thank you very much. It waggle, they're going to waggle here. their way to victory. I mean, listen, uh, Coleman's racking up great control, and I guess that's aggression, technically. Carmen, you're going to have to do something here in the last seven seconds. It's not going to happen. Wow, it's, we're going to take it to the judges. Incredible. That's there the we go. Okay. Surprise, surprise, judge's decision. Here we go. There's Nate Franklin right there. Driving the minibot. Thunder child. Fun fact, Nate forgot that he was asked to drive a minibot for this event. Oh. Thought yeah. he was just coming by to be a spectator. He's he's always ready though. Well, yeah, he always has Thunderchild. Like that, yeah. it comes with. It's like his little, you know, service animal, or like his best yeah. friend, or you know. Uh, yeah, it's like his emotional support robot. Yeah, his emo he keeps Thunderchild literally in the car as an emotional support robot. Exactly. Yeah. Um, right. And he keeps his dad around for emotional support as well. But yeah, he just showed up to like hang out with friends and observe, and he had to refund his tickets because he remembered. Oh wait, I'm competing. At least he got his money back. That's pretty. Cool. He did, yeah, which yeah. is great because now we have two more tickets for people to come because the event was sold out before. So. That's true. Now, we uh, just heard back, uh, we had a split judge's decision in that last match in favor of Jeff Waters and Supreme Ruler. So oh, good. So he wins that last match. Well, it makes sense. He got all of the he, aggression he, points. I he got all of the control points. I'm actually surprised it wasn't unanimous. Yeah, that was, that was a pretty dominant showing. Yeah, that really should. He I, even scored damage points because he killed Kickstart's weapon. That's true. Yeah. So. And his flamethrower did quite a lot. Yeah. I, I'm gonna say on the on the on the scale of uh, problematic robots, Supreme Ruler is actually doing stuff. I mean, uh, you know, this is the You're not a fan of full court. No, it's not a real weapon. Uh, like we have an active weapon rule for a reason, Kyle. Okay, we can't just like I, I, I the, these like these edge like kind of oh I'm shaving the edge of the rules to like sure. bring in a two gram mini bot so I can run a six pound robot. It's dumb it's insane we've okay. had a uh, actual SME here though and their weapon was literally a flaming it penguin like that's two sat and a half years ago sure okay we've advanced as a sport like you bring in a little waggle stick it's it's i don't know not a fan no i kind of love it 
Really? Why yeah. do you love about it, Kyle? Because it's hilarious. Tell me why. It's hilarious. It's it hilarious. Is, yes, it's hilarious. To kill a killer like Carmen. That's hilarious. Yeah. Okay. All right. With a waggle stick. Just a little. Oh, my God. Oh, okay. Neil's told me. Okay, we got a split decision here, yeah. Neil. Oh, dear God, Neil. Split decision for full court. If this advances. keeps going, we are going to, like, have to trade out your outfit for a straight jacket. No, I'm going to have to go take Xanax back there or something. <laughs> okay, I'm going to have to chill out. This is awful. Okay? Okay. <laughs> All right, guys. So that... Um, that will fill out our qualifying session for round one. We are going to come back with session two very shortly, but we are going to take a quick break. So grab yourself some snacks. We'll see you very soon. Welcome back to the action here at the NHRL 2023 World Championships. My name is Luke Stangle. Joining me here on the broadcasting booth is my very good friend, Kyle Kroos. Hello, Kyle. Hey, Luke. How are you feeling today in beautiful South Norwalk? Kyle, we have seen some absolutely brutal action. At wow. Kyle, we've seen some absolutely brutal action here at the start of the day in qualifiers round one. Let us take a look at this uh, action here from earlier in the day. We saw a house spot, a very heavy one, get tipped onto its head. We saw a lot of just huge hits and destructions. Roofings galore here. We saw some flamethrowers. And uh, yeah, we have uh, finished the first round of the qualifiers. We're entering the second round of the qualifiers. Now, this is our elimination round of the qualifiers. Every single bot that you see that uh, is losing here is going to be eliminated and will not enter the bracket. That's right. You need to win two fights to make it into the bracket. We're starting with 24 robots in each one of our weight classes. We're going to build that into a bracket of 12. All right, so we've had some really massive moments already today. Uh, let's look at a couple of them from earlier. So check this out. This is Kevin Milcheski and Red Storm doing what they thought was theoretically possible, but now we know it is 100% possible. Why turn off the house bot when you could just flip the thing over? Fantastic. I've never seen that before, and uh, you know, he did it so easily. It was just like, uh, like butter. It was amazing. Now, as we said, we're, rent we're entering round two of the qualifying rounds, these play-in rounds. If you win, you uh, enter the bracket with a lower seed. If you lose, you are done for the day. You are not entering the bracket. We're going to uh, build a bracket of 12 robots when we go into um, our qualifying, uh, our, our actual bracket at 4 o'clock Eastern. This is going to be a really intense round. Uh, losers will fight the losers. Win winners will fight the winners. I believe in the winners round, though, they do have a chance to come back. Yes. All one and one robots are going to fight in these kind of like last chance in round three. It's going to exactly. be fun. It's going to be fun. All right, let's check in with Chris up in the pits. Hello, Chris. Hey, guys. I'm here next to Glenn Boxel and Caldera. Now, Glenn, you just fought Booty Brigade, uh, a team, a tag team of two former world champions together using the loophole bonus to get in there. Now, that there was a little issues with them getting up and started. Droopy started the match kind of dead on arrival. Uh, and so it was a head-to-head -head battle with Caldera and Lynx. Tell us what happened and tell us, uh, you know, what you need to do to get Caldera ready for the rest of the bracket. Well, uh, the fight was going pretty good. I thought we were about even on uh, aggression, control, you know, and hitting each other. So in the, if we would have kept going, I think we might have got the judge's decision because um, the uh, Droopy's mini bot there did start out without anything. So that kind of leaned in our favor for damage and weapon control. Unfortunately, the first time I got knocked up on top of Droopy, and it turns out 
That would have been an entanglement rule instead of a... A, uh, a requirement for an unstick. Yeah, instead of a requirement for an unstick. But I called unstick then, messed things up, and I needed it again later. <laughs> do, you know, do you know who you're up against next, and uh, do you have a strategy going into that? Um, I'm going against Warhard, and it's going to be another tough battle. It's going to be going head-to-head -head again, uh, pretty much head-to-head -head on his weapon-to-weapon -weapon with him. All right. Well, good luck to you in the rest of the tournament. Back to you guys. Thank you, guys. All, All right, now, right. I am very excited to announce we have our NHRL CEO, Kelly Biederman, here, who has a special announcement. Kelly, this is fantastic. What do you have to tell us? Thank you guys so much, and thank you for being here, everybody. Uh, we're just so excited today. You may have seen uh, all of our announcements earlier, but we're giving away a million dollars today to STEM charities around the country. Uh, every robot that's competing today is donating $1,000 to a STEM charity. Uh, every single winner of a Sparky Award is donating $10,000 to a STEM charity, their choice. Uh, we're giving away nine of those Sparky Awards today. Uh, stay tuned for All Stars, where we're going to be giving uh, another last one away in just a couple weeks. Uh, and then the top three finishers in each of our weight classes are giving up to $150,000 away to the STEM charity of their choice. Um, we are just so excited that this is an opportunity that we're able to have. Thank you so much to our founder, Austin McCord, and the McCord Family Foundation for making this possible. Uh, this is the second year in a row that we're able to, to have these grants available, um, and the impacts that we're seeing from the grants that we were able to give away last year is still being felt, and you can see it here today. Uh, many of our competitors from um, Emulsifier and from HEDA, uh, Disco, Huge, uh, and the entire Team Honeycracked clan, all of them are beneficiaries of Booty Brigade. I'm forgetting, I'm sure many. Uh, but many of those robots all are beneficiaries from the grants that we had last year uh, uh, that we were able to give away. Many of those uh, organizations built arenas to be able to, to host robot fights of their own. And we're just really thrilled that we've been able to have that kind of an impact on our community. It is fantastic that uh, you know we are giving back to the community in this way, giving back to STEM education, giving back to STEM programs, and I'm so happy that we're able to continue that this year. We're going to do a lot of good with this this charity money. Yeah, absolutely. We're really thrilled that we're able to support so many organizations through this program um, and really bring more people into the sport. And uh, to that end, we're excited today to be able to announce another million oh dollars God, that we're Kelly. going to be giving away uh, in the next couple of months. So uh, we are really, really thrilled to have seen how much uh, the, as I was saying, the, the money that we were able to give away last year was used to build arenas to expand programming available to builders uh, around the country. And we're really thrilled to announce that we're going to be donating a million dollars to build uh, robot arenas just like the ones that you see here today all around the country. Wow. Uh, Amazing. Thank you so much. So we're really, really thrilled. Uh, we will make more information available in the coming weeks, but uh, we will be building three-pound and 30-pound arenas all over the country. Uh, we'll be putting them in community centers, schools, colleges, um, to really be able to help wow. grow the sport and put the, the tools that are necessary in the hands of the builders. So, so really Kelly, thrilled. this is like blowing my mind. So just to recap very quickly, because I think it, just so that it lands the impact. Um, so our second million dollars that we're going to be donating to charities uh, this coming year is going to go into an arena fund. So if you want to build your own arena, if you have a venue, if you're a college, if you're a team that wants to build one of these three pound or 30 pound robot boxes, we are going to give you the money to help you do that. That is, that is huge. That is yeah. huge for the sport. We really hope that it's able to, uh, to put the, the major tool that is necessary to get started in this sport in the hands of the yeah. people who are best placed to help build it. Um, we're really, really thrilled to be able to support. We hope to, to build as many arenas as we can with that million dollars. So uh, looking forward to it. Yeah. Thank you so wow. much. Round of applause here for uh, our charity giving program here at NHRL. Thank you so much, Kelly. Thank you so much, thank Kelly. Thank you guys for everything. And thank you, Austin, again, for uh, everything you do for the sport. Absolutely amazing. amazing. Wow. One of the biggest barriers to entry. Really, we're helping out with that so much. Now we're going to go over to cage four. And in cage four, we have Lil Rip versus Knock Off White. So Little Rip has to win this fight in order to stay alive. Knock off White, Team Bots FC. Ready? 
Um, they also need to win this match to survive. That's the rounds that we're in right now. Little rip with their brand Five, new mini bot there. Four, Check out that little three, two, cheese one. slice. Fight, robots fight. Now that noise that you hear is the sound of Knockoff White moving around the arena. Knockoff White is a shuffler bot, which gives them a weight bonus, uh, which they need because they are running essentially one half of the weapon power of a heavyweight robot in their bot. Massive hits coming from this hammer. Slash axe. Look at those shots into the top. Little Rip is a very difficult bot for them to hit. You have to be so precise to miss that weapon with the uh, with your blade. And the actual area to come down on is small and kind of awkward. Oh, they're stuck in the ground there. But I'd say so far, Knockoff White really dominating the control and aggression. And Little Rip not able to get a whole lot of offense in this matchup. Wow. And another big pin there from Knockoff White. And it looks like they are not able to separate. That weapon is dug all the way in to the weapon mount on Little Rip. Knockoff White. Looks like they've called for a separation. Yeah, it's really stuck, he says, in the hammer and our disc. So they've called for an unstick. So here comes the house bot in an attempt to unstick these two robots, but I am not sure that this is a house bot unstick. Yeah, Flo is very good at unsticking robots, but this is a lot. You can see kind of the weapon mount has spread open a little bit just from the force of that hammer jamming down into it. Yeah, look at that shot. And then you can see, oh wow, yeah, the tooth from the disc actually inside the hammer. How did that happen? How, how did we get to this place? This is definitely one of those pictures you look at and you're like, but, but how did you get here? House bot pushing them over to the door. But yeah, those bots are not separating without some outside help. You can see everyone kind of running over to figure out what to do. You can see the clock has run out, but we didn't know what time the unstick was called for. So we'll have to wait for our officials to decide what's going to happen here. I'm sure we'll handle that soon enough, Kyle. Well, hey you there, Ricky. Hi, Kyle. You know, I, I showed up here. I was looking for pizza, and instead I got a shish kebab. <laughs> yeah. I. So unpredictable. You know, the thing about unpredictable, let's, let's try to make some predictions. Uh, these are the 30-pound bots that need to win in this round to advance. Uh, it's a pretty long list. We're getting into the do-or-die section of the tournament. Yeah. Uh, some big contenders here. I mean, everyone today is a big contender, but uh, there are some major hitters in this list. Yeah, Squire, absolutely massive hitter. Death Pact, uh, they, we're not even sure if they've passed safety yet. We're gonna have to figure that one out. Yeah, Sombra is on that list. Sombra 30. Yeah, uh, and Toro Feather. Yeah, just some of the most devastating weapons in the tournament, all on the chopping block, and only time will tell if they're gonna make it to the next round. High stakes, high stress moment for them and for these two competitors. It does appear they are separated. Uh, of course, we cut away, so it's hard to say uh, what it was that that uh, may have been jarred loose or damaged in that process. All the more exciting when they turn these robots back on and the fight resumes. Yeah. Here All right, go. so the countdown is starting. This is do or die for both of these teams. They have to win. 
All right, Ripperoni is spinning again, although I'm not sure if it is up to full speed or not. Ooh, oh, that is a big hit. Right into the weapon again. Knockoff White not scared to drive that hammer directly into the disc. No, if anything, that is what uh, the Wrigleys are known for, just full aggression, full violence at every turn. Pizza's flipping all over the place. It's flipping delicious. That's what we want. Pizza with a side of death. You can see that kind of wobble that on, uh, on Ripperoni. There was a huge chunk taken out of that weapon earlier today. It makes the robot very unstable. Uh, it makes it dangerous to spin it up to full blast. Oh, look at those hits, Kyle. Hit after hit. That is racking up some major damage points. Yeah, there you see the countdown in the background. Just 40 seconds left in this matchup. You can see the uh, the armor on the top of Ripperoni is starting to tear up just a little bit. Oh, wow, weapon stuck into the floor there. Had an opportunity, Little Rip not able to capitalize. 30 seconds left in this matchup, and Little Rip is so far behind in the points at this point, they need a knockout if they're gonna win. Yeah, they desperately need to get around to the side of knockoff white, but that is a tall order. Yeah, that shuffler pod mechanism could be perceived as a weakness on knockoff white. We've seen that get dismantled in the past, but I think it would take more time and more hits than Ripperoni has time Look for. Look at that! What is happening that here? That is incredible! Knockoff White's wet hammer is lodged inside of the weapon mount again. On Knockoff Rip. White just became a weapon attachment. I'm <laughs> oh, sorry, Ripperoni became yeah. a weapon attachment for Knockoff White. They just took a Look pizza spinner and put it at the end of their hammer. This is the scariest version of Knockoff White we've ever seen. Yeah. Well, I can't unstick myself. This is gonna haunt my dreams perpetually. You just heard uh, Anna saying, I can't unstick myself, so this is just gonna have to be it. Yeah, no, there's, I don't know how you would get off of that. The, the geometry of these two bots has led us with two very interesting sticking predicaments. Yeah, I mean, if there's any robot here that lends itself to getting stuck in other robots, it is knockoff white. And then you get Ripperoni. Uh, it may not be obvious for the folks at home, but the chassis of Ripperoni is primarily plastic. Yeah. That is, that is a billet piece yep. of uh, polyethylene plastic that has been carved out. That is, that is like squishy, tender, juicy robot um, niblets. And uh, it makes a perfect target for a big shark hammer to dig into and get stuck. Yeah, this, this will be going to a judge's decision, but right now let's look at this replay. There you go. There's the shot where the, the tooth of the weapon actually got stuck inside the hammer. And there we go. The unsticking happened. Beautifully done by the bot, uh, the house bot driver. Yeah, I'm impressed. That takes some serious skill. Yeah, really precision driving. And then just shot after shot in the corner. Knockoff White doing exactly what it's designed to do, bullying its opponent into the corner and just getting shot after shot with that hammer. Beautiful hit there. Look at how the top plate is buckling under those hits. I mean, this one goes to the judges. I would say this is one of the easier calls to make throughout the day today. Yeah, there is absolutely no mystery. And that's how they ended it. We're gonna go to cage one though, uh, for the people that want to be in suspense just a little bit longer. We've got another match coming up. I believe it's uh, Five, Fracas four, going up three, against Kitchen Grill. Two, one. Kitchen Fight. Grill had an Robots unfortunate Fight. loss earlier today when it could not self right. Fracas is just at a bit of a disadvantage in this weight class being a control bot in a field full of just devastating heavy hitters and Kitchen Grill is no exception. Whoa, oh, look at wow. that. that Amazingly, that mini bot looks relatively one piece. Now, Kitchen Grill is experimenting with some cam lifter mini bots that they brought to this event. They're hoping that can help them with their unstick or their uh, problem where their bot does kind of get stuck on its head. There's a lot of positions where Kitchen Grill can get uh, inverted and not able to self right. So they're hoping these little mini bots can help with that. I gotta say, I was watching them in the test box try it a few times. It doesn't look like it's the best strategy going forward. No, it, and it takes some time to, to hammer out those sort of details. Uh, and uh, 
it is a bold and uh, impressive to me move to try and hammer out those details at the World Finals with a million plus dollars on the line. You know, this is just a unique bot in general. I mean, look at it. The design is gorgeous. It looks like the Batmobile, yet they named it Kitchen Grill. Yeah, do you know the story on that, Kyle? Yeah, the backplate has a grill on it, and he couldn't think of another name. That's okay. literally the story. Okay. Yeah. All right. And the rest of their team has, like, proper scary-sounding names. Wow, that was an immense hit. I'm... I, I do oh, want to wow. hear about these scary names. But... Oh! Marcus goodness. flying into the sidewall. Now, I will tell you, if Kitchen Grill could stay with its wheels on the ground, it is a deadly robot. Yeah, like so many of these heavy hitters, though, it is so easily destabilized sometimes. Uh, it's, it's all about driving. Oh, it appears Kitchen Grill might be uh, locked into the wall. Yeah, those forks are definitely stuck under the rail, I think. Uh, it's hard to say. They've already tried to move quite a bit. Um, there we go. There we they go. got their if, one unstick. That is it. And that's a horrible thing to waste your unstick on when you are about prone to being tipped under your head like Kitchen it Grill. It does seem Fracas is having drive issues on one side. It's not completely disabled, but it is struggling. And for a control bot, that is not a good time. No, and it does look like that lifter mechanism is also not functioning on Fracas. Hard place to be for Brandon Benning Young. Yeah, that... that uh, the, grabber mechanism is not coming back into position. Brandon's down to just those forks to try to show any kind of control or offense here. Just a and bit of pirouetting, and uh, that's about all we're getting out of it right now. Yeah, it does look like one side of that drive is struggling. Still such a mobile robot despite its uh, its damage situation. Oh, wow. such... For the folks at home, these are gut punch hits. Uh, yeah. You can feel this. Oh, oh my. It appears Kitchen Grill is stuck in the wall. It is, it's still got some mobility and it was able to free itself just before the count out. That is a good thing to show those judges as this match will go to a judge's decision. This is another situation I don't foresee a lot of difficulty on the judge's plate. No, typically when one robot is getting pushed to the wall by the house bot and the other one is not, that's a fairly good indicator of how that fight went. Yeah, you can see Brandon there, cool, collected, but uh, not overjoyed. Well, he's got two other robots to really worry about in this tournament. Right, you, know? you cannot let this sort of um, setback get you down. You have to focus on the other robots that you have in the competition. Uh, which, by the way, the fact that uh, this young man is bringing this level of competition, this level of robot, in not just one form factor, but several, is incredible. Yeah, qualified with three robots in the 30-pound division. He's in there with a bunch of just hard-hitting killers for this tournament. There's no bot that's really good for Fracas to go up against. No. They're all challenges. Um, the fact that he had to go up against Yahoo to begin the day, and now he's going up against Kitchen Grill, that's a tough draw for that robot. It, yeah, it's... I mean, everything is a tough draw when you get to the finals. Yeah. Uh, but there is still a rock, paper, scissors element here, and Brandon has come out kind of on the bad side of that bargain. Well, at least with this robot. Yes. He's got you're, two you're more right. that are very much so at the peak of those rock, paper, scissors Absolutely. debates. So Absolutely. we'll see how it goes. Brandon, I mean, we are all just so impressed with his work this year and how he's been able to improve that robot, uh, those three robots. And Vorion's looking vicious today. Cannot wait to see how that bot does. I am also on the edge of my seat. We should say, folks, uh, the last... Uh, Judge's decision has come in. No surprise there. A unanimous decision for knockoff white. Wow. Uh, they, they brought it through. Uh, it's kind of what we expected, yeah. right? That was a dominant performance. And not just a dominant performance, but a dominant performance uh, on a robot that is, is a difficult draw. A vertical spinner like that against a hammer bot is not something... Yeah. Uh, that is not their ideal matchup. Well, especially with that large of a diameter of a weapon, too. There's just so many fewer places to actually land the hammer safely. Yep. It, it's the kind of matchup that requires that sort of uh, bold strategy, high aggression. Yeah. They and committed precision to it. aim. Absolutely. Yeah, no, the skill cannot be um, undersold that's required to yeah. make that work and they, they brought it through. And they work together so well as a team as far as coordinating when that weapon's going to fire. They're, they're just top-notch when it comes to the they, hammer. They've got game. it dialed in. Yeah. They've got it dialed in. Well, folks, uh, this is my uh, first time on camera for the day, so I'll introduce myself, Ricky Willems. We're huh? here at the NHRL Finals. We absolutely are, Ricky. And, uh, yeah, I'm, 
I, I just have to, I, I have to take a second. I am overwhelmingly excited to be here. So. All right, we do have a judge's decision in for that last matchup. No surprise there, unanimous decision for Kitchen Grill. That does mean Fracas is done for the day and mm. Brandon can focus on his other two robots. It, in some sense, I gotta think that's a relief. Yeah, I mean, it's stressful running three robots at this event. Three bots, too much. Yeah, it's and a I, little bit too much. That said, he's not the only person who has shown up with three bots in the competition. No, no, he's not. But he does have multiple copies of every single one of his robots. He's got a little bit of leeway there, and he's got his brother here helping him out. That's so. true. That's true. He's got a good support system. He'll go deep for, uh, you know, for all... Uh, he, he's got himself cases. three lottery tickets. He just lost one, so we'll see how it goes. All right, so we are going to go over to cage four now. Cage four means that we are going to see two heavy hitters. It's going to be Yubi Lu and Emulsifier. That'll be a good fight. All right, so I'll just say this. Yubi Lu coming from Arthur Leonel from Team Warrior. It's a bot that's competed in Brazil, India, and now the US. It was originally built in 2009. It's the oldest operating robot on this team's roster, and it is one of their heaviest hitters. It's worth pointing out, that is an eternity when it comes to combat robotics. Oh, yeah. I mean, this is an old, old robot. Yeah. Designs uh, that carry on for four years, five years, that, those are long in the tooth. Yeah. Uh, something that's been around since 2009 is, is downright ancient. And, of course, uh, all of these robots do get upgrades and little tweaks and things. But this is a robot that has a strong resemblance to its original 2009 iteration and is still competing today. Now, fun fact about the name of the robot Yubi Lu, apparently mm -hmm. uh, to be Yubi Lu is to be expelled from school, kicked mm. out, mm. retired from school, I believe is the direct translation into Portuguese. So because it's a scary robot on a college team, they wanted to give it a scary name. Yeah. And nobody wants to get kicked out of school. No, no, no. It's actually kind of benign considering like how vicious this robot actually is. It, it's got such a musical quality to the word. Too. I do like the way to say it. Yeah, Yubilu, yeah, it's nice. Uh, Portuguese is just a nice language though. Yeah, I, I, I'm, we're probably butchering the, uh, the accentuation of the syllables, but <laughs> that's okay. Oh no, I listened to, to Google say the word for me several times before I came here today. Oh, so well, all right. I'm accurate to Google. Yeah. <laughs> Which is you know, not necessarily the highest bar in the world. Five, but they're not the best language four, teacher, but you know. Three, two, one. Fight. Robots fight. All right, and Emulsifier, we already know. Bots FC. Oh, you can see bits of the arena are flying everywhere. Wow! Oh, nasty hit there from oh, Bots FC. Oh, I see FC. a belt has been dislodged. But whose oh, belt is it? I believe that is a UB Lu belt, but... Uh, in any case... Oh, no, you are correct. That weapon is just dangling on Yubilu now. It was just the force that kept that weapon spinning before. Minibot Stickbot is gone. Yeah, Yubilu is in for a tough time. Emulsifier has one of the most terrifying weapons here at NHRL today. And without, uh, you know, an offense is defense approach, Yubilu is on the chopping block. Man, Emulsifier, really interesting track bot design brought by Matt Borez. It won fourth place back in June here. It's also competed at Motorama three times. Ooh! There is such power behind these impacts. You can see Emulsifier, well, you may not be able to see, you can hear Emulsifier is running that weapon a little slower. Uh, this is going to give them the chance to get hits that throw their opponent more than just, uh, you know, cut into its uh, exoskeleton. Yeah, really not interesting a strategy. There. That Knocked said, out. 10 seconds are up. The Emulsifier taking home the victory. Wow, yeah, no surprise there after that weapon belt got dislodged. You can see pieces of Yubi Lu just hanging out. Whew. We're going to go to a replay here. You can see these are some immense hits.
first a few glancing blows, and then this, here it comes. Oh, that was a little off of my, there it is. Absolutely intense roof shot. However, both robots came out of that exchange functioning pretty well. It wasn't until that belt gets knocked off of Yubilu uh, that things start to go downhill. Yeah. Yeah, just a tough draw for Yubilu as well. Yeah, the, the wedge that is on the front of Emulsifier is, is the kryptonite to that sort of horizontal spinner that you yeah. see. Uh, it's, it's tough. It is tough. But with that win, Emulsifier is now going to the bracket. Yep. What's going to become of Yubilu, Kyle? Well, they're going to have to go into the third round of the qualifiers and hopefully get a win there. If they do not, they will be going home. Well, so we'll keep fingers that's crossed what for happens them. in these winners fight winners matchups. The w loser does have one more chance. Um, but the winner immediately makes it into the bracket. So we know that Emulsifier's got a spot. We just got to see how the rest of the tournament shakes out to see how good of a spot. Let's see. I'd be interested to see how many spots we have left. I know we are starting to whittle it down. We're going to go to cage one now. Uh, this is uh, Red Storm going up against Yahoo. Red Storm, of course, has uh, had one of the most dramatic moments of the day earlier. Yeah, actually flipping a house bot, a theoretical possibility before today. Now it is definitely something this bot can do, and he knows yep. the exact spot to hit when to do it. And Yahoo Five, earlier beat Fracas to make it here into this two, winner's round bracket. One. Fight, robots, and fight. And away we go. It is incredible how well Red Storm moves in this arena. Kevin Milchewski, one of the best control bot drivers ever. Um, with robots to match his talents as a driver, these robots grip the ground incredibly well and are incredibly quick, and he uses that to his full advantage. Now, Chad knew a very tactical designer and builder, really able to figure out what his strategy is going to be for every opponent. It looks like what he's trying to do here is just keep that weapon at the correct angle to avoid those forks on Redstorm, if at all possible. Ooh, that is a rough uh, miscalculation as he drives into the house pot. Yeah. Yeah, Kyle, as you're saying, those drums are uh, not friendly to riding up on a pair of forks. Uh, it's actually a great foil uh, to that sort of drum, the, the fork approach that Redstorm has. Oh, Yahoo seems to be Seems to be stuck, stuck up against yeah, the wall. The back, the back forks on Yahoo. They're going to get their one unstick, in. I think. Oh, oh yeah, oh, there we go. Oh. And of course, Red Storm trying to take this opportunity to turn off the switch yeah. on Fluffy the house bot. If they're able to do it, that's an immediate one thousand dollars. I uh, spoke to Kevin earlier. I think he is a little bit disappointed that flipping the robot is. Oh, look Whoa, at that! The forks went directly into pose. the plywood. It's stuck. Now, one of the things we do have to point out is one of the only ways that Red Storm is going to get a good flip on Yahoo, just because of the weight distribution of that robot, is by grabbing onto the drum. So if that drum rides up the forks of Red Storm, that's a really great opportunity for them. And we do know from talking to Kevin earlier today, the reinforcement connecting that, that lifter mechanism to the top of the bot has been triple reinforced. Yeah, we've seen that blown off time and time again in a single event. Uh, it was definitely a spot for for improvement, and Kevin isn't going to let an opportunity like that pass him by. Oh, unfortunately. See, oh, that's a little puff of smoke we just saw come out of the top of Yahoo there. That's not good, and yeah. it does sound a lot quieter in the box right now. I Yahoo's, wonder what's happening with that Yahoo's weapon. Yahoo's weapon is no longer functioning, but Red Storm's drive is starting to suffer as well. Clearly, both sides still work, but not well. Yeah, this one looks like it's probably going to go to a judge's decision. Last 19 seconds left in this matchup. And they're really having a hard time engaging with each other. Yeah. Check it out. Yahoo getting a little bit of the low ground here. This is impressive. Yahoo has a lot of pushing power. Uh, Redstorm, one of the best pushing robots here. Uh, the fact that Yahoo was able to get even an inch of, of yield a moment ago from Redstorm is incredible. Yeah, it just shows how well designed those forks are on the back of Yahoo. Now it we are does. down to the end. This one goes to the judges. Judges decisions normally favor Red Storm in this type of a competition, but I don't know how that's going to work out for them this time around. It's true. It, it is not completely cut and dry. I certainly uh, have my leanings 
but there's a lot to consider here. And, oh. and again, for those at home, uh, it's a combination of aggression, control, and damage that we'll yep. take into it. Uh, we saw damage to weapon systems. We saw dra damage to, uh, to drive systems, uh, although maybe not completely disabled drive systems. That's a lot to take into account. And then who was in control of the match yep. and who just tried to attack more and more effective in those attack attempts. Yep. So uh, that's all going to be playing into the judge's decision, and we'll hear in just a few minutes. All right, but right up. now, though, we are going to go check in with Chris up in the pits, who I believe has Rato. Oh. Hey guys, that's right. I am here standing next to Rato and the 30 pounder Chibata here all the way from Brazil. Rato, you took out Squire in your first match. Uh, you have uh, obviously a long day still ahead of you. Do you know who you're fighting next and what's your strategy going into it? Uh, I, I don't have a strategy. <laughs> but I saw the opponent is so strong. Uh, your weapon is really, really, really fast, you know. It's the opposite of my robot. Uh, and the, uh, I will make it dominate the middle, you know? It's my strategy today. Did, did you have any uh, damage that Squire had done to Chivata that you've had to fix in the interim here? I have a big problem because I, I buy aluminum 70-75, but uh, they, they bring another aluminum for my locomotion. And my locomotion is not so good. It's not so good, but I, I have a, uh, another uh, piece, and the, I fix my locomotion. For this battle, it's okay, but I have this problem, because I buy one thing, and they... they <laughs> Brazil, you know, <laughs> I, have, I have this problem. Now, now, according to Lindsay, I think there's about 150 million fans from Brazil in the live chat right now. Do you have anything to say to them? Uh, can can be Portuguese? Yeah, sure. Okay. Pessoal, tamo aí. É, além de tudo, tô me divertindo. Para mim, tá sendo uma superação estar tá aqui. Trouxe meu pai, meu pai tá ali me ajudando ali agora. Entendeu? Então, é, é isso. Ganhamos a primeira, a gente só prime precisa ganhar mais uma. Perdendo essa, a gente tem outra chance. E o Shibata tá tranquilo. Fica tranquilo que isso aqui é tudo bait. Tudo bait. What he said. Back to you guys at the desk. Hey, thanks very much, Chris. Always love to weigh in there with Rado. We've got a judge decision. Unsurprisingly, Red Storm taking it home with a unanimous victory. Uh, again, I imagine that was a, a tighter spread of points. Yeah, There's probably. a rubric that goes along with this, of course. Uh, but it can still be a unanimous decision, even if each individual decision was relatively close. That means that uh, Red Storm has made it into the bracket now. Yahoo gets a second chance in the third round, so we'll see how that goes for them. Yeah, they're up on the chopping block. All right, so before we go to our 12-pound fight, let's look at these 12-pounder bots that must win. Swagmore and Blackjack, which will be in the next fight, definitely ones that are on the chopping block here. We've got Nightcrawler. I can't even believe they're in there. Torrential, uh, Timber Viper. Oof, scary to see them in there. And one of our just classic champs here, Promhita, also possibly on the chopping block. It's a tough, tough bracket here in the 12s. Uh, we'll see how these bots are able to do and if they're able to make it into the bracket. We're going to head meantime, over to Cage 4. we got another big robot battle going on. We've got Swagmore going up against Blackjack. As we just mentioned, Swagmore, this is a do-or-die moment for them. Uh, but Blackjack is going to try and uh, make sure that they don't take full advantage of it. Uh, you can see Blackjack here has the, uh, the little lifting mini bot uh, associated with it in yellow. Uh, Kyle, do you know the name of the mini bot in particular? I don't know if I don't know the name of the mini bot. Five, it's cute though. It is four, adorable. It deserves three, a cute name. I'm sure it two, has one. one. Um, fight. Robots fight. I'm going to call him Squishy. I love that plan. All right. Wow, Swagmore is looking a lot more nimble than it has in previous competitions. Yeah, they've got much stickier wheels for this competition. They put a lot of effort into making sure that they got a lot more grip oh boy. Blackjack with their rubber. Stuck up on the wall in Already the first 20 seconds. Unstick, and it looks like Swagmore is going to help him with the unstick. Uh, but the unstick was called for. Yeah, so that counts. That does count. Oh, and now it's and stuck up against it. the wall. That was the unstick, unstick, so they are stuck. Oh, and yet. Oh, no. Oh, this this is interesting. 
I don't know how that's going to play out. I don't know either. That's... It's possible that that previous unstick was not called for and was an accident, but... Uh, Oh, there we go. Oh, now we got Swagmore and Blackjack Swagmore up on the rails. Looks like it's wa kind of wobbling its way off, but uh, oh, that is a rough place to be. Minibot driver Alex Peza trying to get underneath Blackjack and get them off the rail. Oh. oh, wow. And this is interesting because as Swagmore gets free and Blackjack becomes free in the process. Yeah, that's an un, the, uh, like an that's un I called for unstick there for Blackjack. Yeah, which would be completely feasible. Oh, man, yeah, you ever just mentally backseat drive? Oh, so much. The, uh, the house spot? Yeah, the house spot. Yeah, all the time. It's I, like it's, it happens in my head far more than it needs to. Yeah, and I will say, though, when you're doing it, when you're actually operating it, it's it's so f oh look it's a hat Kyle yeah Minibot's wearing a hat Minibot's wearing a hat blackjack hat blackjack is a is that a type of hat no. obviously it's a, it's a card game as well but no, also God. an illegal weapon from the 1930s yeah yeah, yeah. if you um you know want to be uh oh I don't know a ne'er do well a no good Nick <laughs> you might carry a, about your person a blackjack. <laughs> All right, so that was a rather confusing match, I'd say. A lot of sticks and unsticks and yeah. possible unnecessary sticks. It so looks like it was a knockout, uh, you know, in in Swagmore's favor either way. So it's not going to come into play. But I'd, I'd be really interested to know uh, how that played out as far as which unstick was yeah. called for, which one wasn't. There was some communication difficulties, it feels like, there in the box. It, you know, next to the cage, things get frantic. You don't know what's happening. Anything can happen. Anything can happen. So. All right, so we're going to find out, uh, I guess, the final decision on that one because we didn't get a graphic card to really tell us. No, it did appear it was a Swagmore victory by knockout, but we, yes, uh, I'm getting, yes, I'm getting we're word getting it was, in fact, okay. a knockout in Swagmore's favor. Uh, they will move on. All right, so now we are going to go to cage one. We're going to have some 12-pound action. This is a winner's bracket circuit, circuit, so it is going to be minor threat five versus Maximizer. This is a blistering pace of fights, Kyle. You know what? Good. Let's yeah. get her in there. You know what I mean? We're still in the qualifiers. We haven't even gotten to the real tournament yet. I am amazed. We have, uh, you know, a much more exclusive group of competitors here today. Uh, the best of the best from the entire year. And yet, it is still so busy. There are still so many good fights. Uh, we've got, what, less than half of the number of competitors, but probably double the firepower, so to yeah. speak, uh, that we usually have entering these arenas today. Oh, this is going to be interesting. Okay. Maximizer five, four, going up three, against two, Minor Threat minor five. Threat five. One, wow. Five. All right. Robots fight. Minibot for Minor Threat 5 is a supreme ruler which is actually probably a really good choice up against a, a bot like Maximizer. Absolutely, a rope. Oh, wow, look at that. Maximizer wow. able to flick the mini bot away like it's a pesky fly. This is Jay Kaufman doing exactly what he designed his bot to do. Oh, the I hit, see there the is, stick. There is a belt in the arena. I'm not sure which robot that was uh, peeled from, but we will find out. Supreme Ruler really struggling to get under Maximizer, and I think that will be a critical part of the strategy for Minor Threat 5. Jake has put so much effort into Maximizer, and it is so exacting and scientific in its execution. Uh, they have an attention to detail you don't usually see, and it has paid off in spades. And he just, he's able to get so much drive time and practice in with these changes as he makes them. It is not an experimental solution, any change you see on this bot. It is an engineered solution. Absolutely. Uh, so many of these robots are experiments, and that is not the case with Maximizer. Wow, look at the forks on Supreme Ruler. My goodness, that, those are hardened steel forks. And they're bent up like they're not even there. 
does look like there's a little bit of drivetrain issues going on on Minor Threat 5. Absolutely. It is still able to move in a straight line. Both wheels are functioning, or both drive sides are functioning, but not as well as they would like. No, and it does look like that was the second fork that just got ripped off by Maximizer. Wow. The self writer on Minor Threat 5 is working hard to try to get them back over. For some reason, Jake's going in to try to help, showing aggression whilst doing so. Oh no, there's no movement coming out of Maximizer. Oh, there we go. Okay, something just shook loose there. I and am amazed. That was Minor Threat's moment, Kyle. They yeah, needed they to really take did full advantage. Chance. They were high centered on something. This version of Maximizer does have some very low ground clearance. It's true. Uh, Minor Threat's five weapon is also no longer functioning. Uh, this is going to be a brutal last 10 seconds for Minor Threat. It really just wants to do anything to prove its dominance. Oh my. That said, Maximizer really starting to struggle as well. Yeah, Drive's really struggling. It looks like they're really only able to turn in one direction at this point. Wow, this one's going to go to the judges, and there is a lot of robot carnage inside of that arena. This is a different Jake Kaufman than we have seen at other events. This is a more calm, collected Jake Kaufman. He's he absolutely has the eye of the tiger here. I mean, he, he does. is focused. There is a lot on the line. He has blown off such a huge amount of energy and excitement, and I think all that's left is just drive, determination, and focus. Absolutely, and also just managing his emotions, managing his, his calm and his cool. Uh, he's told me he's even chosen like wardrobe to help him just maintain composure throughout wow. the day, um, just to really be in the moment and be present with each individual fight. It's, it's an amazing thing that we don't talk about a lot, but the, the psyche of a robot builder going into a fight, it yeah. is one of the most uh, high, you know, stress, uh, tense moments you're going to have. I mean, I've fought many fights where I don't remember the fight afterwards. That's a very common refrain it, you hear from builders. It is. It, it's that level of adrenaline, and being able to, uh, you know, build on that as a competitor is a huge place for improvement. Absolutely. All right, so we are now going to head over to Cage 4, where we're going to see one of these last chance matchups. This is Yoshimi versus Toro Jr. If the whoever loses this matchup goes home, uh, which is unfortunate. These are two really good competitors. Yeah, these neither of these robots are ones that I want to see head home today, but uh, unfortunately, one of them will do just that after this fight. Yoshimi, uh, one of the Five, most technically four, impressive robots we, three, we have here. Two, uh, yeah. one, incredible fight, amount of work has gone into fight. the software uh, that helps guide this robot around the arena. It is a shuffler mechanism, horizontal spinner. Joey Gannon produced this. Joey's relatively new to the sport. NHRL was one of his first events last year. Oh, and the weapon is down on Yoshimi. That is unfortunate. Very quick disabled weapon. Wow, and Toro Jr. hits so hard. Yeah, look at these end over end flips from that tiny drum on Toro Jr. And that's a five. Yoshimi will be going home in a body bag. That is the kind of hits you expect to see from Junior D'Souza and Toro Junior. Just hits that are so bad, your bot catches on fire afterwards. <laughs> so I, you can see the flame suppression system from Fluffy. Uh, it appears that that fire extinguisher needs to be reloaded because it is not spraying a tremendous amount of CO2. That said, it, it was enough to Extinguish the little burst. Of things. That robot will be dealt with uh, appropriately. Of course, we have a very advanced ventilation system and filtration system here to deal with the fumes from these robots. In fact, you can see the, the smoke being carried away very quickly from that robot uh, into the suction system that carries it for filtration and then exhaust outdoors. 
We do really have a great team of just minds that we have placed on safety protocols and the best operating procedures in these kinds of events. But right here, we'll see a replay. Look at these end over end flips from that tiny little drum on Toro Jr. Just beautiful driving from Junior. And there's the flame right there at the end. Joey hits the tap out button immediately. He's like, stop hitting it, it's on fire. And folks, you want to remember too, that is a very large arena. The robots look a little small in, in those shots. Yeah. This is a 16 foot by 16 foot arena. Those are large robots. Oh, wow. So we have a split wow. decision in the last fight. So it is a split decision in favor of Maximizer. Can't say that I'm surprised about that. Minor Threat 5 will stay in the competition, but yeah. they will have to go into that third round elimination bracket. Maximizer secures a place in the brackets. Clean sailing. All Let's right. go to Chris. Chris, how are you doing? Hey guys, I'm up here with Drew Davis and Blackjack, who uh, you just took your second loss here in the championships to Swagmore. Uh, you got knocked out. Tell us a little bit about what happened in that last match. So I went in with one belt because I left my stack of brand new weapon belts on my desk in my office, like I see them now. Um, and I knew I was already on the edge. And he got a good hit, got me stuck on the wall. I got an unstick, kind of. He hit me, engaged me at the same time, then I got stuck again. And, you know, I already used it. And then it was some time trying to get us both off the wall because we were both stuck for a moment. And, um, and then, oh, I, I got off and I landed on my mini bot and I was high centered. So yeah, was Let's take a, a quick through. look at Blackjack there. You can see that underplate just getting peeled up at the bottom, uh, making it very difficult to drive at that point anyway. Yeah, even if I landed. So I, I looked at it after, it was like, oh, even if I got off the wall in time, it wouldn't have mattered because I would have, I'd have been high centered, but that's on a list of things to fix, along with a couple other things. Well, Drew, it's a, it was a long path to get here to the championships, and it's actually my honor to not send you home empty handed. Um, you know, part of the combat robotics community and the NHRL uh, ethos is building things around a community. And as an educator and as one of the people that brings folks together here at NHRL, I am proud to present to you the 2023 Community Award. Oh my God, that's insane. Um, I'm getting a little emotional, but thank you. Uh, I started a club at my school, and that club has turned into two very large classes. Um, I love teaching kids who don't tend to get the opportunity to learn STEM and get their hands on combat robotics. You know, I started when I was, what, 36, 37, and they're starting in high school. Uh, so if I could have some hand in that of them learning something and get an opportunity to be on a level playing field with others, um, that means a lot to me. And to think that somebody else recognizes it, it means a lot. And whoever nominated me or whoever thought of it, I really do appreciate it. Um, and it's an honor to accept. I cannot believe this. this well, is along with this comes a sizable charitable contribution that you'll get to make. Okay. So we'll talk a little bit more about what you plan on doing with that. But right. in the interim, I'm back to you guys at the desk. Fancy jacket. That's what oh, well. get a fancy jacket. So blow it all we can arrange that. All right, thank you, thank you. Wow, that is amazing. Um, all right, so we will be going over to cage two where we will see Caldera face off against War Hard. Five, four, three, two, one. Fight, robot War Hard is, uh, is a hefty sized robot and I think it, yes, absolutely. It is working to its advantage here. Yeah, last competition, we really saw Warhard come into their own. Wow! Just a series of massive hits and excellent driving performances by Jonathan Juarez. That was a huge shot from Caldera, though, and it has knocked them for a loop. That weapon is not running, and Warhard is on their head. Yeah, without a functioning weapon, Warhard does not have a good way to self-right itself. It is stuck. Oh, with a little help from its friends, it was able to self-right. Yeah, thanks, Glenn, from Team Bots and Stuff. Glenn Boxel operating Caldera. He has just been getting better and better as this competition has been going on, it but it does look true. like his weapon might be down now as well. Now, this is interesting. Normally, a horizontal spinner like Caldera will be at a huge disadvantage when its weapon goes down. So far, that does not seem to be the case. They are pushing around Warhard. Yeah, and able to get underneath Warhard. Incredibly well. Uh, that is a testament to both driving skill and uh, certainly the construction of the robot. 
Yeah, Glenn really knows how to use whatever tools he has to his advantage. Glenn, of course, got involved in this sport just to spend more time with his son, Brian, who also competes at this competition. And uh, in doing so, has kind of developed Caldera with Brian and um, has become a very fierce competitor in his own right. Qualifying in the three pound division, having some really epic matchups against Droopy, and uh, getting second place at that tournament. I have heard so many heartwarming stories, but the father son bonding that has come out of uh, the greater Caldera experience, may we say, uh, is, is just touching on a level that I, uh, I'm just so happy to see. And look at this heavy weaponed Caldera winning these control points, getting these pins over and over and over again against Warhard. That's incredible. To a disabled weapon on a horizontal spinner being able to pin an opponent uh, in a very decisive way is incredible. Yeah, really just goes to show the engineering prowess of this team. Glenn, of course, uh, his son, Brian, got his engineering training from WPI. And he's built some incredible robots, Caldera being one of them for sure. At the beginning of the season, uh, Brian was saying the best robot on the team is Caldera, by far. And that's really shown true here, even with that weapon down. Showing a lot of control, a lot of aggression. And it will be going to the judges, but... That's a pretty easy judge decision I, in a lot of I ways. I think so. And you know what? I, I've been really pleased to see that today. So many of these have been decisive wins that reflect uh, a lot of skill on the drivers. And, and that's kind of what you want to see. I mean, Absolutely. sure, a nail biter is fun once in a while, but... We've had some judge decisions that are going to raise some eyebrows today, for sure. Absolutely. We always do. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So we do have Crunk and Nightcrawler. Uh, coming out ready for us here in box one. Krunk is the, I guess, estranged brother of five, Kronhita in many four, ways. Three, two. Yeah, yeah, one, I would go with that. Fight, robots fight. Distant relatives. They oh. started very cro closely related. Now there's not a lot of similarities between the bots from a. Whoa! What a hit! Wow, Nightcrawler really showing its power with that first hit. It was one of the most graceful flights we've had here. It's a nice arc across the arena. Nightcrawler from, T from Pete Covert, one of the Colorado Robotics competitors. With that big S7 beater bar. Krunk's significantly tinier weapon by comparison. Woo. Wow. Nice shot there from Krunk, launching Nightcrawler up against the wall. Nightcrawler seems fully functional after that hit, though. Yeah, the back and forth here is kind of amazing. Oh, and I... It's a very quiet sound. Yeah, that's not not a lot of noise coming from Krunk, and it does look like there's something seems askew about the frame on Krunk. Yeah, it, it is no longer square to whatever measurement it once tried to be. Now, that said, the weapon is still functioning on Krunk. They're just running very slowly. Yeah, trying not to grind it against the plywood, I'd imagine, but yeah, maybe. Wow. Uh, and the same with Nightcrawler. Nightcrawler is still... Yeah, everything's yeah. up and running. They're just playing oh, it safe. Oh, wow, wow, wow. Turning the weapon up to full speed, trying to get it in there. Let's see if Kronk is able to get out of this position. It's going to be tough. Oh, and, and yes, yeah, there, there it is. Go. self riding on the, uh, the house spot. Great idea. And you can see that frame is a little bit askew there on Kronk. They're not getting engagement with both back wheels at the same time. But able oh, to get a, a huge hit. hit. Wow. And no from Nightcrawler for a moment. That jarred something loose. 
Yeah, Nightcrawler really struggling to get it all back together. It does look like that right side of the drive might be struggling because they're really only kind of able to back up into the wall there, trying to use their gyroscopic force to get themselves off of the wall. And now they seem to be stuck even further. Fluffy is going to come in and try for the unstick, but it's going to be difficult. Um, yeah, for, with only 25 for, uh, seconds left. Nightcrawler too. to come back after that. Oh, and now Night... Now Crunk isn't moving. What is going on here, Kyle? This is just two bots that have been to war, Both barely functioning. Robots. Punch drunk. Nightcrawler got themselves in a horrible position, but they were able to get out of it and show some movement before we get to the last second of this matchup. Great thing to show the judges. You're able to drive. Your opponent was need, needs a little help to the door. Let's go ahead and watch this first impact here. Bam. Is that not the most beautiful arc through the air that we've seen? It really looked choreographed. Well practiced. Weapon to weapon impact there, sending Nightcrawler tumbling towards the wall. And then this is where you can see the frame on Krunk, not exactly the shape it's supposed to be. No. And the clearances on these robots are so tight that when you have a bent frame like that, you're only really getting engagement on the ground with one wheel, if any. Yeah, it, it's, I mean, millimeters, literal millimeters or fractions of millimeters sometimes can make a huge difference yes. in the driving dynamics. Because the ground game becomes so important, especially in the early part of the tournament where the plywood isn't quite as disjointed as it gets a little bit later on in the day. Later on in the day, you'll see less people running forks. You'll see less people running kind of ground game attachments because it's harder. It evolves and the floor evolves. Yeah. Uh, we, we should point out we do have word now. The previous fight unanimous decision comes in from the judges in favor of Caldera. Oh. Well, all right, good. Yeah. Warheart um, is now heading home. Yep. That was, uh, that was their final shot. Caldera, of course, advances and continues to fight through, going for that championship, going for that coveted golden dumpster. We're going to go to cage four now. Cage four, we have Squire going up against Anxiety. Now, this is another one of those do or die matches. The loser of this fight does go home. I, uh, I'll just point out a little nerdy thing I love here. Anxiety, or anxiety, uh, spelled T-I at the end two, because of its type one. Fight. Oh, Robots fight. Oh, I love that. Fight. Isn't that cute? Whoa! Squire says, no, sir. We are starting this match off with a box rush. Weapon directly into the side of anxiety and now grinding away on that undercutter spinner on anxiety and of course the beautiful thing about titanium are all those hot white sparks that fly into the air with every hit look at that yeah it's just attractive you're right it's a full-on light show every single time oh anxiety is uh Whoa. not the oh that is a rough hit the uh yeah, that wedge fork situation on the front of Squire is almost perfect for countering Anxiety's undercutter. Anxiety was able to literally double their armor going up to quarter inch titanium for this uh, tournament. That's their biggest upgrade, plus more attachment points for that armor, and they have needed it in this matchup. Squire has been relentless. And there we go, Jordan Neal's first knockout of the day, taking out Anxiety. Squire looking vicious. So that does mean Anxiety goes home. The Robo Jackets team, unfortunately, will not be progressing in the tournament today. Unfortunate. Jordan Neal will be progressing forward with Squire, and that bot looking vicious. Squire, really interesting story behind that. We'll get into a second, though. Right now, we have a judge's decision coming through, as you can see, unanimous for Nightcrawler. Uh, I think that's kind of what we expected. Yeah, can't but say that, I'm surprised by that. That was an amazing match. The back and forth, the back and forth. Uh, it could have gone either way uh, up until it didn't. <laughs> Speaking of things that could go either way, three pound bots that must win. All right, so we saw that Gorhart is already gone. Caldera will be moving on, but Puka, Droopy, 
offbeat. Look at these bots, hot wings. All of these bots have one chance left to move forward. Uh, we will see how it goes for them. They need to win twice to actually make it into the bracket. So we will see. It's really surprising names on here. Spartan jet lag. Whew. I am uh, I am very anxious for a lot of these teams. They've worked hard this year, and I know they all desperately want to make it into the tournament. Speaking of team members that have worked hard, there you see David Small and his bot Puka. Yeah. They've got a tough draw here. They have to go up against former world champion, destroyer of hat worlds. Wearer. Booty haver and uh, hat with a booty haver. Yeah. Five. Droopy four, with three, Tommy Wong. Two. One. Fight. Robots fight. Oh, starting inverted. Droopy is upside. Oh, that's an interesting pile of stickers and that is a wrong cut yeah, there. Yeah, that's the wrong box. <laughs> so we'll just tell you what's going on right now. There you are. Puka We're is back getting launched action. all over the box right now as Droopy has started inverted, and therefore the weapons are much lower to the ground, which you need because Puka is such a low-centered robot. Puka, what is that? What happened to the back of that? The back of? Of Puka. Oh, there we go. My goodness. I mean, this has been every engagement kind of going towards Droopy so far, but now that Droopy has got its blades back up in the air, that will kind of advantage the geometry of Puka's weapon for these engagements. That's a good thing for them. Oh, oh no, and, and they're back. Re-inverted. Yeah, you can see just how important of a decision running upside down was for Droopy in this match. I appreciate you that Droopy is approaching each encounter but first. Yeah, it's interesting, you right? Know, you, you put your best side forward. It's almost like a sign of disrespect for the opponents. <laughs> it, it farts in your general direction. Right? Yes! Really what it comes down to. So there's a distinct lack of noise coming from Puka there. Yeah, it does appear to still be spinning, but it is taking it easy, uh, to put it charitably. Oh, we are seeing no movement from Puka now. Oh, and it's, it has a wiggle. Yeah, by the robot way, is damaged. By the way, I'll just go ahead and say it while we're at this kind of lull in the action. If you want Droopy merch, you can go buy it at the merch store here. Oh, absolutely. Our uh, store shop supports so many of the competitors knockout. here. Ah, there you are. A knockout from Droopy. You know, if you do like that knockout, check out our merch store. A lot of uh, those sales go uh, and, you know, more than anything else, directly help the uh, the, the builders, the commuters, yeah. And Tommy Wong, not only a uh, really awesome competitor, Droopy, a scary robot and destroyer of worlds, but they have the only shirt that comes with a butt. Yeah, yeah. Built also right just in. a lovely human being. Yeah, Tommy's great. Like, genuinely one of the funnest and nicest people to hang out with. Um, and it's so funny that he has built a joke, a bot that started as a joke that has turned into such a devastating weapon. It's the way things happen. If you take the joke very seriously, it's amazing how far that can get you in life. That is like Tommy's whole ethos. Take the joke so seriously that it just turns into death. Yeah. All right, now let's go upstairs and talk to our friend Chris. Chris, what you got for us? Hey, guys, I'm over here in the Colorado contingent uh, next to Pete Covert and Nightcrawler, uh, who's just coming off of a victory against Krunk. It's the fight where there was actually a wedgelet, I think, that got stuck in the ceiling. Now, Pete, uh, Nightcrawler had some gyro issues in your first fight of the day, but it seems like you maybe corrected that in your fight against Krunk. What was going on? What'd you do? Um, a couple different things. I, I really tuned it in so that I, when I uh, drove straight, it wouldn't flip over. Well, I turned that switch off before my first fight, so I was just flying all over the place, which is unfortunate. Figured that out this fight, and I only spun the weapon at 40% this event, or this fight, rather than 60. And so that made it a little less tippy, and I had a little more control. Although he was still whooping up on me pretty good. He was getting some real good uh, hits on me so room for improvement but it was better for sure than it was first fight so you need to get one more win uh, ahead to make it into the uh, the next round of the bracket do you know who you're fighting next and do you have a strategy going into that i think i fight maximizer and uh i have a secret weapon against maximizer i've stu studied his bot studied his lifestyle and i think i have something that i might might throw him off this game 
You studied his lifestyle. Oh, yeah, it's hard not to. He's all over YouTube. Oh, that's a good point. Check out Jake Hoffman on YouTube. Uh, but good luck in the rest of the tournament today. Nightcrawler's looking great in the last fight. It's, yeah, that, it's a tall order. And Max Miser is not an easy uh, about to go against. But we'll go back to you guys at the desk. Well, thanks so much, Chris. Yeah, wow. I uh, immediately thought, like, is he going through his garbage? Like, you know, binoculars in the in the tree? Yeah, yeah, he's trying to figure it out. Yeah. He's trying to figure it out. Every little Listen, bit Jake is a Gen Z fella, and he is perpetually online. There is a lot of data to pick up on him. Yeah, and it's it's amazing as the sport progresses. I, I never would have thought that would have been relevant information, but sometimes just knowing a person's demeanor by watching a few of their videos can be insight that helps you in a match. Well, also, yeah, their demeanor and also kind of what his strategy is, how he thinks about uh, the design ethos of his bots and also his practice regimen. I mean, that guy is in that practice box and at his university training. constantly to the point where he has had to be pulled out of there by his friends and teachers because he needed to eat. <laughs> I, I can only imagine that there's like a small cot set up in the corner. And um, hopefully not in the test box, but yeah. No, that's what I imagine. <laughs> anyway, thanks for joining us, folks. We're uh, just hypothesizing here about the uh, <laughs> the daily habits here. We uh, actually get where we might know what the secret weapon really here is. Oh my! Oh, look no. at this mullet. What is that? It's a it's a mullet wig. It's a mullet wig. This is a Jake Hoffman special. Oh my gosh! You want to channel to someone's him energy? Him with his own, yeah. Th this is this is a Samson-esque moment. That's exactly are, where I was you're thinking. You're just pulling in their energy and redirecting it towards you. Them. You know that Jake gets like 30% of his power from his hair. You may as well just take that in for yourself. Yeah, yeah. You need every advantage you can get. We'll see how that plays out uh, relatively soon. In the meantime, we're going to go to Cage 1. Synthesis 30 is going to be going up against Sombra 30. This is one of those do or die matchups, by the way. This is two vicious bots. Aww. I don't need no degree to be a panda. That's so cute. It's true. Pandas don't need degrees to do anything. They just sit around eating bamboo all day. Kyle, it's too painful for you to mention pandas to me right now. Oh, we've, really? We've lost the pandas at home. They're no longer I, at the zoo. I didn't going, realize that. They're yeah, going back now. They're going back to China. I'm they're, so sorry. I mean, it's for a good cause. Yeah. But they, they belong in that. It's a whole, yeah. I, you know what? NHRL, we have robots, uh, we have stories, and we have global, political, animal-based intrigue. Yeah, I mean, geopolitics surrounding pandas, it's a whole thing. Yeah, I, who would have thought? <laughs> who would have thought? Here we are. All right, so you can see here, uh, the place is just lousy with pandas. Five, right now. Um, four, three, And two, why wouldn't it be? One, Synthesis 30. Fight. Robots fight. You can see little yellow crash vest, one of the mini bots helping out with Synthesis 30. It's Robert Run. He's getting a little bit more help and actually holding back Sombra 30 there for that, a second. That is horrifying. The fact that this tiny little robot is an effective wedge. Wow. So Sombra really doing a great job of getting into the correct angles and the sides of Sympathus 30, oh. preventing that weapon from doing anything to them. Wow. Synthesis 30 is caught up on the arena. They, uh... They're getting counted out. Is there no unstick here? Did we miss the unstick? They haven't called for one yet. Knockout. Wow! They never called for the knockout. They got. Or they never called for the unstick. They got the knockout. That is intense, Kyle. They must have thought they were able to get themselves off, or they just didn't want any more of that sombra smoke. Yeah, that was a little bit of intensity, to say the least. Wow. I gotta say, Robert Rundin Crash Fest was more of a threat to Sombra throughout that match. Absolutely. Than the this is the tiny three pound mini bot uh, pulling its weight times 10 there. It went toe to toe for at least a moment with a 30 pound competitor. Wow, what a strange match. Yeah, that is really disguising. So that means Kaoen uh, will be advancing with Sombra.
Look at that hit. Perfect side wedge hit there. Yeah. Completely missed the weapon impact from Synthesis. All of that damage went into Synthesis. Synthesis not able to get off the wall. Boom. We're going to head up to Lindsay now. Lindsay in the pits, uh, of course, with our internet knowledge. How you doing, Lindsay? I am good. Ricky, I just need to tell you that I really love your jacket. Oh, you. Thank really you. showed all of us up, and I, uh, I love it. <laughs> I'm glad you're supportive, because <laughs> I feel terrible that I'm the one odd man out. Uh, but uh, it, does, it does look good, doesn't it? It looks fantastic, and we may have some super chats about it. Oh, Let's dear. see. Uh, however, the first one here is from uh, Primeval Paradise. I'd love to see Supreme Ruler's Mini as a bigger bot, to be honest. Its design is literal fire. You know, that might be a thing in the future. We'll have to see. We'll just have we to see. We'll find out. Yeah. Uh, all right, the next one is from Diego. Congratulations on the beautiful broadcast. We Brazilians in the crowd, uh, Chibata. So yes, there is so obviously so much love for Chibata, who I think is fighting somewhat soon. So stick around. Uh, the next one here is from Davi Costa, Rato, and some Portuguese. Chibata is a hard hitter and the most beautiful destruction weapon that I've seen so far. Looks like a toy, but that power is real. It's true. I love the new paint job on Chibata. It's phenomenal. It looks it looks really great. All right. Uh, this is from Matt Hedger from My Girlfriend Doesn't Like Robots. Uh, Ricky out here rocking the two-faced jacket. Blimey. Mm. I've never been blimeyed before. Yeah. Wow. Today's Very the nice. day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm so happy it could happen <laughs> in front of all of us. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad to share the experience here with you all today. <laughs> all right, this last one is from William Wilson. You guys hinted that Ricky's outfit was sick on the podcast, and I am not disappointed. Ricky, we did talk about it on Behind the Bots this week. Yeah. And, Behind uh, the Backs? I didn't know about this conversation. <laughs> oh, yeah, we, we talk about your fashion choices relatively regularly That's, on the podcast, believe it or not. It that, should have its whole That is never a place now. I expected to be. <laughs> <laughs> it's just... It did, did not expect that. Ricky, fashion icon at NHRL. Yeah, check out the Ricky collection at the <laughs> NHRL merch store. All right, speaking of fashion icons, we are going to go over to Cage 4, where we're going to see Kablooey Tango taking on STF, a.k.a. Save the Frogs. Kablooey Tango, one of the most beautiful robots here. It is, and now the team matches the bot. I love the new T-shirts. I love the coordination. The orange looks great on the team. It's really hard to pull off orange so successfully, but they all look so good. Yeah, best-looking implementation of orange since the pumpkin. I agree. I agree 100%. And then look at this this orange-green combo, red-green combo on Save the Frogs. Two, now, Lucy Dew was our first fight, Sparky winner today for the Best fight. Builder Award. And her and Alex's work on Kablooey Tango this year has been nothing short of amazing. We've watched that bot go from really, really good to two golden dumpsters and a huge contender for this event, the World Championship Final here at NHRL. Wow, look at it taking these hits from STF. STF has the biggest blade in the competition. It is a shuffler, yeah, which gives it a massive weight bonus, and they put a lot of that weight bonus into the weapon. Now, don't get me wrong, those shuffler pods are huge and Ooh. very heavy. Whoa! Absolutely immense hits here. Kablooey Tango still looking fully mobile. STF just fully out of frame. Yeah, knock themselves literally back into the corner of the box. And what that is a massive piece of Kabooey Tango sitting over there in the corner. Is that the wedge? It is, Kyle. That is a huge amount of robot. So they still have their billet front. So they Not have a, a, a small amount of protection, but that's a lot of damage that they are taking from STF. And we should point out, Kablooey Tango is one of the most rock-solid robots here. Oh, it's, to blow, it's a brick. To blow apart pieces of that robot is horrifying. Oh, look, batteries are down! Oh, oh my, my goodness. That was a complete it's dismantling been of Kablooey Tango. There is nothing left. Tap out. It is that absolutely gutted. Kyle, the battery... 
battery was ripped apart so fast and shredded so thoroughly, it didn't even have time to catch fire. Wow, the amount of physics. Like, the calculation of actual kinetic energy that went into that shot is absurd. That 120% physics all the time. That's what STF brings you here at NHRL. Look, just bits and pieces everywhere. Kyle, look at this. So you see that, like, tissue paper looking stuff? That is the inside of a battery. Yeah, that used to be the, the, the fully composed battery, lithium polymer battery. If you try and cut that apart, it instantly catches fire. They disassembled it so rapidly and so, so completely, uh, it didn't even have a chance to instantaneously combust. And now it's still a dangerous situation. Our oh, house yes. are going to yeah, be extremely no, we, careful we going in very, there, but. Uh, very careful about that, but. But that is absolutely insane. Listen, STF is one of those bots that put almost all the points into weapon. I mean, it's an absurd amount of just damage that that thing can put out, and we just saw it on full display against one of the most heavily armored bots in the entire division. That is something that we've just been amazed with about Kabuki Tango all year is their ability to take a hit. Look at the, all right, so here we go. Look at this fully assembled Kablooey Tango at the beginning of the match. Taking that first hit like a champ, waiting to kind of get into the side and take out one of those pods. But this is where it all goes wrong, right here. You can see the wedge just fly across. And that wedge, you know, that is there to take the vast majority of the impact. The front of Kablooey Tango can handle some hits, but there you go. You can see the un complete unraveling of the battery. You know, we were talking about orange. It's it's uh, and, and Halloween. It's like they wanted to toilet paper our arena. They really just TP'd the whole side there. If you ever wondered what the inside of a lithium polymer battery looks like, that's it. Yeah. It's uh, kind of surprising, actually. So there you go. Uh, I believe that's a decisive win I, for STF. It's one of the most decisive wins we've had, period. <laughs> Uh, and I expect nothing less of a blade of that size. The blade on that robot weighs almost as much as an entire robot from another team. I mean, yeah. it is, uh, I'm trying to remember, I want to say 18 or 20 pounds. Yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot. It's, it's about the same weight as like one of the mini bots from uh, like polyester. Right. Whew. Oh my goodness. All right, so we are now going from one ridiculous fight to another. This is Chibata versus Boreon. Rato has had a phenomenal showing today already, but they are now facing off against Brandon Bennett Young and his apex predator in Vorion. This is the bot he has put so much effort and time into over the course of the last year. It is the secondary version of his bot phenomenon. And in Brandon's mind, this is his bot that can win. That man's clearly setting up a little prayer there. The entire making tournament. sure, uh, making sure all of the good, um, what is that? The good juju, the the, the uh, good energy, the good, the good vibes. energy, the good vibes, uh, just pouring into his body and pouring into his performance here. There you can see Rato's team with their new jerseys for this event. They look phenomenal. You know, I had a little bit of a. Uh, whew. Five, I, four, I had a hard time three, hear, hearing two, earlier, but I was I was one, really interested to hear five, what Rado was saying to his fans five. earlier. He's uh, he's telling everyone else that he he thought he was you know really an underdog here. Um, he thought that he was you know uh, like a little bit of imposter syndrome almost. Uh, he feels much better now. His his competition, his ability to compete. Uh, is surpassing what he expected. Yeah. And um, his confidence I'd is I'd say that's been true higher. right now. Vorion oh is my. not moving. Chabata is definitely slowing down, but I, I think that's strategic. I think they're waiting to see what happens here. There is no movement from Vorion at all after that first hit. And the weapon not has shut down. all the way down. The Brazilians are celebrating. As they should. That, that is, is a one-hit KO 
against Vorion. You do not expect to see that against a competitor like Vorion. That robot has had so much time and effort put into it. It is so dialed in for a one-hit KO to happen like that is uh, stunning. And that with that, of course, Chibata and Rado are now in the bracket. They have made themselves into the final championship bracket. Uh, that has got to feel incredible uh, for the Brazilian. Wow, Brandon is just trying to figure out what happened. Whew. I mean, that was such a massive hit. Now, Brandon still has a chance with Vorian in the third round of the qualifiers. But wow, that was such a massive hit from Rado and Chibata. We're getting to the nitty gritty with big hits. He's already out there signing autographs. Look at that. Oh, yeah. We're going to go to the replay here. We can see that one big hit. Popping Vorion up onto the side. And that, I think that was really the ball game. Yeah, that's the whole. Oh, that is a classy signature, isn't it, Kyle? Yeah, I mean, he's been a. He's been a little celebrity for a while now. I think he knows. I think he knows how to do it. He knows yeah, how to get I mean, the people but, you know, what they the want. tiny rat fingers. That's it's good. It's incredible. Right? He can even hold a pen. <laughs> <laughs> they trained him with lots of cheese. Yeah, yeah. Well, they, they drug the water bottles, right? Isn't that a, a thing in those experiments? That's true. Yeah. yeah. Ah, well, we are here. That um, a absolutely decisive win. I'm really interested to hear from the pits. Perhaps later, Chris can give us a uh, uh, a little bit of insight as to what happened with Vorion and, and Brandon Bennett Young's hopes uh, for an easy We've win. We've seen Vorion take shots like that before. Yeah, time and time again. And be perfectly fine. So that uh, very surprising that that went that way. Congratulations, Torato. Something clearly went wrong, and uh, we're just going to have to find out what that was. Luckily, that's not the last chance for Vorion. They have the third round that they're still able to qualify for the bracket, but Rato moves forward. They will be in the bracket, and they're probably going to have a very good seed. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be, uh, I think, a good place for them to advance. Uh, and with that confidence, honestly, I, I think I've noticed this before with Rato. Uh, he holds himself back a little bit. Yeah, he uh, does. It's, it's tough. And that's that little feeling of confidence, as long as it don't let it go to your head, that can make a huge difference to your competitive nature. Absolutely. It makes you not make some decisions and make some other decisions that are a little bit more aggressive, which mm -hmm. might be helpful, especially this late in the tournament. In the meantime, though, we do have a very special event coming up in December. So we're going to watch a little package about that right now. Let's go. Get excited for Havoc All-Stars. We've got three nights of some of the best fighting robot superstars from NHRL's past, present, and future. Plus, we managed to convince some of our best friends from the internet to come, like this guy. Three weight classes of 12 of the craziest robots fighting across three nights to be crowned the inaugural Havoc All-Stars champion. That's some heinous hits. That's some preposterous prizes. And oh my God, the challenges are the craziest. What more could you want? December 5th, 6th, and 7th, here, right here at the House of Havoc, or streaming exclusively on YouTube from 7 to 10. Be there. I will. Okay, that event looks absolutely incredible. Bringing people from across the internet to participate in our particular brand of madness. I cannot wait. And the real ones know that with William Osmond coming, that does mean there is a chance for the return of Moist Pony. It's also a chance for the entire building to burn down. Yeah, that's true. He's been known to do that. Also, can we get someone to check on Sam? Uh, he, he did not look okay at the end. I think he was starting oh. to lose it with sheer excitement. Yeah, I think Sam is, um, he's transitioning really from henchman to evil scientist mastermind yeah. type person. And that's just really what we're watching it's a, right it's now. It's a tough time in a young evil scientist's life. <laughs> and 
I, we're just here for him through this, we support uh, him. you know, transitionary phase in his life. Yeah, and, and we uh, want him to do well in this next phase. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We believe in you, Sam. Thank you. You can take over the world too, buddy. We know you can. You got this. <laughs> We're going to go over to cage four now. We got another fight coming your way. Hooligan is going to go up against Torrential. Uh, the, the accent there is, is optional. It's just torrential. But, yeah. you know, if you want to add that, the sauce. Yeah, uh, it's, not, it's not a Spanish word. You don't need to. But why not? You don't need to roll but the But it R. could be. It could be. I didn't really roll an R there. It was more of a just, I don't know, passionate uh, enunciation, we'll say. Uh, yeah, passionate, yeah. passionate. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, Torrential brought to you by Donald Sung. This is his first year back into combat robotics in over a decade. Um, We're hearing that story more and more. Uh, you know, combat robotics did have a little bit of a lull there, a, a um, nadir, so to speak. And um, it has ramped up so intensely in the last five, six years. Uh, a lot of it oriented here around NHRL, but, but across the world. And so many five, of the old hands four, are coming three, back into the sport, two, trying their hand one, at it, fight, and it is adding so much uh, to the community and to the fights that we get to see here today. Wow, beautiful hit there from Hooligan. Hooligan, of course, brought by Jack Sapotnik, second place back at the January Newbots event. Very Brazilian-esque design. He's got the tangential drive, which is currently being held up by Robert Run. Robert Run, the most common name you're going to see today for anybody not competing in the actual tournament. He's driving almost everyone's minibot. <laughs> he is everywhere. It's, he's a whack-a-mole kind of character today. He's, just, he's made a lot of friends, and everybody knows he's a really good control bot driver, so they just keep giving him a minibot driving. Yeah, least, you know, you know he's, he's uh, a laid-back. He's not a high-maintenance kind of guy. Uh, you need some help? Uh, here is. Is there going to be some help? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I like nice to think hit that there he's collecting. End like, over end. Ooh. Torrential still inverted. Both of these robots playing it incredibly safe with their weapon speed. <laughs> oh, there you go. You spoke a little too soon on that one. Well, that is Torrential trying to self right itself. Uh, the easiest way for it to flip itself back over is to spin that weapon up full blast, careen headlong the wall, into yeah. the wall. Uh, but outside of that little moment, both of these robots incredibly quiet. Yeah, interesting strategy. I know this is definitely a do or die moment for them. Nice hit against the minibot there from Hooligan. Hooligan's really actually spent a lot of time trying to keep Robert Rund at bay. And you know, damage against the minibot does count against damage against your whole team. Weapon getting up to full speed. Donald Sunk is back on their wheels with Torrential. And they win that first engagement, but then Hooligan hits right back, knocking them end over end. And once again, Torrential is on its head, spending most of this matchup inverted now at this point with 49 seconds left. And now you can see Jack Sapotnik getting a little bit more aggressive, still doing more damage against the mini bot, and then now doing damage against both bots. Coming down on the last 30 seconds of this match, uh, not the most amount of damage. Really interesting strategies on display. It's going to be interesting how the judges decide to handle this. I see belts are starting to come loose left and right. Yeah, it is interesting. Torrential really decided that once they would get, or I'm sorry, Hooligan really decided once they would get Torrential inverted, they would spend a little bit more time focused on that minibot, getting the damage points against the minibot. It's a valid strategy. All right, that is your match. We will be going to a judge's decision here. One of those times I would love to see the rubric, understand how uh, the score is computed, but we'll see. You know, it could yeah. be a unanimous, could be a split. We'll find out. We'll find out. The rules kind of around the multi-bot or mini-bot configuration are up to quite a bit of a debate this year and yes. conversation. Um, a lot of refinement over the course of the year and the yep. wording and the exact, uh, you know, 
letter of the law. And we just saw kind of a lot of that refinement put into effect with the strategies in that particular matchup. So. Right. Earlier in the year, if you spent your time focusing on a mini bot and trying to damage a mini bot, uh, it would be a wasted effort. Yeah. Uh, at this point, we have uh, tweaked the rules, refined the rules a little bit, so that if you are going to take the time to put a mini bot in the arena, you need to protect it. You need to make sure it's not a waste of time, space, anything else. Because if it gets destroyed, it's going to hurt you. Hey, man. All right. Now we are going into cage one, where we are going to Five, see 12 four, pound action with Psycho three, taking on Cthulhu. Two, one. Fight, robots fight. The winner of this matchup will be in the bracket, qualified for the championship. Cthulhu has been on an absolute tear this year, but Psycho is a meta-style design from Jameson Go, powerful drum spinner. And an absolute force to be reckoned with. He has brought three full copies of Psycho to this particular tournament. All of them pass safety, all of them fully functional, and all of them able to deliver hits like that. That was insane. Such an intense amount of energy in these robots. What I love about Psycho 2, just how comparatively small the bot is. It is tight, it is compact, it is extremely well designed, and that drum is just delivering so much energy into the opponent. Looks like that weapon is down on Cthulhu now. Horrible place for them to be, because that is one fully functional and absolutely devastating psycho by Jameson Go. Yeah, this is... Uh, I am amazed at the durability of both of these robots. The hits that they are taking time after time uh, would, you know, one hit KO lesser robots. And both of these are still functioning with an incredible level of efficiency. Wow. The stability that you can see on Psycho as it hits Cthulhu over and over again stays planted on the ground. That is really the key to its success so far. Oh, you're yeah. going to have an unstick here. Cthulhu stuck in the corner. Our house bot coming in to do its best to free it. Use up that one unstick. You know, the last tournament we saw Cthulhu at, Corey was sitting around playing video games, relaxing, having a nice time. He has been 100% focused today, and it's because he's got to face competitors like Jameson Go and Psycho all day long. And this very well may be the end right now. We are not seeing a lot of success with this uh, house spot trying to unstick them. And Jameson's still getting those aggression and damage points by going after the minibot. Smart move. May as well while you kind of wait for this unstick to possibly happen. But now we have the full count out and the knockout. Your winner, Jameson Go and Psycho. That means Psycho officially in the tournament. Cthulhu still has one more chance to get in in the next round. We'll see how that works out for them. Jameson Go will be moving forward. That is no surprise to anybody. This is a bot that a lot of people are favoring to win the entire 12-pound bracket. It's really between them and, uh, and the uh, Maximizer at this yeah. point. We're going to go to a replay here, take a look. You can see that mini bot didn't get into the action too much, didn't need to. Cthulhu went flying across the arena time and time again. Psycho just so planted, such a high degree of control. And in the hands of Jameson Go, uh, one of the best drivers we have here, uh, yeah. it, was, uh, it was a really tough road to hoe for Cthulhu. Now, quick update. We have a unanimous judge's decision for Hooligan in the matchup ah, before yeah, that. So right. congratulations to that team. And uh, we also are going to go upstairs, I believe, to Lindsay really quickly. All right, Lindsay, what do you got for us? 
All right, so I am here with two of the best young builders and also two of the best friends that are in the competition. Uh, they had been hoping to face each other at a 1-0 and record for both of them, but right now it's do or die for both Johnny and Lars. So, very sad. Johnny, I want to hear a little bit about what your game plan is going to fight Lars Elliott, the man behind jet lag. Uh, we're going to peacefully protest. No, I'm joking. Um, <laughs> honestly, we're going to... I'm having really serious weapon issues right now. Lars is helping me fix my robot <laughs> before we fight. Put the 70 amp in. No. Why? <laughs> we really, we want to put a really big ESC in because it's all, all we have. We're going to throw it in. Um, and the game plan is to just have some big hits, have a lot of fun, make it a really fun fight um, because, you know, either way... Win or lose, it's, yeah. it, it's going to be a fun fight. Yeah. And winner of this fight, synthesis are fully defined, so it's it's a tough road ahead. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm rooting for Lars. <laughs> Um, that's so sweet. Yeah, while we were waiting to start the interview, I saw Lars here helping you, being like, do you need parts? What can I give you? Lars, what is your thought process behind uh, helping your competitor like that? Uh, he blew up his ESC. At least we are pretty sure he did, because it's not spinning up. It takes, like, five years. Um, <laughs> so I have a really big ESC that I ran in Jet Lag and Impact. And I'm like, put it in there, put it in there. It'd be really funny. Put it in there. And he's like, no. And I'm like, put it in there. <laughs> but I think I'm, we're going to hope, I'm going to try and help him get it up to speed because like, I think we're just going to sit back, spin up, and then slam into each yeah. other. That's what we're going to do. Because you know what? Who cares? It's, we're going to have some fun. Yeah. That is what I love about NHRL. It's half about the robot fighting, half about being friends. Uh, and you guys exemplify that better than anyone else. So rooting for both of you, if I could have it my way, I think you'd both win. But. <laughs> yeah, easy, easy, both win. Double win. <laughs> All right, thank you. Thanks, Lindsay. Appreciate it. And speaking of friends, we have here our lovely. Uh, where where are you here on the on the the way from henchman to, to evil genius, Sam? Oh, I'm still very much in the henchman camp. Okay, all a right. A lot the, to learn to become a genius. The genius in training, the the <laughs> henchman extraordinaire. <laughs> Sam, welcome. Thank you so much, Ricky. Oh, some amazing fights so far today. It, I, I have been so excited. It has been such a huge amount of damage, such a huge amount of um, competitive back and forth. It, great final so far, honestly. Yeah, you know, every tournament here, there's some fights that really draw the staff out of the staff room. And, and I feel like today here in the championships, that's every fight. Yeah, this is, this is one of those days where you're like, I don't know if now's a good time to go to the bathroom because, like, you don't want to be away from a computer monitor for, like, more than, you know, two minutes at a time. Yeah. You could miss something you incredible. You could miss the moment. Exactly. But, uh, what do you think the moment has been so far? Oh, uh, I mean, in my heart, as a destruction junkie, watching S uh, Save the Frogs just eviscerate Kablooey oh, Tango, that goodness. was incredible. Like, uh, that's, that's what I'm here to see. Uh, among many other things. Oh, yeah. Fantastic. Um, How about you? Any favorites? I guess the flipping of the house bot. Oh, you're right. And not just a Brett, uh, but the big house bot. Yeah, 300-ish th pounds of steel that gets flipped over by a robot that weighs all of 30 pounds. Yeah. And kind of effortlessly, honestly. I mean, it, it didn't break a sweat to do it. Nope, it didn't break any gears, nothing. No. Right back on its feet after that. So... Uh, a lot of excitement, uh, both competitively and non-competitively. Yeah. Anyhow, we uh, have a couple of minutes here. All right. Uh, at least, at least a few. Are there any robots that you have really been watching intensely today? Uh, you know, rooting for 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 a Golden Dumpster Championship run. Yeah, absolutely. I'm I'm from Maryland, Ricky. I I know you are too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I can't not root for Brandon. Uh, That's and fair. his trio of robots. Yeah, the, um, the proud fledglings of the University of Maryland robotics program that he started. Yes, the Leatherbacks. The okay. Leatherbacks. Of course, you know, uh, we are big on turtles Five, and terrapins in four, Maryland, and, and that's three, where that derives two, itself from. One, five, Let's go to Cage 4. We got Disco and Timber Viper. Away we go. Disco, uh, we spoke earlier about venerable designs. Disco is a uh, archetype starter. They are a venerable robot, if ever there was one. And Timber Viper is a Kevin Milchowski 
Uh, oh, wow, look at that. Those front forks on Temper Viper working perfectly to uh, scoop Disco and get them inverted. That said, Disco playing this very safe. Uh, for those that can, can listen carefully, not a lot of sound coming from this uh, from this box right now. Disco has its weapon turned relatively low. And it looks like he's nope. stuck on a shaft or something. Broken bolt, perhaps. Maybe, possible. A lot of speed on Disco. Ooh. It's a quick self right. I think Disco is going to need to take better advantage of, this, of those times when Timber Viper is inverted if it wants to win this battle. Yeah, it looks like Kevin's really quick with the recovery, though, after those hits. Quick to self right. Almost looking like it's gyroing when it's turning there. All right, Timber Viper frequently getting inverted, but always managing to get back on his feet. Yeah, that self rider uh, able to, I'm not exactly sure what the, the number is, but able to lift many times the weight of the robot. So it self rides essentially effortlessly. Do you think it could flip the house bot? Um, ooh, I don't think so, but I am very eager for Kevin to try and prove me wrong. <laughs> Oh, and Timber Viper is stuck up on the wall, manages to free itself, did not have to use an unstick there. That's uh, an advantage to having uh, all sorts of articulation on your bot. You can kind of shift your weight around to, to wiggle yourself off of a high centering situation. Absolutely. Yeah, Disco is uh, really showing some of the best driving we've seen out of Disco. Very surgical, very cautious, very reserved, but still very effective. Disco has uh, stopped. Don't know if it is stuck. Timber Viper is sitting there. The yeah. final countdown has begun. I don't think that's a countdown for a knockout. I believe that is the end of the match. Yes, it is the end of the match. Right. It will be going to the judges. I am very curious how that will be judged. Uh, Disco was dominant for so much of the fight and then just stopped. Those ones are always tough to judge. Uh, this is one of those moments I, uh, if I were a judge, I would love to see a, uh, you know, a status check after the fact. Right. You know, was it stuck? Uh, is it functional? What's going on here? You can see it trying to move just a little. It looks like a status check might be happening now. Disco I... spun up its weapon a little bit. Yeah, the weapon clearly still works. And Timber Viper moved around and activated mm -hmm. their weapon. So I yeah. wonder if that means Disco was not driving. It, it could very well mean that. We will find out more when we find out more. Get that uh, feedback from the judges. You know, while we have a second here, I want to weigh in. Uh, a lot of people uh, will be wondering, where is Huge? You know, we've got a giant white robot that is, you know, has made quite a splash. Mm -hmm. We haven't seen it in any fights this far. It's actually gone up against two robots that have forfeited. Okay. So it has two wins by forfeit so far today. And by virtue of those two wins, it is already in the tournament without having to have fought one fight. That's convenient. That is a very good day. And a for big a advantage huge. to bring into the, the tournament itself. No damage oh, going in. Looking over Five, to Cage four, 2, one of my three, favorite robots, two, one of the most one, interesting robots five, we have here, robots Hot Wings, fight. going up against Offbeat. Hot Wings, ladies and gentlemen, has two uh, fire huggy arms. I'm not sure if that's the technical term. I think that is the technical fire term. Fire huggy arms, yep, it's in the, it's in the dictionary. Uh, those are burning hot, you know, thousand some degree tips that poke into their opponent and burn holes and try and pierce batteries uh, every time they hug in. And there you can see there little flames spurting out. It is such an interesting design and it works so well in this weight class. 
even against robots it wouldn't always be successful against. Offbeat is a very strange robot in and of itself. It's a hard robot to give a bear hug to. Yeah, that mini is the uh, the wide one. Is that their mini bot? Yes. Yeah, the larger of the two robots is actually the mini bot here. It weighs something like half as much as the other half of the robot. Man, you can see the glowing orange tips uh, that are meant to pierce into the opponent uh, on each of the arms of Hot Wings. Ooh, getting that glow plug in the mini bot there. Look at that flame or that smoke. Hot Wings, uh, the uh, recipient of a Sparky Award earlier today for most innovative. Yeah, and well deserved, if you ask me. I love to see new and inventive ways to destroy something yeah, on display. Has, I don't know if anyone else has done this style of design. No, well, there's been a few robots out there that have things like soldering irons and other melty barbs, uh, but never articulated in a um, bear hug fashion, to my knowledge. Look at that. The smoke is just pouring off and off the... So Offbeat lost its belt in, I believe, the very first exchange. So they've been running this whole match sans weapon. Hot Wings still glowing, still hugging, still making smoke. Still hot, still winging. A lot of pins happening in this match with that smothering mini bot of Offbeat. Now we're in our last 10 seconds. This one's most likely gonna go, well, it's definitely gonna go to the judges Absolutely, at this point. Absolutely, yep. Once you cross that 10 second mark. There you are, there is some excitement. A lot of excitement there, ladies and gentlemen. It's gonna be a tough one. Right, you see that's where the belt went off right away there. Yeah, I don't know if we did a great job uh, talking about this, but Offbeat has a absolutely immense undercutting spinner, horizontal spinner on the underside of the uh, more, how would you say, traditionally proportioned half yeah. of the robot. Uh, we did not see that come into play at all. And it's interesting, I like that their pulley is on top of the robot for their spinner that's on the bottom. Uh, I know that means that they have a whole spinning shaft through their robot, but it can keep it out of harm's way, perhaps? Yeah, there's a lot of ways that we can weigh in. Uh, speaking of weighing in, we have a word coming in from our judges. That last match, you and I were wondering, how is it going to go? How are they going to take into account that Disco went down in the last moments? Yeah. Despite, turns out... Disco has won by a split decision. Wow. Uh, so I think that did certainly cost it at least one of the three, uh, but it is able to carry on, make it to the next part of the tournament, and uh, we will see it back uh, fighting for its life and fighting for that golden dumpster. All right. Well, speaking of judges' decisions, Ricky. Oh, boy. Hot Wings took that last oh. one. Well, all right. Congratulations to Hot Wings. I think that's how I would have weighed it myself. I think so uh, too. That that puts Hot Bracket, <laughs> excuse me, that puts Hot Wings into the bracket. Um, and uh, unfortunately, its competitor Offbeat is headed home. Uh, welcome to come back and try another time. And when is the next time, Ricky? Well, it's uh, depending on how you look at it. The next event we will be having here in Norwalk will be uh, December 5th, 6th, and 7th. That will be our all-star event that you were so excited for <laughs> earlier that I am so excited for. Absolutely. Uh, and then uh, early, later in the year, we will resume our normal uh, general tournament structure uh, that, is, that is open to the public. Uh, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, our first event, again, will be a beginners-only uh, uh, new bot challenge. Yeah, new bots only. So you can be a veteran of That's the sport, yes. but your robot has to be brand new. To your robot must be a beginner. You can be a pro. Yeah. Um, but those are always, to me, the most fun events. Yeah. Uh, lots of new things, uh, lots of experimental technology. 
and uh, yeah, it'll just be on display for everyone. It to feels see. like it's less pressure because everyone's new. It's 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 a good event. The robots are cooler because people are experimenting, like you said. Yeah, good times. It is uh, it is really interesting. Uh, we uh, I'm getting word that the uh, as I mentioned earlier, huge still has not. Uh, gone up against another fight, but they are now preparing for their third fight, but in essence, their first fight of the day. All right. Uh, which, of course, will then be their, their first bracket fight of the day. So. And who, who is that fight? Do you know? Uh, no, I do not know who they're up against at this point. Um, and the two forfeits, I'm actually unsure of as well. I would imagine perhaps one of them, maybe the first one was against uh, a robot on their own team. Yes, actually, that's right. Disco, um, you know, the, and of course, there's a lot of overlap uh, between the builders of Disco and uh, the builders of everything huge, both the huge we see here and, and the huge of TV fame. Uh, that was a forfeit. You know, we call those tactical forfeits sometimes. Right. Um, and then I believe Torrential was the other robot. Okay. I so, didn't see what happened with Torrential. Did no, I think, I think that was a situation where it was just too much repair, uh, too little time. And, right, because and he, he has Torrent in as well. So, right, Donald has two robots, Torrential and Torrent, I believe? Uh, you know, I don't know. Sorry, it, it, hmm. we'll have to check into that. We'll get, we'll get some word back in a few minutes. Okay. <sighs> Man, a lot of fights to keep track of. A lot of robots, a lot of interweaving of the teams. Yeah, there is, there is so much, you know, there's the good side and the bad side here. There is so much um, brotherhood, sisterhood, um, you know, personhood in the pits, so much overlap between teams. But sometimes it gives you a really hard decision to make of, am I going to fight the guy that I need to repair that robot in 10 minutes when they go on to fight someone else? Yeah. What's the tactical decision to say, do I have enough time to do this when I'm working on a different bot? Do I want to do that because I'm going to have to fight them later? It's a really complex thing, and every builder here basically computes that mass somewhat differently. Um, it, it's hard to say what exactly is going to happen. We love to get a forewarning, but sometimes it just comes down to the situation and playing the, yeah, the like cards said, as they're dealt. Everyone does the math differently, and sometimes the equation changes at the last moment. You never know. Yeah. That said, uh, we've had no shortage of good fights today, no shortage of exciting moments mm -hmm. uh, as we work our way closer and closer to the bracket proper. And, Ricky, I feel like that's just going to continue right into the bracket. Yeah. Yeah, we are, we're going to have things slow down a little bit in terms of uh, the fights per minute. Mm -hmm. But I think the excitement of each fight is just going to climb and climb and climb. And of course, we're going to give you at home the best possible insights into the builders, into what's going on in the pits. Uh, just try and keep you uh, engaged and excited about what we are so excited here for, which is great battles, great stories. Great struggles and great victories. Yes, absolutely, Ricky. And I love it when we're able to get into the pits and really uh, look under the hood of the robots and, and hear from the builders what happened in their fight, what went wrong, what went right. It's, it's, it's the full picture. You get the full picture when you get the, the side of the pits as well from upstairs. The, the passion comes out here cage side, but the blood, sweat, and tears that goes into the robots upstairs is really where a lot of these fights are, are made or or left and on the table. It, it's all of those things. It is blood, sweat, <laughs> and tears. I know you've probably... Yeah, we, uh, we sterilize these tables <laughs> often, people, <laughs> because we have to. It's, it's a lot. Oh, man. <sighs> we got some day. fights coming up, you think? I, you know, I'm not sure who we're up against next. It, this is that time of the day where we're working our way out of um, the, the seeding rounds and into the actual bracket. Um, where, where people need every ounce of the time that they're given between fights to make sure that they're bringing their absolute all to yeah. the table. Uh, and so, so to, to make those repairs, um, everyone's up in the pits for the most part, but here at NHRL, we also have a machine shop, a workshop. We've got hydraulic presses, drill presses, lays, everything that people need to repair their robots, they can find it here. Yeah, there, there's a CNC plasma cutter in the building in case you need to cut new webbing blades. I mean, you can do darn near anything if you know how to operate the machinery or, you know, if you can find someone who's willing to help you who does know what they're doing. And, you know, I'd, I'd say there's a pretty good likelihood of someone 
understanding how to run the machinery here. I think almost any machine in this building is going to have at least one person. Uh, I'm sorry, almost any machine you use in general is going to have one person in this building that knows how to operate. So yep, it's a wide range of folks that come out to these fighting robot tournaments and participate. All sorts of age groups and career types and Takes hobbyists. all kinds, and we put that to the absolute limit here at NHRL. So, we are looking here, it looks like the uh, fight is getting ready to occur in cage three. It's gonna be Ratfish going up against Wicked Twister. Ratfish, another uh, venerable design uh, of sorts. So Ratfish is a, uh, a robot that has existed in many weight classes. There okay. have been three pounds, oh, there have right. been heavyweights, uh, all sorts of iterations of this robot. This is the three pound version of Ratfish known for its durability. Uh, it was a big precursor to what we see in um, Crash Fest. Uh, Crash Fest, of course, was our beloved sand shovel lifter. Yeah, I think. Uh, but this kind of like forked approach, big wheel, very durable robot uh, is something that has been made popular over the years in part by Ratfish. And you know, Ricky, speaking of Crashfest, or excuse me, Crash Fest, you should uh, check out the mini bot next to Ratfish over there. Well, what do you know? It's a mini crash fest, folks. Uh, I actually haven't seen this robot in play today. I'm eager to see it. Um, it is kind of amazing to see a, a tiny forked lifter next to just a slightly larger uh, forked lifter. Yeah, that's oh. uh, Crash Fiesta. Oh, that uh, is adorable. Robert Run competed with that one at uh, uh, Hartford Maker Battles at the Maker Space up in Hartford. They do one-pound tournaments up there. I think that's something worth pointing out here. We talk a lot uh, over the course of the day about getting involved here at NHRL. There are robot events all over the country, all over the world. And uh, it is great to get involved in those as well. Hone your skills and then you can come here and uh, you know try to fight the best. Speaking of the best, look at wow. this incredible team we have here hello. in the control room. Say hello, everybody. Uh, you could launch a mission to Mars from our control room. And in fact, I, I wouldn't put it past Austin to do so one of these days. These folks work so hard and they try uh, five, day in uh, four, for the three, entire two, ridiculous filming. One, five, Let's get this bad. fight going in cage three. Wicked Twister with the spinner. Ratfish in red. Crash Fiesta, the yellow robot, is on the red robot's team. Wow. One of the forks just launched into the wall from Ratfish. And the stakes are high for this fight with the loser going home. Yeah, this is make or break for both of these robots. You can see the robots are already breaking pretty darn good. There is a lot of tire around that arena. And not as much on Ratfish anymore. Oh, and an entire tire gone from Ratfish. Those wheels are meant to be ablative, but they are not meant to be removed entirely. Yeah, he's really in trouble now. Oh, that is horrible, Sam. You should be ashamed of yourself. That's really awful. All right, yeah, this, uh, you can see our thermal camera here. These robots are, are toasty, 131 degrees. Kind of a mess in there. Yeah, we have... like to make our cage staff work. You don't, you don't think these robots are in cahoots with Big Broom? <laughs> My goodness. All right. You know, for missing a wheel entirely, Ratfish is moving pretty good. Uh, and it has since disabled its opponent's weapon. Yeah, a lot quieter in oh, there now. No. no, that weapon has sprung back to life. There's the hum. They're taking it easy. That hum is subdued. Two thirds of this match have expired. Ratfish holding on for dear life. Wicked Twister looking to remove that second wheel, second and final wheel. 
Really seal the deal. Oh, and there it went. Looks like just a hub remains on Ratfish. Yeah, that has been completely delimbed. Uh, like that moment before you cut down a tree where it's just kind of the, the trunk looking uh, lonely and bare. The clock is still going. Oh, there's the count out. Yeah, they will just avoid being saved by the bell. All yeah, right. just moments before the countdown or the uh, the uh, timer expired for the match itself. Ratfish was knocked out. Your winner by knockout is Wicked Twister. So they are moving on to the bracket, I believe. You know, I want to take a second here uh, to put in perspective something. Excuse me, they are in round three, but go oh, ahead, Ricky. All right, all right. Uh, yeah, I want to put something in perspective sure. here. These are relatively small robots, right? These are things that we can hold in our hands. So, you know, this big, yeah. usually-ish. Uh, and it it's really hard to explain adequately how intense these hits are, how much energy there is in these robots. So I want to give a, a likeness, right? Yeah, let's Let's say you are a, you're a strapping uh, young man or woman. You're, you're beefy, you're brawny. I you're am. swinging a 10-pound sledgehammer, smashing up some concrete in your yard, okay. right? There's roughly 800 to 1,000 joules of energy there. You know, one kilojoule of energy. Every one of these hits, if it's a good hit in this three pound arena, three times that much energy. That's getting hit with three sledgehammers at once. So you're saying these three pounders are stronger than me, Ricky? I'm saying they're stronger than you armed with like a battle ax. Oh. Uh, but, you know, I think if I fought a three pounder with a battle axe, I might be able to win. I mean, I'm not saying it's impossible, <laughs> but I'm saying you're on equal footing. All, All right. right. Looks like in cage four, we've got Agent Five, P and four, Toro Feather. Three, two, Agent P one, in the pink square fight, with the platypus face. Toro Jr. in black with a big old vertical drum. And of course, we are in uh, the 30 pound cage. Now that that sledgehammer math goes out the window here. This is a whole nother ball game. I definitely don't think I could beat a 30 pounder with just a sledgehammer. I just want to throw out to, to all the folks at home my absolute love of the platypus tail on Agent P. It is, oh, oh there is a nice fire going. I think that tail got replaced with flames though, Ricky. Huh, even brighter, you know, brighter colors for our enjoyment. All right, looks like they're also stuck in a position where they cannot move. Flow coming in for the unstick, but can they move even if they're unstuck? That's the question. It is a good question. With fire like that, it is hard to tell if they will be functional when they are retrieved from the arena wall. And it's not really looking like it. No, tap that out. is going to be a tap out. Your winner here is going to be Toro Feather. You can see there's a lot of love from the Brazilians there. They are very pleased with that result. And well-deserved Toro Jr. Excuse me, Toro Feather. Toro Feather, yes, sorry. That was, that was my mistake, actually. Is such a solid robot. You can see here in the replay, these are glancing blows. These are not big hits, but they are uh, destabilizing. And those destabilizations allowed for a great hit on the back of Agent P, which of course caused this fire, and from then it was all over. Yeah, I like the destabilizing hits from, from Verts. It's it's kind of like dribbling in soccer. It's like a, a way of controlling your opponent before you tee him up for a big hit. Yep, yeah, you it's can kinda knock very them. strategic, and in the hands of a good driver, uh, can be exactly what you need to win a match. And, and 
it's most likely harder to get good bite with your weapon when your opponent is in their optimal orientation, but a little half hit that knocks them up, and then boom, you're teed up for that solid. Yeah, bigger smack. hits, more entertainment, and uh, hopefully more interesting feedback from our lovely fans at home. Lindsay, can you tell us about that feedback? Uh, yeah, and I will let you guess what the fans are talking about. Uh, I'm just going to spoil it for you. It's ciabatta. Okay. All right. You know, big surprise there. <laughs> I love bread. <laughs> oh, yeah, I love bread, too. Um, oh, the robot. <laughs> the uh, super chat here is from Igor. Rat is a humble streamer who is learning fast about bot battles. Do not underestimate him. Douglas, Brazil is with you. Ciabatta, one hit KO. Easy? I love the easy, yeah. Ratber. Ratber. It's, um, it's cute because I, I don't think that there's anyone, el anyone else here or elsewhere that you can call rat so lovingly, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and yeah, look at that signing stuff for fans. He is uh, not just fans in Brazil now, but I think many, many in the US as well. Uh, he's, uh, he's taking the world by storm. Beautiful. Rat and the Scurrying run. away there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's uh, people are just like so into uh, this event. It's been really exciting. We've been running lots of polls. I'd say most of the fans have been on the side of the judges uh, for most of these calls here. Uh, and I'm going to also drop a fun fact on you. Uh, earlier in the day, I asked uh, who thought or how many people thought that JMO would win the Triple Crown and win the Golden Brett in every single division. And it was about a 50-50 split, which is huge. Like wow. to have 50 percent of people yeah. thought JMO was going to win all three. Yeah, that's enormous. <laughs> That is the largest vote of confidence I've heard in any sport ever. <laughs> yeah. It's you could, so you could hard. say how many people thought that a coin flip was going to land on heads, and I still would expect lower odds. <laughs> Let's look in cage one here, where, speaking of JMO, we've got Megatron and oh, Brandon Bennett Young and Phenomenon. This is going to be a good one. For yeah, sure. these robots are mortal enemies. Brandon Bennett Young has built robot after robot five, and attended event four, after event to take three, on Jameson Go two, and dethrone one, the man. Fight, robots, and has rarely fight. been able to do so. These two met up earlier this year in the finals, which Megatron ended up taking. Right now they're kind of feeling each other out. Oh dear. Jamo looking to get that signature scoop. That is a bad place for Brandon to be. Brandon stuck up on the wall. Phenomenon looking for an unstick. It's just a question of if it's going to be Fluffy or if it's going to be Megatron that uh, accomplishes that unstick. I would prefer Fluffy, honestly. Uh, yeah. 300 gentle pounds versus 30 very angry pounds. Buffy does, in fact, unstick Phenomenon. Megatron hanging back there. Looks like Phenomenon has not lost any uh, level of functionality yet. No, it looks like that lifter in front still working. Got the uh, forks on Megatron so finely tuned they are under able to get under phenomenon time after time it looks like they're almost are they double hinged uh, they are I believe yes they are double hinged not only are they double hinged but they are spring loaded oh wow so they are all there is a solid con. hit something about Megatron's hits, there's like an anticipation to it that just makes it seem so much nastier. Yeah, they are exciting in many, many ways, as long as you're not the one on the receiving. <laughs> Very true. Now, Megatron, I believe, has been around for close to 10 years now. Yes, although that robot has been re-engineered over and over. Uh, it is a passion project and real source of pride for Jamison Go, uh, And it shows. Every fight he brings uh, the best, but uh, he brought the best of the best here to finals this year. Here comes oh, Brandon those are some Phenomenon. big hits. Phenomenon finding its opening and taking it. Those Jamal. punches not Answering left unpunished. Oh. 
Folks, okay. those hits on the side of Phenomenon can be absolutely devastating. Look, that robot is no longer moving. Wow. Those were lethal. Oh, still oh. got some movement. We got a little bit of crab walk action from Phenomenon. Yeah, the left side no longer functional where those hits were landed, but weapon still spinning, right still spinning. And in the hands of a driver like Brandon, that is nothing to scoff at. He's certainly been in a position like this before. But time has run out. This one's gonna go to the judges. I wasn't sure. I don't know, Ricky. But that was okay. I mean, I think that's a pretty clear win in my mind. There were certainly moments where Brandon was trying to claw back some some points, find a way to victory. But so much of that fight was dominated by Jameson. Yeah. So much of that fight um, was just either control or damage or aggression with points where it was all three. Uh, I think that's a pretty clear Jameson win. In that's mind. fair, yeah. When half but, your drive goes down, like, that's damage. If yeah. your opponent's drive is all working, then you're going to lose the damage category. And if that's the case, you really have to be aggressive. You really have to control the fight. And of and course, that was attempted. I mean, there was no point when Brandon let up even 10%. But how do you control Megatron if you can't get under it? Right, right. The only way that I have seen is if you are so much faster and more nimble. And that, that in itself is a tall order. It is a nimble. Absolutely. Megatron is not a slow robot. No, and he doesn't have to get all around you. He just has to make sure that his forks are facing you. Right, right. So we will find out for sure in just a few minutes. Uh, but my money, unfortunately, uh, not or unfortunately for Brandon, is on Megatron in that match. Yeah. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, as it flashed up to you, I am Ricky Willens. This is my co-host at the moment, Sam Hansen. Hello. This is NHRL. This is the championship event. There is over a million dollars on the line here. Uh, in three weight classes, we have three pounds. We've we got have 12 pounds. And we have 30 pounds fighting it out for your entertainment. I don't even know how many robots we have here today. I um, think it's like 72 exactly. Many, many dozens. But we've also, uh, folks that didn't necessarily qualify for championships, they can still bring their three pound robots and do freestyle fights. So uh, a little bit looser, low stakes sort of fights in our cages six, seven, eight, five, those ones. That's true. So uh, many people are coming from so many places around the country, uh, and this is one of the best times for them to get practice for robots that they want to make it into the finals with next year. Absolutely. So, you know, if you're going to come from Seattle, if you're going to come from Miami, heck, if you're going to come from New York City, which isn't even that far, uh, you might as well bring every robot you can, get your practice in, go up against some incredible competitors, and, you know, win a few freestyle fights. Yeah. The glory feels good. Even if there's no stakes, it's still fun to drive these fighting robots. It's still fun to fight your friends. Yeah. Well, I'm getting word now. No surprise, unanimous Megatron decision. Brandon Bennett Young, unfortunately, not uh, winning that. Um, unfortunately for him, not winning that match. Uh, but uh, I believe he still has uh, another shot at making it into the tournament as we move forward. All right. We'll see how that goes for him later today. We're going to go to cage four now. Who do we got in cage four? Okay, in cage four, we've got Waddles and Polyester coming up. Both fun robots. Polyester, of course, is the multibot. bot uh, Poly and Esther. Okay, I get uh, it. <laughs> yeah, going up against Waddles, uh, which I believe is another multibot, at least in the configuration that they have brought here today. Okay. Uh, I'm interested to see the fight. Both of these are pretty intense And are these both uh, WPI-affiliated robots? Uh, polyester certainly is. I believe Waddles is as well. Okay. So we will find out. Yeah, I'm, I'm seeing a lot of familiar faces over there by Cage 4 at the moment. we got the load-in procedure happening now. It's a pretty uh, specific process of turning your radio on, turning your robot on. Yeah, you are correct. Waddles is a Team WPI uh, entry. That's, that's Brian Boxel uh, bringing it to you with his 30-pound offering. Um, I'm unsure on the Minibot's name, but uh, I'm excited to see it nonetheless. 
Now, Waddles is a modular robot, so it can sometimes be a vert, a right. vertical spinner, or it can have a horizontal spinning configuration. Sam, is, is that Clyde as the minibot? I don't know. I couldn't quite tell. I see a lot of orange. It just it flashed up too quickly for me to see. I would love to see polyester go up against a very small, very um, squishy, very explodable fire robot. Oh, yes. I don't know if that's what's happening, but uh, that would be I'm, I'm going to keep my fingers crossed. You can see there is some sort of uh, interesting drama going on cage side. It's moments like that. Like, I really wish we could pipe in their audio, but 90% um, of the time, there's just so much crosstalk. Uh, yeah, but maybe maybe there's some insight up in the pits with Chris. Let's see what he's got going on. Yeah, Chris, what do you got? Hey, guys, I'm here with Chad New and Yahoo and his other fighting robot, Max, this little guy down here. Now, Chad, you're now one and one. You uh, you just went against Red Storm, and I saw Yahoo do the craziest thing. It literally was perpendicular to the ground with his forks up in the air. Now, you have another strange bot coming up that you're fighting, Knock Off White. What is your thoughts going into that match, and, and what repairs did you have to do in the interim to get there? So that fight versus Kevin was a great fight, uh, tough competitor. It was really cool to almost get stuck into the ground. Kevin messed up a little bit and knocked me down. Otherwise, I think I would have been like a shish kebab in the ground. Uh, it didn't really take a lot of damage. I had a screw back up, which, uh, which stopped the drum, and I spun some teeth off of an old belt that I sort of should have switched out. So, you know, my bad on that one, but uh, that's to take nothing away from Kevin. This new one that we're going to fight and knock off white with, this is the triple tooth drum that we kind of borrowed the inspiration from the Brazilian robot. We have static forks, so hopefully we maintain that energy and send it into the other robot because Yahoo likes to tumble a lot. Uh, this second robot's ready to rock and roll. We have AR top and bottom, so hopefully when uh, Knock Off White hits us, it just maybe sounds like the Liberty Bell. All right, and now my next question is actually for you, Max. Max, in the next match, we have Yahoo and Knock Off White. Who do you think's gonna win? Uh, Yahoo. Ah, you heard it here. Max predicting Yahoo taking the victory over Knockoff White. All right, Chad. Good luck. Thanks, uh, Max. Uh, your allowance just got increased. <laughs> That's a good day to be Max. I would say Yahoo for an allowance increase. Yeah, yeah. Put, so that, in, put that in for the vote with the spark. Looks there. like the drama's done in Cage 4. Everyone's set up in their corners. We've got Polyester in the blue corner and Waddles in the pink. And that just might be Five, Clyde. Four, it's definitely three, an orange eight, robot two, of a similar size, one, but I don't think so. I think Clyde has a... Uh, fight. There's no hole for a flamethrower. Yeah, exactly. Ooh, Ooh, big old first hit. Big hit and a belt taking off one of those two robots. Can't tell which. A belt and a bearing. Wow. I think that may have been polyester. Yeah, that was polyester's weapon belt. Waddles hits hard. Waddles is doing exactly what it needs to do here. Uh, it does not want to fight that big wedge robot. Uh, that is uh, absolute kryptonite. Uh, it wants to go up against uh, the undercutter half of polyester. Uh, I believe that's poly. Tear it limb from limb and then circle back later uh, and see what it can do on the wedge. It's cool. Polyester has different polys and different esters, so, so I know I've seen them fight with a vert and a horizontal together. Did yeah, they just... uh, the way the rules allow it, you can switch up uh, up to 50% of your robot uh, for another robot, uh, as long as that robot, of course, passes their safety checks and, right. and, and whatnot. Um, and you also need to talk about, uh, in advance, you need to test uh, and list the configurations that you might have going into uh, a different fight. Uh, so th they are just treading the line of, of what is allowed, but they've been very transparent. They've been very proactive in making sure that they are treating those rules with respect and uh, competing in a way that is consistent with our, our rules and regulations here at the NHRL. Fair. Pretty quiet in that cage, though. I don't hear any spinners going. Yeah, uh, polyester and waddles are both down there horizontal um, implants. <laughs> uh, so it becomes a uh, a nuzzle battle with a you know bonus wedge thrown in there for good measure. 
Some pinning action going down. Yeah, not that it doesn't count as a pin. It certainly does. As pins go, it's a relatively weak pin. Um, this is a little bit better. That's a lot of control that Wobbles is showing on polyester. Uh, and then to complicate matters, <laughs> the other half, uh, Polly is, is, oh yeah, that is Mark. So excuse me, the, the horizontal half of polyester is the white half. Uh, Polly is the black half with the wedge on the front. Ten seconds left. This one's going to the judges. It is. Do you think the domination of Waddles at the beginning is enough? My thought is that it is. It, it was a relatively even match for a large chunk of the match, but for the duration in which the weapons, uh, at least one weapon was working, uh, Waddles had the edge, at least in my book. So we will see. Of course, it comes down to the judges and their uh, rubric and judgment, uh, but my money in this case is, in fact, on Waddles. And so for audience tuning in at home, how, how do the judges score fights? So uh, basically it comes down to three factors. You've got damage, uh, which is a good chunk of the points here. And that is weighed based on functionality uh, first and foremost. So, you know, do you have a drive system down? Do you have a wheel not working? Do you have a, uh, a weapon that's no longer present or no longer functional? And then it works its way down. There, there'll be less of a point delta when you're talking about, uh, you know, do you have big gouges or does your robot, uh, you know, appear to be messed up because the paint is scratched up? That's worth less. Okay, like cosmetic uh, like damage. Like cosmetic damage. Or uh, we have armor that's called a blade of armor, armor that is meant to be torn off. Uh, that will be worth a little less. And then that gets balanced with um, aggression and control, which are pretty much self-explanatory. How hard do you hit your opponent? How hard do you try to hit your opponent? And how well can you... Um, move your opponent around the arena and control the match from a, a strategic standpoint. Right. And those things are balanced and they come back through a rubric to give us our judge's decision. Excellent. While we wait for that judge's decision, we are gonna go over to cage one. We have a fight in cage one of Carmen going up against Pramheda. Uh, Pramheda is in the blue corner. Carmen and their mini bot is in the red. This should be a good fight. Both very powerful vertical spinners. I'm hoping for a roofing. Yeah, it's it's interesting. I the 12 pound robots are lighter, and so they fly farther. But it also means they usually have less energy in their weapons, Five, and proportionally four, they have to fly three, harder to hit the roof. Two, so uh, one, anything can happen. Fight, robots but I think fight. we're going to see some big hits one way or another. Sparks flying. Carmen getting the better of the first couple of exchanges. Getting Pramheda inverted. And now some armor panels coming off the right side of Pramheda. Mm -hmm. Hasn't really slowed him down though. Still able to invert Carmen. Yeah, not in the least. Perhaps while upside down. Oh, no, back on their feet. Both weapons still spinning. Ooh, big hit. And remember, folks, this is everything on the line for Carmen and for Promheta. The, the loser here will be going home uh, and losing all chance at that uh, sweet, sweet golden dumpster. Uh, and the big cash prize. The winner will, of course, be uh, alive to, to fight another round and inch their way closer to the championship glory. Uh, I see a loose belt on Carmen. Yeah, Carmen is looking quite a bit worse for wear. There are several belts out here in the arena. Looks like Tomhead is the only one still spinning. And they've got... Carmen on their head, and that's a tap out. 
No. Yes. Tap out. Well, that is Ooh. the end. You can see that is uh, a hard fought battle. A lot of emotions. Aww. A lot of love. <laughs> so much for taking it easy. I wasn't, I wasn't tapping. If you believe when your opponent says, hey, let's, let's take it easy this fight. Yeah, uh, not not in the championship bracket. Not, yeah, not I'm going to run this, this race slow. You know, guys, I just don't feel like running today. Let's let's amble our way through the marathon. You can see there are some big hits, although this was a measured fight. I mean, we talk about it's not definitely not taking it easy, but it is measured. It is more calculated. It is more strategic. Uh, these hits were nothing to scoff at. A lot of damage in this fight. Just, um, you know, less explosive hits. More hit after hit after yeah. hit after measured hit. Ricky, I got word that uh, in the polyester versus Waddles fight, the judges unanimously went for Waddles. That's as expected. Chris is up in the pits now. Chris, what can you tell us? Hey guys, I'm here with Leo Ping and, uh, and Agent P over here. Now, 0-2 for the day, you made it all the way to the uh, NHRL World Championships here. You and the University of Toronto Robotics Association made a big splash this year. Uh, first of all, congratulations for making it all the way here, and tell us a little bit about your day. Uh, it's been a pretty busy day. After that first fight against Waddles, we thought the robot was fine, but it actually wasn't. Whatever, our drive gearboxes blew up, and we had to do some very scuffed things to get it back together. Uh, if you want to take a look. Yeah, you see zip ties in there. The gearbox was held together by zip ties. <laughs> But yeah, you know, I'm just glad we were able to get the raw working for two full fights. Well, mostly full fights. And really, I couldn't be happier that I'm here and we're all here at finals in the first place. You know, it's been an incredible experience. Despite going 0-2, I think we learned a lot, met a lot of incredible people. And I'm just so proud of the team. We put in so much work to get the robot working for both of these fights. Uh, I think we did a great job. You know, we're all beginners. Uh, we've only been doing this for about two years. Well, I, I, I know that you guys are beginners. And I would just like to say, though, on behalf of NHRL, uh, both to you, Leo, and to the entire team of the University of Toronto, I would like to present to you the NHRL Rookie of the Year Award. So congratulations to all of you in the program, University of Toronto Robotics Association. With this comes a hefty prize of, of a donation to the charity of your choosing. Congratulations, awesome job with the grind this Amazing. year. I did not expect to win this. Like, there's so many incredible teams. I don't know what to say. This is crazy. Um, thank you so, so much. I'm super grateful. Come on, guys. Rookie of the year, let's go. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I could not be happier. Like, I'm, I, I'm so thankful for NHL for putting on these amazing events, for bringing together so many incredible builders, for giving us the opportunity to destroy things and uh, be destroyed. You know, it's part of the fun. Yeah, so thank you so, so much. I am, I was definitely not expecting to, to win anything today. We were going into it being like, you know, we made finals, might as well show up with a robot uh, that hopefully can put on a show. I think we put on a show. Uh, maybe not necessarily in the way. I think you did. I think you did. Yeah. Well, con congratulations to all of you. I, I hope we'll see you again, obviously, in the new year. And more bots, more destruction. <laughs> Back to you guys. Hey, thanks, Chris. There's a lot of emotion up there. That is a, uh, that is a happy team. Yeah, I really like that. that there's, <laughs> you can feel the good vibes from here uh, through an entire, what, like, six-inch layer of concrete just... Five yeah. in their way down. Uh, right here inside right, right, your heart. Oh, right in I the love vibe it. chamber. <sighs> and such a fast moment. I we, had, yeah, we had so many good rookies too. Uh, it was a really hard choice. There were so many people that have been brought into this uh, event just in the last, you know, three months. Let alone the last entire year, trying to pick the team uh, that was both deserving is an impossible task. We do the best we can. Uh, but you know what? The teams that didn't win it. They're going to come back. They're going to get best driver. They're going to get, uh, you know, uh, robot of the year, most valuable player. Those are the teams that are going to go on to continue to have more chances to compete, yeah. to bond with the community, and to, uh, you know, just be all-stars. And, you know, Ricky, if, uh, if anyone at home is interested in being the rookie of the year next year, um, mm -hmm. we have How would you do that, the Havoc Academy. 
uh, which we've just launched a crash course, which is like a build along robot that comes with a series of videos mm -hmm. to teach you how to put together a robot mm -hmm. for fighting. Sure. Um, and it comes with all the best parts that folks here are using in the championships, in the three pound class. Mm -hmm. uh, it comes with priority registration for academy events. You've got mentorship involved. You're in a private network of other academy students. It's really the, the best way to foster people that are fans who want to take it to another level, to, to get a little deeper and to participate and perhaps be rookie of the year next year. And, and I think it's worth pointing out too, this is something that, uh, you know, this isn't just uh, young adults or old adults. Uh, this is something you can do with your kids. This is something uh, that it can be a, both a bonding event or an educational event. There is so, so much to learn uh, when it comes to what goes into building these robots. Engineering and electronics, sure, you know, all that good stuff, hands-on skills, but also like time management, planning, uh, understanding uh, the, the software that goes into, uh, and the programming that goes into uh, the speed controllers, uh, radio controllers, the networking. I mean, it, it, it's a litany of yeah, skills. Ricky, and there's soft skills too. It's like, it's working with people and, and learning to lose well. That, that stuff is crucial for, for being a full spectrum person and, and not being a jerk. And, and so that all comes from fighting robots too. And it's just the best sport. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm hearing we have some kind of developing, interesting situation going on. This is in cage four. Oh, oh mm. okay. Super Scope, interestingly, has, Super Scope is, is a, uh, a, a big favorite here. They've had to forfeit. They wow. are no longer going to be able to fight in cage four. Honey Shock was going to be their opponent. They're moving on by forfeit. Wow. We've, this is all over a dead battery. Um, we have seen more forfeits today than we have in almost any other event. Uh, stakes are high, stress is high. I think mistakes are being made. And, um, you know, not to mention these are some of the heaviest hitting robots in existence. Things are being pushed to their absolute limit. And, uh, you know, they're not holding up. Well, I don't know. A battery could be so many different things. It could be as, as simple as not charging it and or yeah, not but keeping track of which was the charge it could be that they overstressed it in a previous fight. It yeah, could be yeah, in so any case, unfortunately, Super Scope is out of the wow. tournament and Honey Shock is going to be moving on in their place. That's exciting for yeah. Honey Shock. That's unfortunate for Super Scope. Uh, is Cthulhu, Cthulhu is still in it, though, Super Scope's brother? Uh, I believe they have one more shot. They lost their last fight, but, um, but I believe they have one more shot to make it in. Uh, I am interested to see here, we are going to, yes, Cage 2, Cage 2, IDK, WTFID, going up against Kickstart. All right, we got IDK in the pink corner. Kickstart in the blue. Kickstart, uh, has a little bit of a color change going on. I believe they were previously all silver. Uh, now they get a little bit of a paint job. I think it looks nice. Suits them. I like the white. No, the uh, the other way around. Oh, excuse me. Yeah. Oh, wait a minute. No, maybe you are correct. Yeah, you are correct. That's just... Uh, this is kind of a mirror match. Yeah, it really is. It's tough. Um, yeah, it's it's white coming from a, from a silver background. Brett just like happily glowing in the corner. <laughs> He's Brett, got his gold glow for championships. I, I want to take a, just a second here. Brett has had such an impressive glow up over the years. Brett was literally an actual cinder block. For those that, that weren't <laughs> yeah. with us years ago, it was an actual cinder block with wheels for many years. Uh, and it has evolved into this like beloved uh, character. Uh, an entire family of <laughs> Yes, people. they have multiplied and... Uh, yeah, don't ever put two sentient robot house Five, things four, in a corner because you three, end up with families two, in no time. One. Fight, robots and fight. And here we go. Three minutes on. Oh, that is an immense hit to start off that fight. 
kick start just uh, throwing his opponent end over end. IDK upside down right now, but Kickstart trying to help them out. Knocking them back on their feet. Big old roofing. Tap out. And we got a tap out. That is fast, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Looks like IDK didn't quite know what they were doing. Yeah. True to the name. Had, had a bit of a WTF moment, but we love him anyway. We're going to go to the replay now. You can see some of these big hits. Wow, that, that is so wonderful. It was a triple stack <laughs> that just all of it got hit. And, and just to take a second, the amount of durability that you have to build into a robot not only to fight an opponent of the similar weight, but to fight a stack of three opponents um, and to deliver that hit and, and, and that kind of damage uh, and then keep on chugging, keep on hitting. Yeah. That's incredible. All, all of these robots are at such a level of refinement and precision, uh, here and to unknown in the robot world. Um, I'm so excited for what we're gonna have in, uh, you know, in our finals today and then years to come. All right, got a big old wide robot in cage one with full court coming all the way from California, from Scar Central over there, and up from Brazil. Yeah. Super Cabra. Full, full court, uh, captained by Coleman Christie, uh, involved in the Mad Catter team that you may know from television fame. They have a pretty good record. They've only been to three events here so far. Uh, it's about 50-50, uh, not including today's uh, matches. The best that they have been able to do so far is a third place win. That's kind of, it's not exactly scooching, uh, scooching in under the, the radar, but uh, you know, compared to a lot of these robots that we have here today that have taken home golden dumpsters in the past, uh, they're a bit of an underdog. Yeah. And um, they are definitely trying to, uh, you know, cut out a foothold for themselves, for their robot, and build that experience to come back as a higher and higher seed in upcoming years. Well, Coleman builds some good robots, and full court is very wide, so. Yeah, absolutely. And, and of course, we've got Jupacabra. Uh, I know we've had some interesting time trying to put the right uh, the right sauce, the right spin on the yeah. Chupacabra, Chupacabra, Zupacabra. I haven't heard them chanting it yet. That's usually that's how yeah. I figure out the pronunciation. Then it becomes very musical, and then all bets are off. Yeah, it's like Chupacabra. Five, for, for all I know, four, it's named Steve three, at that point. You know, two, it's, it could one, be anything. Fight. Here we Robots go. Fight. Full court taking on Chupacabra. Full court wide and floppy, Zupacabra, the Vert. Yeah, this is a really interesting matchup. Having um, that kind of density is uh, exactly the kind of thing that full court wants to be able to take advantage of. Um, oh. Looks like full court this go round is rocking a full body lifter of sorts. No, I believe those are just lift. Yeah, they are just tappers oh, on either side. Okay. So this is what we sometimes look at as a weapon in name only. Um, it will work as a self-rider. Uh, it will be able to meet our requirement of an active weapon, but it's not going to do damage. In order for full court to win, they need to be incredibly aggressive and incredibly controlling and ideally break their opponent just through attrition, uh, just through the process of, you know, break my opponent's fist on my face. That uh, opposite and equal reaction sort of deal. Right. That more defensive and, bots take advantage of. And as crazy as that might sound, Full Court has had a lot of success with this in the past. Um, Seeming pretty successful right now as Chupacabra uh, tucked up on the wall there. Fluffy coming in for an unstick. And they're down and back at it. 
doing the bestest. We're about halfway through this match. Now both robots seem to be fully functional. Full court, though, doing exactly what it wants to do. It is incredible how much control this robot is showing in this match. Solid pin while Jupiter Cover still grinds away. Those plastic and steel forks. There's so much durability. It uh, amazes me time and time again how well some of these plastics hold up to um, impacts at hundreds of miles an hour. Just about 30 seconds left in this match. Full court trying to get the last bit of aggression out that they can. Jupacabra trying to do anything to full court to get some damage points. It's yeah, like an not... immobile mini bot there. And the... that will count. I mean, that is a major part of the equation here. We didn't see a lot of damage happen. But that mini bot is going to count as damage, and it can all come down to that. And that mini bot is part of the full court squad. Yep. That yeah, going to the very judges. interesting. That robot, uh, almost no evident damage aside from that mini bot. I imagine that's going to be a major player in the decision here. However, let, let's be honest, full court was incredibly dominant. They did what they needed to do, for sure. They were getting the pins, they were smothering. The only thing I didn't see come into play here, those aggressive tappers, those, those yeah. little lifty arms, self-writing mechanisms, I'm not sure I saw those contact an opponent once. Hmm. You know, so the way our scoring is, uh, is weighted, your aggression is much more um, beneficially seen, much, much more positive if your aggression occurs through the use of your active weapon. That didn't happen, and that's going to be harder and harder uh, for full court to score as many points as it otherwise Right, that might change the spread. Yeah. Oh, some beautiful golden cage three over here. Oh, boy. That's Supreme ruler, and it's five, the fire base four, minibot. I am three, very two, excited. One. Fight, robots And they're fight. going up against Chubby Unicorn. Chubby Unicorn, a heavy hitter here in the competition. Oh! All right, that is what needs to happen. <laughs> Roof shot ignited the flame bot, and now they're functioning. Look at that lift. You can see the IR camera. That is a lot of heat. 300 and... Ah! That is maxing out our infrared camera. Supreme Ruler looking to high center Chubby Unicorn with those rotating forks and then bring in their blue minibot and just light them up. Chubby Unicorn place that gold tape all over their robot in an effort to deflect the flames in a way. And you gotta remember that gold tape is surprisingly effective. Is that Wait, Capstan tape or what? How do you pronounce uh, that, Ricky? Capstan tape is what you're thinking of, but that I believe is just gold and aluminum. Form. Okay. Could be wrong, but I, I believe that. Well, I like the gold for championships. It certainly looks regal. And against Supreme Ruler, this just feels like a regal match. See, one of the forks is getting bent up on Supreme Ruler. Yeah, it looks like a good bit of flop on that right side fork. Yeah, both robots doing a awfully good job uh, in terms of doing what they want to do. It's just a question of which one is going to win this war, of, this back and forth war first. Oh, look at that incredible control. So perfect. Just Absolutely what Supreme Ruler Absolutely perfect. Wants. Look at this, ladies and gentlemen. Booking it is a barbecue. Unicorn. Supreme Ruler, exactly its design intent. Skewering its opponent and letting the minibot come in for the uh, roasty, toasty marshmallow action. Look at that. And again...
Supreme Ruler, despite a bent fork, is doing an incredible job at displaying control in this match. Supreme Ruler going after the house bot now for, you know, a reason. Because he can. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, if the house bot can't rescue the opponent, then it's going to get counted out. I don't think Brett's having anything of it. Brett is getting slowed down. Make no mistake. It's distracted for sure. This three pound, not even three pound robot is successfully defeating a hundred pound chunk of steel. Wow. That is the match, ladies and gentlemen. Incredible, incredible strategy and driving on the part of Supreme Ruler. We're going to have to see if the judges think it's enough. But that barbecue says it all for me, Sam. That was pretty cool. It was pretty, it was pretty hot. But was there damage to Chubby Unicorn? I think so. I don't know how much. I know they um, were inverted for a good bit of that match. Normally, Chubby Unicorn is, is uh, able to free itself from a wall a little better than that. So I have to think that something That's is a little bit of a ride here for them not to recover earlier in the match. You can see here Chubby Unicorn got some really good hits in over the course of this match, especially on the mini bot. Um, Supreme Ruler was able to use its forks as intended the entire match as well. Both of these robots showing a lot of aggression. Uh, it's gonna be tough. I mean, I think Chubby Unicorn got the, the damage here by, a, by just, a, just a hair. Uh, and I think Supreme Ruler had the control. So how it ends up in the judges' eyes, uh, mere mortals like you and I, Sam, we can only guess. Yeah, exactly. We're gonna go to cage four while we wait for those results. We're gonna see Voxel going up against Buzzkill. It's a 12 pound match in cage four. Buzzkill is uh, another offering from Team Honeycrack from my home state of Maryland and your home state of Maryland, yeah. Sam. Um, and, and just a wholesome, wonderful group of people. Five, um, four, three, Two, Liam King one, is fight. the uh, robots fight. The captain on Buzzkill. Uh, not the captain of the entire Honeycrack team, but of this particular uh, robot entry. You can see another Supreme Ruler style uh, mini bot in the arena as part of Buzzkill. You know, any other day I'd say, oh my goodness, we have Voxel in the arena. Uh, talk about high stakes, talk about uh, a heavy hitter. But this is the championships. Like, today they're a heavy hitter, sure, but they're just a heavy hitter in a room full of heavy hitters. Yeah, when the level's so high, it's hard to see the ones that stand above yeah, it. Yeah, when everyone's turned up to 11, you kind of lose perspective sometimes. Ooh, solid hit there from Box. Yeah, a darn near roof shot. Looks like the cam lifter, the little yellow guy on the Buzzkill squad, was had one good high centering so far. Oof. But most of these engagements are going the way of Voxel. Really sending Buzzkill flying. Buzzkill currently inverted probably allowing Voxel to get even more bite on that spinner. It's also a tougher position for uh, those undercutters to be in, because your weapon could go flying upwards off the robot a lot easier. But Buzzkill's still spinning. Yeah, they are uh, hanging in there, and that honestly has been one of the weaknesses of the Team Honeycraft robots in the past. They work great until they don't, but this kind of reliability is what brought Buzzkill to the finals. Uh, the fact that it could shake that trend. And if they can make it to the end of the match, they've got a pretty good shot. Especially, look here, that minibot doing exactly what it's intended to do. Wow. Hold up his opponent, make it vulnerable, and wait for the big shots from uh, the horizontal spinner of the two.
Big hits there. Is that a missing wheel, Sam? Maybe a chunk of a wheel, a chunk of a pulley. It's definitely a chunk of something. It's a chunk of chunk of burning luck. All right, about 10 seconds left in this match. Looks like Voxel's still full tap going out. and a tap out right at the end. Tap out from Buzzkill. Voxel's gonna take that one. Indeed, indeed. Interesting tap out. I don't really get that one. It's surprising. You know, it's mysterious ways in here. Checking out the replay here. A lot of juggling from Voxel. Sending Buzzkill three quarters of the way to the roof. But props to Buzzkill for staying in the ring for three minutes with Voxel. That's no small task. Their robots have just been getting better and better. And I don't think that trend is gonna stop anytime soon. They received a STEM grant last year. They put it to work. They bought an arena. Yeah. They have and a now? better ability to practice than almost any robot uh, team here. And uh, we're seeing the dividends already. So we're getting word of uh, the Chupacabra versus uh, full court fight that we saw. The uh, unanimous decision there was Chupacabra. All right. Wow. We, I, yeah, I'm surprised. It must have come down uh, to that many bots. I think you're the, right, Ricky. The damage makes a huge difference. Uh, and again, just for the folks at home that have watched previous events, this is one of those rules tweaks that we've made that can make a big difference. Having that mini bot in the arena is now no longer just a benefit, it's also a liability and something you need to carefully weigh uh, and, and you know be a careful driver uh, if that's the road that you decide to pursue. Yeah, so the advantages of, of mini bots are certainly there. You can high center your opponent, you can free yourself if you're stuck, but now the risks keep adding up. It's more repair time in the pits. The damage categories can get you. Yeah, it's give and take. Oh, all right. We got a good one in cage two. We got Lars and Johnny from Jetlag and Spartan. They're sitting on the same side for this fight. They are teammates. They are friends. Uh, Five, and they're in it for four, a good time. Three, two, one. Fight, robots fight. Spartan out of the blue corner. Jetlag out of the pink. They're both up to speed. Jet lag engaging. Spartan taking it. Spartan trying to get around the back of jet lag. Solid shot there. Very similar mini bots from both of these robots. The flat doorstop looking guy. Jet lag's got Spartan off its wheels and on its drum as it moves him around the arena. Lars Elliott, one of the best drivers in the sport, and so young. Yeah, this, and, and I want to point out too, this competition has meant so much to Lars. Uh, Combat Robots in general has meant so much, and we've seen uh, so much growth uh, and maturity and advancement in skill uh, on Lars' part. Uh, went from a newbie to a, uh, a top-rated builder and driver in such a short period of time. Uh, if ever there was a testament to how big and important a part of life uh, this competition could be for a competitor, uh, it is large. It may have been a short period of time, Ricky, but he packed a lot of competitions into that time. That is true. He is a grinder for sure. He's got a supportive group behind him, and they're pushing the sport. And right now, Spartan's jammed up into the wall there. Calls for the unstick from Brett. Brett, ever so sweetly, coming in to gently remove Spartan from oh, the gap of the wall. And he's out. So gentle. <laughs> so removed.
Both robots still spinning. Spartan getting the better one of that exchange. You can see that uh, plow on the front of jet lag. Exactly the kind of thing that a robot like Spartan doesn't want to see. Uh, but the flip side of that plow is it really limits the ability of jet lag to land big hits on Spartan. It, it's very protective. It, it's great for defensive purposes. Uh, it can really hold them back in terms of big, solid hits when they want to go on the offensive. And Spartan's a cool design because it's got that big old horizontal in the front, which makes its opponents inclined to run a wedge. But on the back, it's got the sharpest double-hinged forks. Um, so it can really take advantage of opponents running wedges. Yeah, that's yeah, true. Oh, that was a great one. Hugs from Johnny and Lars. The loser of this one is going home, and this one's gonna go to the judges. All in the hands of the judges today. Man, a lot of good hits in this fight, a lot of tactical driving. You can see, boy, uh, Spartan going flying there. Look at so the excitement Johnny. <laughs> in Johnny. He is overwhelmed. So many intense moments. Such love at the end of that fight. Uh, you know, we talk about some of the, the things that you get out of robot combat, uh, and it's, it's almost a cliche at this point, but the community that we have here, the friendships that gets made, the connections that get made, uh, just cannot be overstated in both, uh, both like the value when you look at it from an objective standpoint, but from the joy that it brings people. Yeah. Um, it's, it's really something. Ricky, it's bringing me joy right now. And I'm just watching from over here. Folks at home, Sam is like the biggest sweetheart and it doesn't always come out uh, because he's, you know, an evil uh, genius in training. Uh, and you're just like, oh, he's, he's gonna make Frankenstein or like a murder ray or whatever. I was like, yes, but the man has such a big heart. And it's, it's almost like a radar system for when something sweet is happening in the pits. If you just see like a tear streaming <laughs> down Sam's face, you know something wholesome has happened. Uh, and and Ricky, look into our you're blowing up my spot, dude. Yeah. I don't want people to know I cry. Yeah, well, it's, <laughs> it's something to be proud of, Sam. Uh, most of us have had our emotions crushed out of us at, at a young age. <laughs> So if you can, if you can, you know, celebrate and uh, and foster that that purity in the world. Well, Ricky, please, I love this sport. Please, I love this community. Stop. I love this league. I'm so lucky to be here, and it just all makes me so happy. But jet lag took that one. Lars Elliott and jet lag. No Johnny surprise, everybody very happy for Lars. Even Johnny happy for Lars. I mean, there's certainly some disappointment there. Great job. But, uh, but great job. And Lars and Robert Run. Oh, baby. Cage three, ladies and gentlemen. We have ourselves Silent X. Uh, Jameson goes. Uh, absolutely potent three pound offering going up against five Clark, four, the three, uh two, certainly a contender one, for the five, most powerful flame-based robot in the competition uh, these days and the flames are up oh they absolutely are sad Silent X is a difficult robot to pin, and of course, for Clyde to make that flamethrower work properly, he needs to not only attack Silent Spring, Silent, excuse me, Silent X, but pin Silent up at X up against the wall, uh, or, you know, other object. Oh, and there it is. Opportunity after opportunity is coming up uh, for control. But Silent X just keeps bouncing around the arena. Yeah, it's like Clyde is having a hard time corralling him. 
Well, it's, it's interesting. Normally, a robot like Silent X, you would dial down that weapon power a little bit, keep, try to keep control. Today, Silent X is going to ram that throttle full blast. He just wants to bounce around the arena and never stop. Right. Because as soon as he stops, that's when he gets he, smothered. That's when he gets barbecued. So, uh, and, and of course, uh, Jameson knows this. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm not uh, telling any stories out of school, so right. to speak, uh, or uh, revealing any, any big secrets. Sometimes a little bit of chaos is a strategy. Yeah. Sometimes a lot of chaos is a strategy. See that uh, that weapon is starting to uh, to taper off on Clyde. They're trying to reserve that fuel for just the right moment. That makes sense. We limit the amount of fuel allowed in these robots. Um, and it's yeah. based oh, on the there's size. the pin. That's the pin they need. Do they have enough fuel to make it work? Incredible control, and remember, folks, even if that flamethrower isn't blasting, that does count as aggression. That does count as uh, some level of damage that's occurring. And Silent X is a hat. Clyde looks good with a Silent X on. He, he certainly does. Full pin for 10 seconds there. And it looks like that flame is officially done on Clyde. Spinner still going on Silent X. Silent X has a lineage going back over 10 years. Kinda. Silent X was the experimental form of Silent Spring, JMO's most successful three pound robot. Uh, and a lot of the stuff developed on Silent X have moved over to Silent Spring. And now, Silent X feels a little less experimental than Silent Spring. But Clyde went the full three minutes. They're excited. They should be. But that one's going to the judges. All right, take a look at the replay. This is at the beginning of the match when the flames were their most epic. Clyde just corralling Silent X as best as he could. JMO jumping around with a spinner on Silent X, trying to avoid the corral. It seemed like that strategy worked out for him. Uh, by the end of the match, the flame puttered out, and Silent X was still going. But we will see how the judges see it. All right, going over to cage one. And uh, we've got Jubaloo and Kitchen Grill coming up here. Sam, these are two international competitors, Jubaloo from Brazil and Kitchen Grill from the UK. This is awesome. Now, both of them have traveled thousands and thousands of miles to get here, which is really, really cool. It shows kind of the reach and the impact of NHRL globally. Yeah, it's the best competition in the world. For these weight classes, you cannot find anything better. And so there is a reason folks are coming from all over the earth to be here. Now, Kitchen Grill had an absolutely uh, explosive first match uh, of the day. Jublu also, you know, pretty explosive matches. Now, are we in the elimination rounds here? Is it winning you're in and losing you're out? I think we might be getting there with a majority of those matches, but maybe not necessarily all of them. Waiting for Gil to pop up in my ear and tell me the, <laughs> the truth. <gasps> okay, so Gil popped in my ear and told me the truth. We are in the round three of qualifiers. The winners of these will go on and the losers will be going home. And for this match in cage one, that is a long ways to go. Yeah. The stakes are incredibly high from this point forward. I mean, it has been high all day, of course, but, um, you know, we, we are entering a single elimination format here, you know, for, uh, for these play-in rounds. And uh, if you win, you get your way into the 12-bot uh, bracket, the actual championship bracket. 
And five, uh, yeah, we're going to have to see uh, three, which international two, competitor here one, advances. Fight, robots, fight. All right, a good start. We want to meet in the center of the box. Ooh, good hit there. Kitchen Grill onto Jubilee. Kitchen Grill, though, on its head. Jubilee this taking advantage of Kitchen Grill being inverted, and it looks like they didn't help them out. They didn't put them back on their feet. It looks like they just hit them. Now here comes the house bot here to save, see if they can save Kitchen Grill. And it looks like the house bot has just pushed Kitchen Grill toward uh, the, uh, the pink square here. And it looks like the power could be out on Kitchen Grill entirely. Oh. This is a tough position to, to flip them back over with for Fluffy there. I'm not seeing any movement at all in the tires. It doesn't look like it's high centered. It looks like the power is out. And I hear a countdown. That is the countdown. match. Your winner is Jubilee Kitchen Grill, eliminated here in the third round of the play-ins. The Brazilians remain alive and are one and only British competitor going home early. Now, I love seeing British competitors here at NHRL. We had a large contingent of British builders come out earlier in the year, and I want to see more of it. I really love to see British robots, and uh, really, Jack has done really well with Kitchen Grill. I hope to see Kitchen Grill again in 2024. I've just seen the NHRL logo on their jerseys for the first time. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, the jerseys here uh, today at the finals have been incredible. Uh, we've seen lots and lots of teams that are just kitted out. It is very, very cool. Yeah, for, for Team Warrior, you know, it's just awesome to see, you know, how much they love this league. Uh, they fielded multiple robots and multiple competitions this year and uh, remaining alive in the bracket, uh, advancing into the, uh, the championship round of 12. That's exciting, the championship round of 12. There's no more losing. Once you've lost it in there, you're home. Now we're gonna go over to cage four here. I can see Yahoo in the pink corner, Chad New, uh, the captain of Yahoo, captain of Magnitude as well, facing off against Knock Off White from uh, the Wrigley brothers. Adam Wrigley, uh, they're running a uh, electric hammer except this one is a walking, stomping hammer, uh, a little bit different from Shatter on BattleBots. I love this robot. <laughs> You've got the shuffling. You can hear it walk so loud. It's, it's instantly recognizable, the walking sound. Plus, a big, nasty hammer. The Five, only hammer here four, today. Three. Two, Let's see what they do. One. Fight. Robots fight. That big heavy sound is the stomping of knockoff white. Now Yahoo circling its prey, trying really hard to uh, pop knockoff white into the air. Knockoff white landing a hit on the top of Yahoo. Now Chad really testing those forks, trying to get under. And Knockoff White is desperate to pierce the top armor plate on Yahoo. Those strikes from Knockoff White come down so fast. Wow, very snappy. But these long forks on the front of Knockoff White are really designed to uh, take on these kind of short, brutal uh, drum spinners. Oh, getting into the drum. To work now. Ooh. Has he killed the weapon on oh, Yahoo? Man. I think the weapon on Yahoo is still running. Yeah. Still popping up knockoff white. Knockoff Chad white swinging away. Here we go. Chad popping knockoff white briefly on its head, trying to get under that robot and continue to chew away. Fork still holding oh! up strong. Knockoff White is bending its hammer into the into the, the floor there. Yahoo tried to take advantage, but Knockoff White got out, and there's back to swinging. Now the play here with Avert is that you want to try and snipe that weapon belt. It's a really small target, but if you can do it, you can score massive damage. 
Wow, knockoff fight pushing Yahoo into the corner and just relentlessly hammering the top of the robot. That was 60 seconds left here in this fight. Sonic pleasure, Luke. The grinding of the drum, the humming of the shuffler, the swinging of the hammer. Now, are these two robots stuck together? Now, uh, if, you, uh, if you're entangled with your opponent, uh, the house bot will come in and give you a free unstick, quote unquote free. Uh, it's designed to uh, separate these two robots and it doesn't count against your one singular unstick. If they're not able to uh, separate them, then we'll go in with humans. It looks oh, like they're wow. separated. Okay, 25 seconds left. Knockoff White isn't moving at all. Yahoo! Is Yahoo moving? I hear a spinning drum. Okay, I think I hear a count out. I think I do too. Okay. Knockout. All right, now that is a knockout. I think that that uh, winner here is Yahoo. The knockout uh, happening here on Knock Off White. See Adam Wrigley there looking very frustrated. Now look, it looked like after the unstick, Yahoo moved a little and Knock yeah. Off White didn't move at all. Right. So perhaps that is why the KO went on There the may have been Yahoo. some confusion cage side about whether we were going to pause the match and physically unstick these robots. It really, uh, you know, we have to, let's see if we can hear them talking. Let's take a look here at this replay. Yahoo successfully getting under Knockoff White several times. Knockoff White at one point embedding that electric hammer right into the floor, but landing a lot of good hits on the top of Yahoo. Trying to snipe that belt, but unsuccessful. Yahoo exited this uh, match with a fully functional weapon. Now at the very end, it looked like we got two robots stuck into one another and uh, a strange count out there. You can see Adam Wrigley looking uh, pretty unhappy about that, that decision. Now, we've just uh, heard an update on a previous match. Clyde winning that match by split judge's decision. Wow. Now, wait, Clyde was facing off against... Silent X. Silent X. Okay. Now, that means that Silent X now stands at one and one on the play-in matches. They need to win this next fight or else they will be eliminated from the competition. All right. That's a huge win for Clyde. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. It's a big feather in your cap whenever you can score any kind of uh, win against Jameson Go. Even if yeah. it's a split judge's decision, I'm sure that Clyde will take it. All right, let's check out uh, check in upstairs with Lindsay, who has a super chat. Hello, Lindsay. Hello, Luke. I actually have two super chats here Ooh. for you. Good. Um, so, yeah, the first one here, if you can uh, imagine, <laughs> do you want to take a guess what it's about? It's about Chibata. Oh. <laughs> um, so where it says BR, it's actually supposed to be a Brazilian flag. I don't know why oh. it's not showing up. but I thought this was reading like Chibata, brr. Rato, brr. Mando Braza, brr. <laughs> this is from uh, Arthur. He says Chibata, Rato, Mando Braza. Now, I tried to use Google Translate to find out what Mando Braza means, um, but it didn't return anything. So oh. uh, there you have it. Okay. Well, well did you put in the BR? Maybe you... <laughs> <laughs> Burr. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> uh, and then the second one here uh, is from Ryan Liu. Alexa, search for repeat dash robotics. Oh, okay. Do you think I made anyone's Alexa go off? Um, yeah, Alexa, uh, reorder uh, robot parts. <laughs> 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 yeah, there you go. Okay. Thank you for those super chats. Uh, keep sending them in, folks. Thanks so much. Really appreciate the support. Yeah. Um, yeah, really good fight, and uh, I can see that we're loaded here into cage one. We are loading in. Looks like Kablooey Tango. Yeah, I saw a sea of orange walk across. This is their last shot to qualify for the single elimination portion of today's tournament. 
Yeah, this is a desperate moment for both of these uh, builders. We've got Kablooey Tango facing off against Squire. Now, Kablooey Tango here is in orange. This is run by the team that runs Valkyrie on BattleBots. Squire is run by Jordan Neal, who built Dragon Slayer on BattleBots. And uh, Squire is kind of Dragon Slayer inspired. Kablooey Tango looks like it could be version 2.0, 3.0 of Valkyrie. This is a four-wheel drive undercutter with forks. Uh, I can very well see this scaled up. And uh, really, they're testing out a lot of the physics here at the 30-pound level. If you can get a really dialed-in 30-pounder with the physics that you like, it scales up easily to 250 pounds. And she dialed it in with, uh, with hot leaf juice yeah. in the 12-pound class. So this, this is where she feels comfortable. This is, this is her design. Okay, Blue Tango, uh, really it's a collaborative design project, I think, for Team Valkyrie. You can see Alex Kreese there uh, with the transmitter. He is the one driving Kablooey Tango here today, obviously working closely with Lucy Dew on this design. Uh, Alex designs large parts of Valkyrie, and he's been on that team for several years. Now, uh, the rock, paper, scissors here, you know, do you favor the vert or do you favor the uh, super destructive undercutter, Sam? Well. I would imagine this is a different version than the KBT that got exploded earlier. Okay. Um, but Squire had looked like it had some issues as well with a drive side going down. Uh, but I would say it's easier to repair from a drive side failure than a total robot dismemberment. So I'm going to go with the vert on this one. Okay. Yeah, what we saw last uh, in their, their last matches here with Squire was a very fast box rush. That's something that you might want to think about doing here with Kablooey Tango. Can you slow down that undercutter, push it up against the, uh, the wall, perhaps get under that undercutter and start popping the robot in the air? Verts are a little better at the box rush than the horizontals. They don't shift to the side. They don't rotate counter to their weapon rotation when they start up. Uh, so they generally can hit that box rush a bit better. All right, BattleBots builders and captains on both sides of the box here. And uh, this is a do or die moment for two very, very good builders and two very good robots. Winning you're in, lose, and you're going home. Five, four, three, two, one. Fight, robots, fight. Okay, a slow-ish start for Squire. Ooh, good shower of sparks there as they go weapon to weapon. Big hits! And what is that? One of the forks is gone on Kablooey Tango. Not a lot of movement from Kablooey either. That weapon went down? The weapon went down. They're calling oh. for an unstick. I can see Lucy Dew running over to call for an unstick. All right. Looks All like right. they're just Kablooey has some just mangled. burned up its one unstick. Here comes Squire, another big shower of sparks. No spinner on Squire currently. Yeah, Squire's spinner is down. This is Kablooey Tango's fight to lose. Two minutes and 15 left here. Testing that plow here on Squire. Big hit. Now, uh, Squire has nothing to lose here. Lose and you're out, win and you're in. And look at that. Kablooey Tango, stuck, and or is it dead? Either way, they've used their unstick. Whoa! Oh, the minibot! Bring your own, Brett. The clock is still running here. Kablooey Tango very close to getting stuck there and being counted out. I am on the edge of my seat here, Sam. Now Squire is in a position where they cannot move. Have they had an unstick yet, Luke? This is an incredibly destructive match. Squire has not used its unstick yet, but Squire is behind on the points. Now, one of the big challenges is uh, with Kablooey Tango. You know, every single time you go in there to make connection, you are putting yourself at risk. You can get a bad bump, go careening into the wall. Good pin here, though. Yeah, Kablooey grinding away at the back of Squire. If Kablooey can stay alive for the next 65 seconds, we may be seeing it advance to the round of 12. Taking full advantage of a 10-second pin. A pin is nice because, uh, you know, you're racking up points and you're not taking damage. 
I would just run down the clock with like four pins in a row, Sam. I don't know. They're kind of just two robots standing still. Pins aren't my favorite, to be honest. This is still an incredibly destructive match. 30 seconds left here. How much more can they do with Squire? Another good pin. I think that with Kablooey Tango, they're so far ahead on the points that they have probably have this in the bag if they can survive for another 10 seconds here. And it looks like they easily will. Weapon's still going, drive still operating. Another big hit here. Now both robots have escaped the count out. This one will go to the judges, but I think that this is probably a win for Alex Kreese, Lucy no, Dew, I th I think that and Kablooey Tango. Okay. There we go. Spin your way to the door, Jordan. <laughs> See Alex Reese there taking a look at the damage. He lost a fork there in that fight. And um, really just a pretty destructive match there. Let's take a look here at this replay. He went weapon to weapon right there at the start. Squire ripping off one of those forks very early in this fight. The Bluey Tango just stopped for a moment. I think it may have been high centered on something, burning up that one uns uh, unstick very early in this fight. Just in peril for most of this fight, you know? Yeah, it looked like they were having trouble getting high centered because it happened several times. The one time the mini bot had to come in and save them. Fantastic. Yeah. All now. right. So from here on out, folks, any loss for any of these robots that you see is it. That's it. They go home. Right. Yeah. So from here on out, you lose your app. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I mean, this is uh, people were guaranteed up to three play in matches. You could lose your first one, win your second one, and then you'd have to win your third one. You have to win two of your play-in matches to make it into the round of 12. If you lose two of these play-in matches, then you're out. And so the round of 12 is fully single elimination, one yep. loss, and you're done. Correct. And we go all the way till there's only one robot remaining. Yep. Our world champion. Yeah. We're going to be uh, crowning Golden Brett winners here tonight, which is very exciting. So the stakes exciting. are incredibly high for these builders because a lot of them are doing this for charity purposes, right? If you win first place in your weight class, you get to donate $150,000 to the charity of your choice. Second place, $100,000. Third place, $50,000. We're doing that across all three weight classes. That's $900,000 in charity donations that the top three finishers from all three weight classes are going to be able to give to the charities of their choice, STEM charities of their yeah. choice. Um, and that is really compelling for a lot of people here, a lot of whom are college students or recent college grads, people who are connected to STEM education programs, people who have programs that are really close to their hearts, and now they have a way to fund those programs through winning this competition. We're going to go to cage four here, and we've got Vorion facing off against Sombra 30. And in that last fight, Luke, Kablooey Tango took it by unanimous decision. Okay, Lucy Dew and Alex Five, Kreese staying four, alive. Three, two, one. Fight, robots fight. All right, Vorion here run by Brandon Bennett Young facing off against Sombra from Team AGVS. Wow, that was a big, heavy hit. Now it Sombra's looks... drum may look twisted, but it was born that way. Yeah, it's a very cool, like, kind of hurricane design on um, Sombra's egg beater. But it looks like that egg beater is down. Makes a lovely sound when Vorion hits it. Oh, and look at that. Vorion's tipped it again up against the rail. Brandon Bennett Young is an absolute surgeon here in the box. Now, I think Sombra may have burned up its other, its first unstick. Brandon driving to the door. He is ready to unload uh, and go back up into the pits. He's made it into the round of 12. Sombra is right. eliminated. Quick dub for Brandon. Knockout. Unfortunate for Sombra. 
All right, you can see Tomas there, the uh, CEO of AGVS. AGVS is an autonomous vehicle company in Brazil. Let's take a look here at this replay. Now, Vorion is version two of Phenomenon, another very incredibly hard-hitting 30-pounder. And uh, Vorion is filled with all sorts of future technology. This is the best of, uh, <laughs> of Brandon's build skill right now. And uh, taking home that win very quickly against a formidable opponent in Sombra 30. I like that Brandon understands that the meta is what it is. You have to have a significant weapon of some sort to, to kind of damage your opponents, but he, he doesn't leave it at that. Yeah. He always finds a little sort of gimmick to throw in as well, whether it's the lifter or something else completely. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's cool. I, I like his style. I like that he's not full, super refined into the most optimized thing. He's still experimenting. He's still trying to figure out the best way to do this. Yeah. He's built a ton of robots, and he's built them across all different types of uh, weapon types. He's really just a total enthusiast of the sport, just loves it. He's a super fan himself, and he wants to try out a horizontal. He wants to try out a vert. He wants to try out a lifter. He wants, he wants to, to try, try out a, a hammer. A you know? cat tail of some right. sort that flops her whole robot around. But Luke, let's, let's check up with Lindsay and see what's going on up in the pits. Hey, Lindsay. Hello. Uh, so, oh, wow. <laughs> as you can imagine, there are a lot of Fs in the chat right now oh. uh, for Sombra going out at this point. But uh, I have to say, I'm really happy for Brandon. Uh, I know Vorion is his last bot in the 30-pound bracket, so um, it's going to be exciting to see, you know, what he can do from here on out. Uh, I also want to show off this uh, pretty cool hat that I just received. Um, uh, I don't think it does. Will it fit? <laughs> Not over the headphones, I think. Oh wow! Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, Got to zoom out pretty darn far because it is quite the pool noodle <laughs> on top of it. Now, but uh, I think it does match my jacket pretty well. What yeah, it looks think? good for sure. To yeah. the untrained eye, this looks like a uh, blood sport self rider. Is that right? Uh, uh, perhaps, perhaps. I hope in real life uh, it's not a pool noodle, but uh. <laughs> You know, maybe it's one of those I, unconventional materials that you just don't think about. I think that might about. be the actual self-writer. It might have, uh, you know, <laughs> it depends really on the kind of, you, you know, uh, it's it's indicative of their performance oh, no. on BattleBot 7, you know? Uh, <laughs> it is uh, not wanting to stay on, and before I poke someone's entire face off, uh, I'm going to, I'm just going to model it right here. Yeah, wow. <laughs> that is a pretty cool little costume. I, I do like the robot hats that we see. Like, out in the audience, we see, like, little Brett hats and Sparky hats. Uh, you know, I've seen, like, Rusty hats before. Yeah. Like, um, yeah, it's pretty cool. I'd love to There's see There's some it. right there. There we What's go. What's up, Brett heads? Yeah. Yeah, Brett heads right there. There you go. Uh, that's pretty awesome. Yeah. Yeah. It's People, like, cool. dressing up as the mascots, you know? Yeah. Awesome. Uh, who, who built the Bloodsport hat? That's what I want to know. Probably uh, one of them. Alex Curtis, according to Gil. Yeah, these are, these are rhetorical questions, Gil. Yeah. <laughs> Just trying to throw it out there so that the audience answers it. Okay, that's fine. Um, yeah, very cool. Good job, Alex. Absolutely. All right, we're going to go into cage one here. We can see loading in Polyester and Eva. Ooh. Now, Polyester is run by uh, David Jin and um, Christian Cooper from Team Ribot on BattleBots facing off against Eva. Remy de Guzman from Team Shredderbro on BattleBots. Now, uh, Eva is a scaled down version of Shredderbro, the season seven uh, version of the robots. And Polyester is a multi-bot that uh, is a scaled-up version of two very popular and successful Beetleweights that David and Christian have run here at NHRL. Polly is a scaled-up version of Wasp. And um, Esther is a scaled-up version of uh, one of Christian's uh, undercutters. Now, the thing to look for here is the size. I mean, they look like they are uh, full 30-pound robots. You know, here, this multi-bot. Their drivetrains are absolutely full-powered. They are able to very easily shove around a 30-pound opponent, even though these robots are like 18, 19 pounds each. 
Now, interestingly, 18 and 19 pounds each, Luke, that doesn't add up to 30. Yeah. Well, you know, you get a weight bonus for, you know, for multi-bots. Okay. Yeah. Um, now, interestingly, it looks like Eva might be running just a wedge. Is that right? Is Maybe this the a back? lifter version I of Eva? I saw Eva at Motorama this year, and they were drumless. Now, Eva ran with a drum in its first match of the day. This kind of is giving me Wicked Wedge vibes, which is uh, Remy de Guzman's three-pounder. And uh, I'm assuming that's a powered lifter wedge on the front of Eva. I had no idea that uh, he had built this robot to be modular. That must be a new thing uh, from the last time that he brought this, this robot here. Hmm. Okay. Well, let's go and check out uh, the pits here. I can see a poor 3D printer just frantically trying to save some builder's uh, day. Unless that is that they're like printing a Pikachu or something for fun up there. You know, what, what do you think, Sam? They're just uh, probably uh, speed printing benchies, trying to bring down their time, you know? I'm going to say Get just in general, minute. if you're actively 3D printing and your uh, print is pretty low on the bed like that, it's too late, okay? <laughs> You've run out of time, all right? These days, look, they've gotten so fast. They're so fast now. All right. All right it looks like they're ready in cage one. Everyone's in their corners. Five, Still don't see the drum on Eva, four, though. Four, three, two, one. Fight, robots, fight. Okay, a very good fast box rush for this Wicked Wedge Eva here. Interesting choice here to go. Oh, wow. Oh. Now, Eva is on its head, back onto its feet. And what they're trying to do here is uh, come up with a configuration that will allow them to kill at least one of these, these mini-bots, these multi-bots. I'm going to assume they're trying to kill the horizontal first with this big wedge. Wow, this is a good pin here on polyester. And once again, the horizontal is suffering here from polyester. Yeah. Looks like every time it turns, the wheels lift off the ground, making it very difficult to control. Even now taking it. it through poly. A good over-the-shoulder shot here of David Jin driving poly. Wow, I saw a piece go stripping away here. Polyester looks impaired. Both sides of polyester look impaired. Oh, no. Remy de Guzman showing what you can do with a powered lifter. Or should I say I hope that it's a powered lifter? I haven't seen any lifts at all. Yeah. Interesting. If it's just a wedge, that's an illegal <laughs> robot here, you well, know? If you look at it now, the it looks like there might be a micro spinner of some sort exposed on the right what? side. Oh, a micro spinner. Good, I don't know. Sam. Do, Good. There's like a gap in the, the front armor. I don't know if that's damage or if it's exposing something. I think there's a spinner. I heard it. There, you hear that? Oh, Luke? that little grinding sound. Yeah, wow. Lawyer ball, my favorite part of combat robotics, Sam. Look at this. Wow. But just really showing off that Chevy drivetrain on Eva. And there is no questioning. He has absolutely bodied these two formidable opponents yeah. in polyester. Both sides of polyester are damaged. What difference is does a micro spinner make whether uh, if you're still that damaging your opponent? Micro spinner is doing great. You can see that uh, left back wheel is just spinning freely. Oh yeah, getting kind of floppy back there. Now this is where as we enter the last 10 seconds of this match. Oh my God! Did the housebot push off one of the wheels on Eva? What is going on here? We're gonna take this one to the judges. And uh, the judges are going to decide who is advancing to the round of 12. Hey. Okay. Got kind of weird at the end there, but good match overall. Yeah, that strange happened. match. That happened. <laughs> you can hear Remy saying, that happened. That happened. <laughs> okay. I want to 
to get a zoom in shot of that little micro spinner. Pretty uh, interesting. A magnifying glass? Yeah, is that like an ant weight spinner or what, you know? I think it did stuff. A lot of wheels are like looking pretty haggard in the box right now. Looks like they're doing a functionality test right now for all the robots. Right. Maybe that's something that the judges have requested. Yeah. Yeah, in, in cases where the, uh, the match is close, judges can ask for a functionality test. We're going to go over to cage four here. We've Ooh. got Phenomenon facing off against Toro Feather. Phenomenon run by Brandon Bennett Young facing off against Toro Feather. Can Brandon send another Brazilian bot home? That would be pretty incredible. He might be blacklisted from the country if he Five, does that. Four, three, two, one. Fight, robots fight. All right, a good fast start here for Phenomenon. Meeting here in the center of the box. Phenomenon running long forks here. Getting under Toro Feather. Toro Feather, of course, running virtually forkless, probably forkless. Yeah, Brandon. Uh, strong consideration about reach for this tournament and, and really studied his opponents for this one. And Toro Feather looks like it's trying to pick its angle. It would really love to come in and make a good hit here on the back of the robot. And look at that. Phenomenon's forks are gone. Wow. Both. Those forks are gone on the front of Phenomenon. Look for weapon on weapon hits here. Some drive issues as well for Phenomenon. Looks like that left side is only useful for pivoting now. The Toro Feather is not engaging. You've got to ask yourself why. Toro doing this very classic Riobot style of trying to uh, pick their angle and go in for the straight kill here. Circling like a shark. Yeah, they don't really like to do these kind of grinding weapon on weapon hits that are so popular here in the US. They're trying to pick their angle and just land a massive concussive just knockout hit. Hard to do with Phenomenon. Brandon is trying really hard to keep himself squared up with the front of his opponent. Not much else he can do, really. Yeah. But this kind of pivoting in place, it's really, you know, you're losing aggression points, you're losing control points. Big hit there. Sixty seconds left here in this fight, and it looks like the power could be out on Phenomenon. Phenomenon not moving at all. Oh, the self rider is moving on Phenomenon, Sam. The spinner's still tap going out. a little. It's that is a tap out. Toro advancing Phenomenon eliminated here in the playing rounds. It's a big win for that team. Tough loss for Brandon, but he's still got a robot in the tournament, so he'll be all right. Riobots is eager to keep the uh, Toro uh, line of robots alive here in the competition. Toro, one of their longest running robot series down there, and they are very, very proud of that robot. All right, let's take a look here at this replay. Now, uh, as Toro kind of circled its prey and uh, tried to pick its angles, uh, Phenomenon really just pivoting in place, trying to stay squared up, losing that big weapon-on-weapon -weapon exchange right there at the end. Good little celebration there, cage side from Team Riobots from Brazil. Okay, we just heard from Control that we have two judges' decision updates. Hello, Max. Uh, let's hear them. Okay, we just heard Kablooey Tango will advance with a unanimous judges' decision over Squire and. Oh, okay, we're gonna see the graphic. Oh, a unanimous judge's decision for Eva defeating Polly Esther. No surprise there. That uh, was a pretty dominant match. Yeah. Okay. Kablooey Tango and Eva remaining alive, entering the round of 12, and uh, Polly Esther uh, going home uh, and Squire going home. Well, 
Uh, polyester had a great season overall. Yeah. It was, it was awesome to see them here so frequently. And um, it was cool to see Squire come up for the first time. Uh, I know it was quite a hike for them. Uh, and they've they've been responsible for some of the biggest vert hits we've seen in that cage. And so it, it was it's unfortunate that they're out. But there's just so many bangers here today that yeah. what are you going to do? Like they're someone's got to go. Yeah, that's true. There's no empty spots at all in the bracket um, at, at any corner of the bracket. Jordan Neal also famously uh, showed up in the full kind of knight's outfit, the suit of armor. Yeah, commit to, to the see, bit. Yeah, I hope to see the suit of armor again in 2024. That was pretty great. Um, but yeah, good, good season for both of these robots. Absolutely. Um, and Looks like some sweeping going down in both the big cages, making sure that they are pristine for the upcoming fights. Let's uh, check in here first with Lindsay. Hello, yeah. Lindsay. Hi, Hi. Lindsay. Uh, hello, Sam. Nice to see you back. Um, I have two super chats for you. Good. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, not all of them are about Chibata this time, just one. Uh, the first is from Chris Weiss. More fire. Go Clyde. Team Sus getting ready for 2024 with Harold, Timber, and a new bot. Ooh, I'm very excited to see what they are going to bring. I know uh, Lydia and uh, her brother with Harold and Timber, they have competed at so many events this year. Uh, so looking forward to see what they are bringing for 2024. Yeah, I'm a big fan of the Weiss family yeah. and can't wait to see what they bring. I love seeing them here every single time. Um, all right, so the next Super Chat, lo and behold, uh, from Wagner Braga, Chibata will be the champion. Rato is Brazil in the NHRL, uh, in NHRL's uh, Manda Braza. Hashtag, hashtag Rato Borchado, hashtag Brazil. I have since learned that Manda Braza is Rato's father. Oh. Um, it's his nickname, and oh. he uh, helped uh, create uh, Chibata alongside Rato, and so it's really wonderful to be able to see both Rato and his dad here competing together for the first time in America. Uh, so welcome, Manda Brazo. Uh, we're so excited to have you here. I love to see supportive dads. That's yeah. really cool. I, uh, I watched it happen on YouTube. I subscribed to, to Rato's channel, and it was really cool to just watch him working with his dad, and they were arguing about something and welding in sandals, and it was, ju it was just really cool. Nice. Speaking of right. cool. Let's uh, check out a live shot here of the crowd. Hello, crowd. Wow. Oh, my God. The stands are absolutely filled, and somewhere in the stands is lurking a... Fuzzy, sparky mascot that uh, will no doubt haunt my dreams tonight. Look, everybody, give yourselves a round of applause. Yeah. You're awesome. Thank you so much for supporting NHRL here at the finals and for the rest of the season. Um, we do this for you. Um, we just love to see so many fans out here in the stands. Thank you so, so much. We got some bots loading into cage one now. I saw some pool noodles coming off, so you know that there's a long fork of some sort in there that needed covering. All uh, right, now we've got the Colorado contingent facing off against the Las Vegas contingent, technically. Minor Threat 5 is from the Midwest, but uh, the builder fights uh, with Jeff Waters on jackpot. Facing off against Nightcrawler and Pete Covert here. Pete is running the orange egg beater here in the blue corner. And Minor Threat 5 running uh, the vert here in pink with a cam lifter. I see David Small there as well. Pretty cool robot Nightcrawler. It's got such a compact drive system. It's overall just so compact. It's yeah, probably smaller the, uh, than some three-pounders, honestly. The Colorado contingent is in love with egg beaters, and uh, you can see that on display here with Nightcrawler. They're really like big champions of egg beaters, early champions of the egg beaters here in the U.S., Five, and um, four, they're really three, dialing in that, uh, two, that weapon type. One, fight, robots, fight. Okay, good little start here for Minor Threat 5. Ooh, oh, kicking a Minor wow. Threat 5 up against the glass. 
Oh, love that sound. Big shower of sparks. Minor Threat 5 is just uh, stuck up against the rail, and it looks like the power could be out. That wow. brings joy, uh, Sam, <laughs> yes. to see... <laughs> To see Supreme Ruler flying through the air, I don't know why, but it's bringing me joy. Pete, do it again, please. Here we go. I don't know. It looks like Minor Threat 5 needs some sort of an unstick, or they are DOA. Yeah, the power is out on Minor Threat 5. Pete is now going after uh, this cam lifter here. Tap out. Wow. Oh, a smoky tap out from Minor Threat 5. Luke Grell going home early. The season is done for Minor Threat 5. Pete Covert staying alive and will advance to the round of 12. That's awesome. Pete's been at it for a while. Minor Threat is a staple, though, in the 12 pound class, so it's tough to see them go. It's one of the most dominant 12 pounders. Now, there are robots that uh, were fighting before NHRL opened up their big boxes. Minor Threat 5 is one of those robots. You would see it at Motorama, you'd see it elsewhere. And uh, it is cool that the robot remains alive here in 2023 and did really well this season advancing to the finals. It's a really scary, powerful robot. And, um, you know, just uh, met an even scarier and more powerful opponent here in Nightcrawler. Now that big first concussive hit and really just Minor Threat 5 did not look right afterward. And uh, that second hit and that was it. The power was out. I think that robot uh, is it's unplugged in some so way. so much force going into those robots from those hits. Okay. Incredible. Going over to cage four, we've got Yoshimi facing off against Swagmore. Now Sam, did you, were you with us last night when we saw the really cool stuff that's happening inside of Yoshimi? I didn't see it last night, but I have heard about Five, it today, and four, I'm super impressed. Three, it is two, awesome. One, fight, robots, fight. Now, Yoshimi builder uh, Joey Gannon here running this orange horizontal has a really interesting control board inside of the robot. He's running six sensors that tie into a control board, and uh, if his uh, if his horizontal starts to drift in any way because that weapon is uh, pulling it in one direction, the control board will automatically correct it. Tap out. We got a tap out fire. here from Joey. <laughs> the control bot. Uh, the control board's on fire here, Sam. <laughs> what do the sensors say though? Yeah, the sensors are like it's hot. It's hot in here. Joey Gannon, really, really cool builder. This is the last fight of the season for him and for Yoshimi. He's one of my favorite builders upstairs in the pits. If you get a chance, talk to him. He is really, really cool. And this computer technology that he's put into Yoshimi, I think, could be a game changer in combat robotics in the near future. Yeah, you got to find that edge any way you can and in the way that's best suited to your skill set. So some folks try and do it in machining, some people try and do it in design, and other folks are, are more into the electrical engineering side or the developing control schemes, working with the transmitter systems to make their robot do exactly what they want it to when they want it to. Now, Joey is an engineer who works at a uh, self-driving taxi startup, so putting, uh, you know, these autonomous systems, these sensor-based systems into a control board is second nature for him. But you can see that, uh, that little barbecue that happened right inside of the robot. And, uh, oh, yep, tapping out. We're gonna have to uh, put that robot uh, into our little sand bucket here. Yeah, it can play a mirror for it a outside. bit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I, I do think that we are standing on the cusp of a major shift in the sport. We can see this with Jim Kazmer building so, like putting so much time and effort into AI inside of his robots, his melty brains. And here with Yoshimi trying to use uh, gyroscopes and um, other sensors yeah. so that you can fight gyroscopic force um, inside of the box. I, I kind of liken it to the difference between power steering in modern cars and just kind of totally manual steering from the past. That's a, a great analogy, because we're not quite too self-driving cars yet, Correct. but we're on the path. 
Right. And there there could be a scenario in a year from now where half of the field or more is running control boards that are able to fight its gyroscopic forces by spinning up one of the wheels a little bit faster so it kind of straightens you out. Yeah. Um, it's going to be a, an interesting shift in the sport if it happens because you're going to be seeing a lot more precise driving inside of the box. Right now, it's kind of like a mix of art and science. And the art is like, hey, yes, I do know I gyro a lot, but then I just kind of oversteer yeah, and some, I like go into the gyro. Some people are gyro artists, though, and they can right. maneuver their robot in such an amazing way. They can self-right, they can dodge. The gyro can be an advantage. Like, just knowing your robot, I think, is more important than any sort of sensor system or anything like that. If you know how your robot is supposed to drive when the weapon is at a certain speed, then you know if something's wrong when it's not doing that. You know what sort of traction you need before you break your wheel traction. It's, it's just the knowing the robot. The thing that I robot. love about this, Sam, is that this is exactly what people said before power steering. OK? OK. Here's the other <laughs> thing, though. OK, 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 wait. We got to go and check in first okay. with Lindsay. She's got another super chat. Hello, Lindsay. Hello. Uh, all right. So I, uh, Luke, am here with the Colorado Combat Robot Bot Contingency. I'm going to change their name every single time. Uh, <laughs> but we are here with Pete and with Chad. Uh, you may also remember other Colorado builders like um, Jonathan Clark with Bobby and Billy and also, of course, Luke Quintal with uh, Rumham and uh, Kitten Mittens, all the other uh, It's Always Sunny bots. Um, but today we just have Pete and Chad, they're the ones who qualified. And uh, they have both made it with a two and one fight record today into the uh, elimination bracket. So Pete, you just went up against Minor Threat 5. You knocked him out. How, that fight was so fast. What happened? Oh, I'm having a little Max down here. What do you want to say, Max? Um, love you, Lindsay. Yeah. All right. Uh, Pete, what, what, what happened? That fight was so fast. Well, uh, first of all, I, I got upstaged by Max there, which is awesome. <laughs> uh, that's pretty cool. Um, you know, we, uh, Luke and I fought once before in Motorama last year. He ended up in first place. I ended up in second place. But my motor, my weapon wasn't running then. So I was really excited coming into this to, like, prove that I could actually beat him. And it, first big hit, he went flying, got stuck in the spot. I also fired some Supreme Ruler. Jeff spot. I got hung up. I got a good punch on him to do the, the good work. My teammate, so it went well. That's the kind of fight I like to have. Yeah, I feel like this is the best uh, Nightcrawler has probably looked all year. Uh, okay, got a little bit of technical problems up there. Uh, either that or someone's doing like a remix upstairs. What do you think? Uh, I hope it's a remix. Yeah. <laughs> There you go. And not a problem that needs solving. Yeah, no, um, we're, the, we're, we're running robots up there, you know? They're yeah, talking yeah. in robots, yeah. Just there influencing that, the people, everything like that. Um, but yeah, we, uh, we hope to get those fixed, but uh, thanks for sticking with us. Okay, self-driving robots, though, Luke. <laughs> it's fun to drive your toy that you built, okay? That's the, the biggest this is This is, this is we're straying into, like, get-off-my-lawn uh, territory here. <sighs> this is great. Um, I do see that we've locked and loaded cage one here. Uh, let's... Ooh. Uh, but first, let's take a look at what happens when a bot catches fire... Let's see the, uh, the kind of process here. Yeah. There we go. We've seen this a few times in past events. There's Jim in the spacesuit with the CO2 fire extinguisher. First, you want to just smother that flame with CO2. I think then you, uh, you pose, right, for photos when you're wearing the spaceman suit. Is that right? Yep. Yep. You pose for the photos. You grab yep. your crowbar and your welding gloves. Yeah. You point at stuff and, and uh, talk to <laughs> other referees. Yeah, you tell the referees, okay, get ready of that big sand bucket here. It's, it looks like a big gonk droid, you know? And uh, you throw it into the gonk droid. Thumbs up, bucket ready. All right. Here we go. Blasting it here with the CO2. Gonna go in with the crowbar. Pull that robot to the door. Meanwhile, the builder is just looking on horrified, Sam. <laughs> My just throw it right into the sand. Okay, I'm sure oh. that's great for all of your components. I think sand is worse than glitter. Yeah, there you go. Now we... Team effort. We are, uh, we are trying to get this uh, big gonk droid out, 
and uh, down the loading ramp so that it can uh, sit outside for a little bit. It's like a little bit of a timeout, Sam, yeah. just in case it flames, uh, flames out again. Cool down out there. Okay, we're gonna go into cage one here. We've got Cthulhu facing off against Disco. Five. Ooh, this is four, a classic horizontal three, versus vertical two, spinner match. One. Fight. Robots fight. Now, earlier in the year, we saw the Coakley brothers facing off against the Durfler brothers in the semifinals. And uh, in those fights, the Coakleys came out on top with Cthulhu and Super Scope. Here, Cthulhu's weapon looks like it could be down. Disco is pursuing. Wow, a good pop in the air on uh, on Cthulhu, which finds itself up against the rail. And look at this, the Durflers don't need a uh, don't need the house bots help at all. They're coming in to kill Cthulhu on their own. Just pursuing Cthulhu around the cage. Big hits in the air, just these big end over end uh, arcing hits here. And Disco just wow, so again. stable. And Cthulhu is beginning to smoke out, it looks like. Wow. Oh no, it was cleaning the dust off of the <laughs> yeah. top of the rail there. Just helping us out. I could not believe that Cthulhu's weapon came back. Two minutes left here in this fight, incredibly destructive. Disco searching for that angle. The weapon on Cthulhu is still running great. Big weapon on weapon hits. And Disco is absolutely bodying around Cthulhu. Finding that angle, slowing down this weapon. The Durflers are saying we made a mistake first earlier in the year against Super Scope and Cthulhu. We're not gonna make the same mistake again. 90 seconds left, 80 seconds left here in this fight. Both weapons still going. Almost all minibots still working. Wow, and Cthulhu is hobbled. It is moving very slowly. Big weapon on weapon hit there. 60 seconds left. Still anyone's game for just a little bit longer. Cthulhu could get the one strike they need. Disco not looking to have that happen. Keeping that wedge facing Cthulhu. Another huge hit. Cthulhu might be up against the rail. Disco's definitely up against the rail. Here comes the house spot to save with 35 seconds left. Wow, this would be a heartbreaking ending for Disco if it cannot get off the rail. Cthulhu also stuck up against the rail. Wow, calling for the unstick. Knockout. This is a knockout. Both of these robots were stuck at the same time, and the house bot went in to save Disco. Now, I wonder if this was a case of Disco touching the uh, unstick button first? But I'm purely speculating here. The Coakleys do not look happy. There's only one house spot, and if you get stuck simultaneously, I wonder if it is uh, up to who hits the unstick button first. Generally, there's not a count out while an unstick is occurring, though. So I'm I'm a little I'm a little confused, Luke. All right, now in this replay, we can see these massive concussive hits. Sam, that's a good point. Usually, they're not counting during an unstick. This may be a referee error. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna stick around and see what happens over here. We got some cameras up in their business. Let's see what happens. Okay. We got henchman Rob down here. Yeah, henchman Rob is uh, one of the big arbiters of uh, of the rules here. Now, if we see Mike Jeffries come down, that's when you know it's serious. See the Coca's coming over here to talk to the Durflers. Now I'm sure there are no hard feelings between either of these competitors. And we're just trying to figure out what happened. Now in this case, I guess I suppose it's possible that they just send it to the judges and allow the judges to um, to work it out. 
Now, as we wait, as we negotiate cage side, let's check in here with Lindsay. Hi, Lindsay. All right, I am here with Alex Kreese from Kablooey Tango. Alex, by the way, happy belated birthday. I know your birthday was yesterday. Um, so in its second fight, Kablooey Tango had one of the most uh, graphic dismantlings I've ever seen. And then you came back and won your third fight. So what did you have to do to get it ready to compete again and qualify for the single animation bracket? Yeah, so um, if you look over here, uh, this is the robot that we used to fight STF with, and this is the robot that we fought Squire with. Uh, usually Kablooey Tango doesn't really take a lot of damage in fights. It's because, of, because we have this unique strategy of uh, strong drive control and forks that allow us to get under people really well, but against a horizontal spinner as hard hitting as STF, our frame just couldn't take it. So they disassembled, disassembled the robot for us. So we had a spare robot ready, thankfully, that was ready to go. It's the one we ran against Synthesis. Uh, we had a team working on that while we were prepping for STF to just make sure this robot's ready. And so now we're just trying to take apart our STF frame and figure out what we can actually salvage and use as we enter the round of 12. Um, because we want to make sure that we're ready to uh, fight anyone that comes our way and that we have the spares to keep moving. And we're, so we're trying to salvage as much as we can, but at least we have one robot that we can continue to fight with that didn't take any damage in the fight against, um, against Squire. So much of this game is a war of attrition and making sure you have the parts because they're going to get wrecked, they're going to get destroyed so uh, it's good to see that you have a plan I can actually show you this box over here is our box of forks um, we got way more than we needed Sun cut send doubled our order for us so we're very thankful for that so we have lots of spare parts but we only brought like two and a half frames so we're trying to make sure that we have uh, another frame ready to go as we enter the round of 12. All right, I love it. Alex, I see your parents here. They are obviously so proud of you. They're taking photos every second. Uh, we love to see parents supporting you know, this, this hobby. It's amazing. Uh, I wish you luck and the rest of the team, you and Lucy. Um, so thanks for that. And uh, man, get back to it, because I know you got stuff to do. Yeah, thank you so much. Thanks. OK, very cool to see. Yeah. Kablooey Tango is doing great. It's our number two ranked robot in the 30s, and you can see why. It is a very talented team. Now, uh, I've heard that uh, the controversy, I don't know, the uh, discussion is ongoing here on Cage 1, and it looks like we may be escalating uh, the decision here up to the judges. Um, we will update you as soon as we hear uh, the result here in that match. Check in here on Cage 4. All right, looks like we have Torrent in the pink square and Hooligan Five, in the blue. Four, this is a 12-pound match. Two, one, fight, robots fight. Torrent with Crash Fest at its side. Torrent is running this red and white robot. Hooligan is this bright green uh, robot here from Florida. Now, one of the cool things to see with Hooligan is that this is a Brazilian-inspired robot. It's running tangential drive. It is running this big, soft um, armor skirt around it. And um, it is being bodied right now by Torrent and Donald Sung. Yeah, Torrent, long and narrow, kind of like a boat. Just able to really focus those attacks anywhere on Hooligan it wants. But it sounds very quiet in the box, and it looks like two weapons have gone down. Now, with two minutes and 15 seconds, this is uh, where we kind of enter our David Attenborough phase, you know, of commentary. And uh, I just kind of watch this wonderful dance. Beautiful, really. Yeah, robots in their natural habitat. Do you think that dancing would be as sweet if there wasn't a human involved? If it was That's just self-driving? Yes, yeah, it's like a subroutine, you know? Okay. Just enter, dance, you know? Yeah, it's perfect. Um, yeah, wow, okay, you can see like little bits of wood in the box from a big hit from the rail. Cool angle. Yeah, I got this really cool angle. My favorite is when you see a roofing and just the robot gets really big as it gets yeah. toward the screen, you know? 
If, uh, if there is a roofing that happens in this match, I would just be absolutely delighted. I don't think it's going to happen. Yeah, Crash I, Fest, though, <laughs> spinning here in, in just the center of the box, like a non-factor here in this fight. Oh, look at that. Torrent landing a good pin. Torrent, see if you can get those forks <laughs> under the rail. What an epic pin, Luke. There we go. Yeah, yeah, get the forks under the rail, Torrent. All right, here we go. All right, not much moving out of Hooligan. This might be it for them. They got their one unstick from Flo over there. Oh, they got their second unstick from Flo there. Here you go. Let's see if we can get a third unstick. Maybe it's just in Flo's no, spot. No, I was joking. Flo's just trying to move it out of its spot. I know that like an unstick is kind of a continuous unstick, but uh, yeah, Hooligan is dead. This is a uh, former robot. This robot is no more. It's passed away. And that is a knockout. Your winner is Donald Sung and Torrent advancing to the round knockout. of 12. And unfortunately, back to Florida for the hooligan team. Yeah, I'm trying to think. Oh, we also have Ratfish. That's another Floridian team okay. here, here today. Um, but yeah, Jack Spotnik, really great engineering student from the University of Florida, building a very cool redesigned version of Hooligan. Cannot wait to see his performance in 2024. He brings really great robots to this competition and love to see the Florida Bot Mafia here at, uh, at NHRL. Absolutely, here's a few of the, well, there was only a few hits in that fight and here they were. Okay. All right, very good, very good, Sam. Yeah, I see some, uh, the robots are still, is that Cthulhu is still in cage Cthulhu one? Cthulhu is still in cage, uh, cage one. The box is still locked. The builders are both, both the dis, or excuse me, yeah, the Cthulhu team and the Dorflers. It's actually Durfler. Durfler, excuse me. Durflers, yeah. I was saying Dorfler for like four years. Yeah, that's probably where I heard it. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, together they're the Dorfly. But they're actually the Durfly, okay? I, uh, I learned this last night that I've been saying their family's last name incorrectly for, I don't know, 15 competitions in a row. It's the Durflers. It's well, the Durflers. Now that that's out there, yeah. no one will ever get it wrong ever again, probably. Yeah, there you go. Uh, the Durflers, the Durfly. Um, yeah, you know, I just, I, I feel like, um, you know, like, uh, they're just so polite that they're just like, you know, I feel like we've built up enough rapport that I can just tell you've been horrifically wrong for the last yeah. four years, you know? I'm glad like we've did. had them on, on our podcast before. We were calling them Dorflers the entire time. It's awful. Why did they take so long to correct you? Though? Well, okay, listen. In my defense, it's spelled D-O-E-R. You know, like, how do you know you've got a dur in there? That's true, but door is D-O-O-R. Have you ever seen a Dorfler with D-O-O-R? No. Oh, oh, I see. The pronunciation oh, just like of you, door. You walk through yeah. a door. Yeah, like Dorfler versus... Anyways. Dur. Um... Some I mean, there are people who say, uh, yeah, open up the dur, okay? You know, I don't know. I suppose that's a thing, right? I guess so, yeah. Yeah, anyway, just want to apologize to any durflers that are on the stream. Yeah, I've uh, been uh, saying it wrong this entire time. It's awful. So, Luke, yeah. we put a bunch of new cameras in these cages. Okay. And I think it looks beautiful. Some of the shots that we've been seeing today yeah, have very been really cool. nice, super crispy. Kind of like 4K, is that right? I think that is an option for them. I'm not sure exactly what they're running in now, but... Uh, great sensors or something on them. Yeah, very uh, cool. Yeah. Pretty All right, neat. now we've been, uh, we've been waiting to hear an update on the controversy from Cage One. Lindsay has more. Hello, Lindsay. Hi, Luke. I'm here with Mike Jeffries, senior NHRL official, with uh, some news. So, first of all, Mike, what happened that, uh, that you know, at, at that cage between Disco and uh, Cthulhu? So, there's two things that happened during that fight. Earlier on in the fight, Cthulhu got high centered and started miming like they were going for their unstick call. But they didn't actually push the unstick button or call for an unstick. The referee interpreted that as them calling for their unstick, registered it in the system, and tried to begin the unstick, but they got it freed up at that point. Later in the fight, there was a hit between Disco and Cthulhu where both robots ended up stuck. D Disco hit their unstick button, so the Brett driver went and tried to do that unstick. And Cthulhu was getting counted out because they believed that they'd already used their unstick. However, because the Cthulhu team never actually called for an unstick, 
we've decided to put it to the judge's decision. All right, and uh, so the judges have deliberated, and have they reached a final decision? I have not heard the results yet, but the judges are deciding as we speak, and we should have a decision fairly soon. All right, Mike, thank you so much for that update. We will uh, keep you updated on the judge's decision as that comes in. Uh, but thanks for the work that you do and, uh, you know, for the referees who are taking this so seriously. Thank you. That is a good call there. You know, um, you want to get it right, you know, at any competition and particularly here in the finals when so much is on the line. Uh, one, of the, one of the things that happens here at... Oh, here, let's take a look at this replay. Now, uh, this is uh, here Cthulhu here in black and uh, facing off against Disco here in red. I know. I'm interested in seeing this feigning the button, the uh, unstick button press technique. Yeah. That's something I've never heard of before. And uh, it reminds me of a, a Magic the okay, Gathering trick. Walking over to the button. Oh, no, no, no. This is the very end of the okay. match. Yeah. I can read lips. He said unstick. Yeah. Joe Joe Durfler here hitting the unstick button. I'm trying to say the last name as much as I can so it sticks. Oh, yeah. I things, already yeah. forgot. I unsticked it from my brain. <laughs> Um, I will tell you one of the quirks, well, not a quirk, I actually think it, it's, it's a really effective rule here. Uh, you have to ask for the unstick by pressing a button. And once that happens, it doesn't matter if the unstick happens or not. You can free yourself, but as, as soon as you hit that button, you're burning up your unstick yeah. attempt. It doesn't have to be a successful unstick Five, for you to burn up four, that. It's just the three, attempt. Yes. All right, two, in cage four, one, we've got Buzz five, kill in the pink five. corner and Prom Header coming out of the blue corner. In the 12 pound weight class. Prom Hedda, the nasty vert there, you can hear. Ooh, a big hit. Prom Hedda going back into the rail. Buzzkill showing no fear, taking their spinner right into the face of Prom Hedda. Again! Yeah, Buzzkill is an undercutter. Prom Hedda is a disc spinner. It's a vert. And Buzzkill, this is exactly the position they want to put Promheta in, eating away at the top of that robot. And they aren't just letting Promheta run away in self-right, they're pursuing. Promheta with the self-right on Brett's face. And that's right, tap a out. tap out from Zach and Promheta. All right, that is a tap out for Zach. This is the last match of the year for Promheta. Promheta, a, uh, a mainstay here in this competition. I am sure that we will see him again in 2024. Yeah, Zach okay. is a grinder. He's been to so many of these things. He'll All be right. back. Now I've heard an update. We have the judges' decision from that cage one match. Neil, tell me. A unanimous oh. judge's decision for the Durfler brothers and Disco. I think this is the right call. Cthulhu has been eliminated. Last match of the year for Cthulhu. Uh, Disco was really dominating they that were. match and really uh, just sending uh, Cthulhu all over the box. Really um, being aggressive when they didn't have to, when they were so far ahead on the points. And... Um, this weirdness right at the end um, with the, is it an unstick or not? Um, really just kind of uh, putting a big question mark on the whole thing, but I think the judges made the right call. I think so too, and I think whenever something like that happens, a mistake was made perhaps, sending it to the judges makes sense, and, uh, and that was the right call, and the judges made the right call, so I, th I think this one resolved pretty well. Yeah. This is one of the beauties, too, of watching Combat Robotics live. Uh, you know, if we were watching a different show or something that was a little bit slower, uh, they can edit that out, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but uh, but no, I mean, you got to, to see the entire process and our thinking behind uh, sending it to the judges. Exactly. All right, Luke, so we're going to head back to Cage 1, where we've got another Honey Shocked, or excuse me, a Team Honey Cracked robot with Honey Shock in the blue corner. And all the way from California, is full court going to be taken in the pink corner? Okay, we've got this long Smee inspired robot here from uh, Coleman, Christie, and Full Court. Flying in here today from Southern California, and our compact Vert here from Maryland and Team Honeycraft. This team, I've been so impressed with their glow up. They received a STEM grant last year at championships. 
and used it to buy an arena. So they, they have a full-size arena at their facility where they've been practicing, and it shows. It really shows. And we can see Coleman Christie here with this very long, weird robot that technically, they assure me, has an active weapon. And uh, running Thunder Child in, uh, by Nate Franklin here in that, uh, in that pink corner. Nate Franklin, an incredibly dominant Beetleweight driver here on the East Coast. And um, he has had great success with Thunder Child. This is a legacy design that he's been running for many, many years here on the East Coast. Now, Sam, does that look like an active weapon to you? They've got I think, little okay. powered forks. It's I, almost I like a self-riding mechanism is a weapon now, I guess, technically. No, it's a weapon, Luke. You can tell because <laughs> they move up and down. Okay? Just like a self-riding mechanism. Yes, but if... Okay, so they're back. They're up. Uh-huh. The wedge goes under another okay, robot. Yeah. Then they come forward. Now you're clamping them. That's a weapon. A clamp? If that thing was able to clamp a single robot, I'm going to eat my shoe live on the air right now, okay? Did you hear that, Coleman? That is not a clamper. You got to clamp them with the self-rider, please. Clamp, clamp, yeah, with your self-rider, okay? Self-rider, yeah. It's a, it's... I'll tell you what an active weapon should be, okay? Like, if I'm afraid to stand there in the box while that thing comes at me, then that's an active weapon, okay? Are you, would you be scared of like a four bar lifter on a three pound robot? Yeah, Five, absolutely. Because it could pinch you? Yeah. Three, that, that thing can two, pinch? That's not a four one, bar lifter, five, that's a one bar robots, lifter. Five. Okay, all right, here we go. Good fast Chevy start here for full court and pinning their opponent up against the rail. This is what they're is that designed a clamp? to Are do. They clamping? It's not a clamp. Look at the, the fingers come forward. I will eat a full size, size 12 vans on the air if that's a clamper, all right? Two minutes and 40 seconds here. Look at this, Honey Shock bodying full court. Now Honey Shock successfully getting under those long forks on the front of the robots. And look, here's another good pin full court doing what it was designed to do, pin its opponents. Wow, look at those. Oh, they're striking fear in my heart, Sam. My God, look at them. They're just little hands that can just wave at you, they were Sam. Just expecting wider opponents, I think. Then the clamp would definitely be coming into play. Wow, okay. Now, Honey Shock seems to have high centered itself. And that is technically, is that a pin on full court or is that a pin on Honey Shock? I think that's full court doing the high centering. Wow. Oh, oh, oh. look, it's a clamp. It is a Let's clamp. See what can they you can drive do. around like that? Can they lift? Is it a clamper if it doesn't lift? Wow. Oh, so much damage, Sam. Oh, my God. Jeez, the back panel on this robot is just looking caved in. Wow. Okay, finally, Honey Shock landing a pin on full court, getting around to the back. But it looks like the weapon may be going down on Honey Shock. 75 seconds left here in this fight. Yeah, it looks like the weapon is down on Honey Shock. Somehow, full court has scored damage points in this fight. Oh, wait. oh no, 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 it's still going. Oh my oh, God, yeah. it's just so efficient. I couldn't even hear it. That's great. Honey Shock's weapon is still going. And so is full court. Yeah, those little fingers. Yeah, they're wagging at me. I feel like, uh, I don't know, someone's like shushing <laughs> me or something you. inside of a college library or something. 40 seconds left here. Ooh, is this an unstick for Honey Shock? Oh, no! There's some not happy noises coming from Honey Shock. Those long forks have gotten stuck under the rail. 30 seconds. Oh, no. Oh, the house bot has just shoved Honey Shock more into the corner. This could be a knockout here. Trying to desperately wiggle themselves loose. And the house bot is not helping. Can wow. It? This is a tough position for these big clunky house bots. Okay, now this unstick attempt can last for 20 seconds and it looks like perhaps Honey Shock has survived this and taken it to the judges. 
It's not a knockout. I think that this will be a judge's decision. Yep. Luke. Yes, Sam. If full court had cam lifters, would you like it more? Yeah, of course. The cam lifter is a better, uh, better, better weapon than a self riding mechanism. All right. We're okay, you around. know how like there's all sorts of rules around like okay if you have a lifter you should be able to lift your opponent right like that you can't just have a tiny little like toothpick or something and yeah. call it a lifter right what what is the function of that weapon there Sam can it lift anything is it a lifter I don't know is it a clamper is it a grabber it's so set out on the sides that when it's I haven't seen a robot be in a position to be lifted yet. I feel like we could just ask. Yeah, let's go ask Colbin. Yeah, Colbin, defend your robots, all right? <laughs> Tell me why that's an active weapon. Here's the thing, okay, when you show up, like oftentimes people like redesign their robots in between competitions. It's really up to safety to like, you know, disqualify robots and say like, look, this is, yeah. this is a sacrificial little wagger. You know what I mean? Like this is a wagging stick. This is not a real weapon, you know? All right, Luke. Well, speaking of real weapons, let's go to cage two. This is there a real weapon, okay? Weapons. We've got Droopy. And we've got Five, Beetlejuice. Four, three, Beetlejuice two, coming with a mini bot out five, of the pink corner. Robots in fight. black droopy. Well, it's got a butt. Now this is the full five pound version of Droopy. Beetlejuice from Ariel here. Uh, it's just one of our top horizontals. is an unkillable uh, horizontal. Ariel perfectly playing that, pushing Droopy back into the rail. Looks like the minibot is already down. Oh, never mind, never mind. Now this is an interesting strategy with the minibot. Is it thin enough to get under Droopy and those blades? I think Droopy might have started upside down, maybe for that reason. Smart, yeah. Two minutes left here in this fight. Juby is just a just a death machine. Every single time you get even close to that robot, you know you're gonna get smacked by one of those horizontals. The weapon on Beetlejuice is down. Ooh. Oh, wow. We're linked in. Looks like they may be tangled here. And now a beautiful dance. Now, when two robots are stuck like this, they're uh, oftentimes... Oh, wow, what is that? It sounds hammer. like someone's trying to jackhammer the, uh, the sidewalk outside. The housebot will come in to try and unstick these two robots. If that doesn't work, they'll send in humans to do it. Oh, there we go. Good job, housebots. Droopy's still going strong. Those weapons are totally bulletproof on Droopy. Drive still strong on Beetlejuice. Their best option now is to just ram into Droopy as much as they can. It's hard for horizontal spinners to kind of control their opponents, so really just put in the metal part of your robot into the spinning part of your opponent. 60 seconds left here in this fight. And really here, you know, I feel like you kind of see a little bit of like old versus new in terms of horizontals, you know? The bane of every horizontal's existence is these long um, belts that can very easily get clipped. You can clip your own belts, you know, if you yeah. flex your weapon hard enough. Droopy doesn't have belts. It is running hub motors inside of that, of that body of the, the robot, so those motors are totally protected. Every single time that your opponent comes and makes contact, you're hitting weapon instead of the body. And, uh, you know, like, he has really battle-hardened those motors and really um, just kind of safely padded them inside of that robot so that uh, his weapon motors don't die in these huge hits. Now, these robots have both escaped the count out. They've entered the last 10 seconds of this match. This one will go to the judges, but I think the winner is Tommy Wong and Droopy. I would say so as well, but props to Beetlejuice for lasting in the cage with that five-pound robot for so long. All right, it's very good. Okay, now right. uh, we've got an update here. We've got a judge's decision from a previous match. Neil, tell me, 
Schwartz, a split judge's decision in favor of full court. Wow. Honey Shocked has been eliminated full court, showing a lot of aggression and control in that match. Yeah. Okay, good. Um, okay, Honey Shock, done for the season, and Coleman Christie staying alive, entering the round of 12. Excellent. Okay. Now, we've got a three-pound match in cage three, potentially Blackbird's final fight ever here with Tony D'Ambrosio. Potentially, uh, probably not. You know, I, I've got a lot of faith here in Tony. Maybe it's his last fight driving it? Yes. Uh, what Tony has said is that he's going to be gifting Blackbird, the uh, robot and all of the parts, to Arya, his daughter, who has just been doing great with her own uh, ant weight, Dreamy. Dreamy is a miniature Blackbird, and Arya is ready to go up into the Beatles. If we see Blackbird again, it's probably going to be painted white, maybe have a rainbow on it, right? It could be called Big Dreamy, something yeah. like that. Um, and, you know, we're really seeing... And this is a send-off for Blackbird as this concept, kind of the aesthetics of it. Um, when Arya decides to pick up this design, if she decides to pick up this design, uh, we'll probably see a slightly different uh, look and feel for the robot. Luke, this match is a parent and their child versus a parent and their child. Yeah, that is so cool. That is very, very cool. Five, four, three, two, one fight. I'm Robots rooting for the dad. The dad's here running the big bots. The kids here running the mini bots. Arya driving Raven here, and uh, Brian Boxel driving the miniature uh, uh, mini bot here for Caldera. Now Blackbird looks like it, it's it's dragging along the floor, and I wonder how that happens. Oh, a big hit there, Caldera, just sending it straight back into the rail. Now, these minibots from the kids are doing great. Now, Brian Boxel with this tiny little minibot is shoving Blackbird into the rail, uh -oh, waiting for his belt. dad to come. And look at that. I think that that is the belt off of Caldera. The weapon on Caldera is down. And that, another good pin here on Blackbird. That puts a lot of pressure on Brian and the, the minibot over on Caldera's team to really kind of take full advantage of every pin that he can. Two minutes left here, and the drive again is slow on Blackbird. We saw this in an earlier match. Wow. Blackbird in control of the minibot, landing a pin on the minibot. But it sounds very quiet here in the box. I think the Blackbird's weapon may have also gone down. This is going to come down to control and aggression now with two weapons down in the box and 90 seconds left on the clock. Wow, you can hear the gear motors from their drive. It's so quiet in there. Now this is, uh, these are desperate moments for these two builders. Uh, win and you're in, lose and you're out. Tony all over this cage, trying to see from the best angle available, whether it's in front of the audience or not. And here, Brian Boxel landing another good full 10 second pin on Blackbird. You can hear the referee saying that you must unstick. You have to disengage with the minibot. Caldera coming over to help Brian disengage. Tony D'Ambrosio looking really frustrated with the drive on Blackbird there. 30 seconds left here in this fight. This one will very likely go to the judges. And the defining factor may be Brian Boxel and uh, his piloting of this minibot here in this fight. 15 seconds left. Could be 10 seconds away from the final match of the year for Tony D'Ambrosio and Aria. Uh, the D'Ambrosio family, just fantastic, fantastic builders. I really hope to see them again in 2024. This one's going to go to the judges, but I think that this could be a win for the boxers. So.
big old hug. parenting goals here you know like yeah. it's just really cool to experience the sport with uh with your kids and uh you know in tony's case really starting aria off very young um i have seen her do great um with her aunt Wade dreamy um she is a very popular builder she's a good driver um in the ants in the ant Wade class and um be cool to see her come up to the Beetleweight class. I mean, that's a very competitive class here at Entrail, yeah. of course. And um, I would just, I love to see young builders who have a lot of runway in this sport because they have a lot of room to develop and grow, um, you know, as builders and um, as athletes here. Yeah, absolutely. And we've got the uh, previous fight's judge's decision. And it is Droopy took out Beetlejuice there by unanimous decision. Okay, yeah. So we will see the results from this Caldera and Blackbird fight in just a moment. Yeah, I think that the weapon going down from Beetlejuice is really a big defining factor. This just in. And the judge's decision for this previous match is the winner being Caldera. This is our last fight ever for Blackbird. Really, kind of an end of the of, of an era for Blackbird. Yeah. Now, Blackbird's run here for two years at least, and um, it was one of these very dominant early kind of finger tech beater bar spinners. Um, and Tony has managed to really keep up with that uh, that design type. Back two years ago, we saw a lot of finger tech beater bar we spinners. Did. We see very few of them here in the competition, here in the finals uh, at this stage. And uh, that Blackbird made it in is a real testament to Tony's build quality. Um, we just see a lot of custom custom robots in the Beatles here today, um, like in the modern, modern era, I think, of Beatles. And um, Tony's done great with Blackbird. I'm going to, you know, I'm a little sad to see that this yeah, is his last match. Absolutely. He... Okay. <clears throat> But anyways, the, the best way to support NHRL yeah. is to like and subscribe so you can see the future of Tony and his daughter yeah, Aria exactly. and for years to come. Because if you want to see them grow, then yeah. you should help us grow by liking and subscribing. Yeah, if you're watching the stream right now, you're like, I love this. I want to see the next one. It's going to happen in December. Like, uh, turn on the notification bell so you can see when we're uploading new videos. Subscribe, comment, you know, leave nice comments, uh, you know, for Sam and me. That's great. We yeah. have fragile egos, so it's Certainly. important. Uh, we're going to go over to Cage 2 here. And uh, I can see loaded in Synthesis facing five, off against Hot four, Wings. Three, oh, wow, two, this is going to be good. One, a Sledgehammer five, facing off against fight. a pretty delicate Heat Bot here. Now, Eli was saying earlier in the day that he has multiple copies of Hot Wings, and this version is doing great. I saw a little burst of flames. Hot yeah. Wings successfully igniting the side of Synthesis. You can see Corey Nason here in Synthesis. Looks like he's running aluminum tape on the side of his robot to survive these super hot hugs from Eli Davis and Hot Wings. Ooh, more fire and flames from Hot Wings on Synthesis. Now these are diesel glow plugs on Hot Wings. And uh, they heat up to hundreds and hundreds of degrees Fahrenheit, capable of catching plastic on fire. I can't tell if they're both hot or not. Now Synthesis weapon is running, but it seems like it's running a little slowly here. And Hot Wings landing a good, clean 10 second pin here. Now, one of the challenges is that Synthesis just hasn't been able to find the right angle and get purchase on Hot Wings. These long forks in the front of Hot Wings are really keeping away Synthesis. Yeah, those forks do a lot of work for Hot Wings. They take the damage from the opponents, they get every underneath everyone. Uh, and I believe the shuffling system in Hot Wings is very similar to that of Silent Spring as well. Yeah, Eli is good friends with Jameson Go, and uh, they're sharing some technology here, I think, on this team. One of these arms does look twisted. It looks like it's in the wrong position here. And here we go, Corey Nason finding, uh, finding the angles here. 
Hot Wings landing on top of Synthesis. But yet another good pin for Hot Wings on Synthesis. It looks like one of these arms uh, could be impaired on Hot Wings. It doesn't look like that nice, like, uh, symmetrical hug from this robot. 50 seconds left here. Synthesis really has got to turn on the gas and score some damage points here. Keep that weapon running. 30 seconds left here in this fight. Hot Wings has landed pin after pin after pin. Here we go. Corey getting around to the back of Hot Wings. Really, that zippy drive style that we've seen from Synthesis in the past is just not here in this fight. We're seeing a lot of just these, uh, these big pushing, pushing matches here right in the center of the box. I think he's having a hard time getting bite. Maybe because he can't push through the forks. Yeah. But it doesn't seem as affected as, like, Blackbird was in that last fight. All right, now that is the end of the match. This one will go to the judges. Synthesis and Hot Wings, two fan favorites, but only one will advance to the round of 12. We got Cole Wilson here. Now, wait, let me see the sign here. It says, I, uh, I don't need... I don't need a degree to be a panda. Here we go. That's great. That is great. Team Pandemonium here. And they're all dressed up as pandas. you got to love that. So you can see Eli Davis here taking a look at the uh, damage on Hot Wings. Eli is pit crew member on Team Sawblaze. And uh, you know, good friends with Jameson there in the Boston area. And, uh, you know, Jameson, of course, the captain of Sawblaze. Well, Hot Wings started out as 3D printer uh, hot ends. Yeah. Not well, that hot. Not that hot. Warm, warm wings, you yeah. know? And yeah. now with the, the glow plugs in this iteration, I wonder what could possibly be next. Hotter there's, wings. Yeah, there's got to be something hotter. Yeah. Like, you, uh, just, like, you start to, like, uh, I don't know, adopt, like, uh, pepper names or something. Yeah, like, like a Ghost Carolina pepper. Reaper Carolina glow Reaper. Plug. Oh, that's a good name. I feel like if there's not a builder down in South Carolina or North Carolina that's named the Robot Carolina Reaper, you're missing out, you know? Yeah, you can have that for free. Yeah, Carolina Reaper. There you go. Or if your name is Carolina, you know? Okay. Yeah. That's yeah. pretty good. Okay, we're going to go over to Cage 3. Ooh, fan favorite here in Monkfish and Rachel de Guzman, our Golden Dumpster winner from six weeks ago. Look at this. She's got fans in the audience with Monkfish. Facing off against Wicked Twister here. Now, Monkfish is a another one of uh, a, a walking robot. We saw walking here with Hot Wings. Monkfish is also a walker. I love the organic movement of Monkfish's feet. Yeah. It looks like it's a undersea creature, you it, know? It's a, there's a pitter-patter to it. Yeah, it is, it is great. There's also, like, a really smart design choice there because it is always making contact with the floor. You can hit some of those legs, and the robot continues to run. It is not, uh, it's, you know, it's, it's got kind of levels of redundancy as well. Always being in contact with the floor it makes you more stable, too, when your yeah. horizontal spinner's trying to send you flying. This is a fantastic robot. I love seeing designs like this. Super Five, stable, hard hitting, four, and it's got a three, cute face. You gotta two, love that. One, fight, robots, fight. All right, here comes Monkfish, facing off against Wicked Twister. Monkfish here in teal, and something has already gone off of Wicked Twister. Monkfish is just so large in the box. It is a big target, but it also is packing a huge spinner. Monkfish reminds me a lot of the AT-AT -AT walkers from Star Wars, you know, where they look like they're moving slowly because of how big their gait is, but then they're on top of you in just a second. Yeah. Wow, I think I saw perhaps a belt there in the, uh, in the box. Monkfish's weapon is going great. Wicked Twister's weapon looks like it could be down. It is down. Bye-bye, Wicked Twister. 
Wow, Rachel de Guzman really getting around to the back of uh, her opponent, just smothering drive style here. This is exactly the kind of drive that you want to see from a robot um, that, uh, that is so far ahead on the points. Rachel wants to win here by knockout. Okay, you can see that belt there sitting on the floor. I think that, that is a belt from Wicked Twister. Rachel showing control, Rachel showing aggression, Rachel showing damage, of course. Monkfish just doing great in this fight. This is an absolutely terrifying robot. It has to be a disorienting and frightening experience to face off uh, against Monkfish here in the box. Just every... Every turn you make, you're finding connection with Monkfish's weapon. This has been a total squash match here. Monkfish, incredible. 60 seconds left here in this fight. The thing that's amazing is that she is so far ahead. Oh, wow! The top plate is gone! Wicked Twister, the weapon is gone on Wicked Twister. This is incredible. So much destruction in this match. 40 seconds left, the battery is out! Oh no, it is being drugged behind the robot. As wow, it... that is a tap out from Wicked yeah, Twister. Yeah, that makes sense. You should be tapping out in that particular case. Holy cow. Violent disassembly from Rachel to Guzman and Monkfish earning that top out. Wow. You can hear chants of monkfish, monkfish, monkfish in the audience. Rachel has a lot of fans coming over here to sign autographs here, cage side. This will be the last fight of the season for Dave Wright and Wicked Twister. Dave here from Boulder, Colorado. And uh, Wicked Twister going home in a bag. Let's take a look here at this replay. Now, Monkfish was in control from the very first second of this match. And here at the very end, peeling off that plate violently and uh, separating the weapon assembly from the rest of the robots, knocking out that, uh, that battery. We were this close to seeing a lipo fire. Uh, but Rachel, as we've seen previously in fights earlier in the day, she is patient and uh, has restraint. She could have very easily gone in there and exploded the lipo and uh, just absolutely destroyed the, uh, the robot. Yeah, but why waste the energy? Why waste the parts? When you could just be signing autographs for fans out in the crowd, you know? Now, this is very cool. Did you see that? Um, so we are selling exclusive trading cards of all of this year's finalists. Yep. So uh, the kids here went out and purchased one of these trading card packages from the NHRL store and uh, gave the uh, the Monkfish card to Rachel for her to sign. I love that. It's a really, really cool memento. That is amazing. Yeah, and getting that signed, that's really cool. That's yeah. really, really cool. If you want to buy a trading card package yourself, uh, these were built by um, Zoe Lambert from Team Honeycraft. Yep. They're available online on, on the NHRL store. This is a very cool limited edition collectible. There are only so many packs um, there available. You can also buy foil packs where you can get a random holographic card as well. Okay. All right, so it looks like we have a judge's decision from that earlier fight. Hot Wings wins by unanimous decision. Okay. Okay. Congratulations to Hot Wings. Fantastic. So they'll be moving forward into their bracket. Okay. You All have right. some synthesis, feelings about that? Synthesis eliminated. Yeah, that does mean synthesis is, in fact, eliminated. Okay. Synthesis is out. Um, all right, we're going to go to cage two. Okay, hey, look at this. It's Chubby Unicorn and Tim Hebert facing off against Jetlag from Lars Elliott. Five, four, three, two, one. Fight, now, robots fight. Two incredibly highly ranked competitors here. Chubby Unicorn enters this competition with a number two ranking of wow. all time. Beautiful facing hit off there against one of our Unicorn. best. Drivers in the sport, Jetlag and Lars Elliott. 
Lars showing why he's a nominee for best driver of the year here. Absolutely. Yeah, Tim Ebert has built an amazing machine in Chubby Unicorn, but the driving advantage definitely has to go to Lars and Jetlag. You can see Chubby Unicorn backing up into the rail, just trying to get a little bit of air. Jet lag immediately on top of that robot. Trying Jet to lag is right winning the here by control and aggression, just dictating the pace of this fight, getting around to the side of Chubby Unicorn. Lars just picking his, his angles, picking his moments here. And that is the first exchange that Chubby Unicorn has won. Lars Elliott now on his head. But it looks like the drive is impaired on Chubby Unicorn. Typically what you're looking for are these long, straight, arc, like just, uh, just dead straight hits from, from Chubby Unicorn. And it looks like half of that drive is impaired on Chubby Unicorn. Yeah, definitely. Oh man, look at that. We got some dangling parts off the side of Chubby Unicorn there. Side armor seems to be somewhat compromised. Jet lag is looking great. Very mobile in the box. Oh, this is a driving clinic. Tim, take notes, all right? I hope that you're learning something in this match. Jet lag just absolutely doing great here. 70 seconds left in this fight. Pushing his opponent up against the uh, house bot. And I see a belt. I think that that may be a drive side belt on Chubby Unicorn. Wow. Jet lag just waiting for his prey. Lars Elliott can be 50 seconds away from eliminating the number two Beetleweight here at NHRL. Jet lag, no! No, you Stuck can get up the against wall, the get rail. Here comes the house spot to get jet lag off of the rail, and he is back in this fight. 30 seconds left. Lars has burned up his last unstick. And all he has to do is survive, and I think that Lars will take it from the judges. 20 seconds left here. Tim Hebert. This is a disorienting experience being outdriven by a high schooler. 10 seconds left, they've escaped the count out. This one will go to the judges. And I think that this is very clearly a win for Lars Elliott and Jetlag. Wow. Wow. Incredible driving from Lars Elliott and Jetlag showing why he is a nominee for best driver of the year. Even though he is still incredibly young, he's got a lot of time here in this sport. Now, uh, Lars and his parents, they are uh, also a team that is up and down the East Coast, competing at basically every single competition that they can find. Yep. Lars is beginning to build his own custom robots as well. He's had a lot of success with this Weta kit. And um, you are seeing that it is not the kit, it is the driver. Um, Lars Elliott's just absolutely fantastic with jet lag. Yeah, Weta kits are somewhat old hat at this point. It's very cool to see somebody doing so well with it at this time, like in 2023. Lars is phenomenal, and Lars drives anything. Any kind of RC vehicle you hand him, he is just phenomenal with it, and that just really translates to his combat robotics experience. This could be the last match of the season for Tim Hebert and Chubby Unicorn, fan favorite, number two ranked Beetle of all time here at NHRL. Yep. With this win, if he wins, Lars is going to see his ranking leap here at NHRL. Tim, also an excellent six foot tall uh, unicycle rider, actually, believe it or not. Five, wow. yeah. four, three. We're going to go over to cage two, three here. One, this is going to be five, Silent X facing off against five. Kickstart. Now, Silent X run by Jameson Go here. Kickstart is our little miniature Bite Force. It's so cute, Kyle. I love it. It's I'm adorable. Put it in it my looks pocket. just like a Bite Force toy. And uh, this is the vertical configuration for Silent X. Not a common configuration for Silent X, but I like seeing it. It has been multiple, multiple competitions since we've seen this. Silent X and Silent Spring, they are technically modular robots. Although, yes, they are. Uh, Jameson really likes the horizontal configuration. 
Yeah, with Silent Spring, it's pretty much all undercutter all the time now, so it's very rare to see this vertical module. Wow, Kickstart kicking Silent X off of the rail. Uh, Silent X didn't need the house bot's help there. He got his help from Kickstart. Be your own house bot, you know? If you can, be your own house bot. You do score a lot of aggression and control points by doing that. Oh, oh. Jameson returning it. Kickstart. Oh, no. Maybe regretting that decision to get them off the rail at that point after that massive hit. Wow. I can see that somebody has shed a belt. The weapon is still running on Kickstart. Is the weapon still it going does on look Silent like it's still X? still going on Silent X, yes. I see some blur of motion there on the screen. Do you? I don't hear it on Silent X. No, it's not running at no, all. No, you're right, you're right. That was just a weird angle. Silent X's weapon could be down. That could have been a belt from Silent, no? Nope, that's a weapon. Yeah, that is a weapon. That's going. It's doing the thing. Wow, okay, a good pin from Kickstart's Minibot on Silent X. They're allowed to hold that pin for 10 seconds before they have to back off. And that's the back off. Ooh, what an aggressive back off. I like that. Yeah, show them what's up. Wow, okay, another uh, kind of good showing of control here at the center of the box by this minibot. Kickstart and Silent X, the weapons are going full bore. They are not afraid at all of going weapon to weapon. Ooh, good hit there from Silent X on Kickstart. Wow. For people who miss watching Bite Force at uh, these competitions, you can see a little three pound version of it here in Kickstart. It's absolutely adorable. Ow, doing great against Silent X, just kicking it in the air here. 30 seconds left here in this fight. Wow. Kickstart really winning a lot of these exchanges. And that Minibot doing great work here. I think that we may be taking this to the judges, and it may be a win for Kickstart. Wow, we've escaped the count out. This one will go to the judges. The judges will decide who is entering the round of 12. That was some back and forth crazy action. Jameson seems pretty happy with his performance there. Okay. Now this one may be a close judge's decision, and uh, you know, you saw a lot of really great control from Kickstart. Not Absolutely. a lot of damage, really, on both sides. I did see that, um, that belt go stripping away. Could have been a drive belt. I and, think it uh, was on one side of Kickstart, actually. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. Okay. Because it's uh, the, the four-wheel drive, but I believe they're connected drive, so there's belts between the two wheels on either side. Um, so we got the judge's decision coming in right now. Oh, for, oh, the, for previous the previous fight. fight. Okay. Are they going to show us the graphic? Oh, jet lag. Jet, jet lag, lag defeating the number two ranked robot here uh, in the Beatles, Chubby Unicorn. This is going to be great for their ranking. Lars Elliott entering the round of 12. Tim Hebert and Jet Lag done right. for the season. Brandeis University, really, uh, this team has done great. They fielded a lot of robots here. Chubby they did. Unicorn is their flagship robot. For sure. Brandeis University, really a rising star here at NHRL. Cannot wait to see the team's performance next year. Yep. Tim Hebert, phenomenal driver. The bot looks incredible this year. Just could not hold up the onslaught of Lars Elliott. And, uh, went, okay, so have you heard about his second bot, Impact? Yeah, of course. I mean, I've seen Impact. It's, it's much here. cooler because it's Impact with a K yeah. instead of a C. Yeah, it's like a really hard K. You yeah, know? really hard K on the impact. 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 Yes. All right. All right. Uh, Neil says that we have a judge's decision on the last match. Ooh, I want to see. This is going to be close. We got the graphic coming up shortly. Here it is. Oh, my God. Silent X eliminated here in the finals. Kickstart will advance. Silent X, one of Jameson Goes robots, out permanently here in the finals. Wow. His chances are down to three. Oh, no. He only has three chances? <laughs> okay. 
All right, now everyone here, very exciting. We are setting up for prime time. Now this is our round of 12s in the 3s, 12s, and 30s. Very exciting. Now uh, at the very end of prime time, we're going to be crowning champions. We're going to be giving out three golden brats. And um, yeah, so stick around here and uh, we're getting ready to set that up. Okay. Now, uh, right. we're going to be taking a break here so that we can reset our stream. Now, if you're watching here on uh, YouTube, stay here on this page. Look for our second link. We'll That's see right. you back here shortly. We'll see you back here shortly, guys. Thank you so much.